All right, testing, testing, one, two, one, two. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three.
Everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me know how it sound. Um, Sue Orr is going to be joining me in the booth soon. Soon. On table four, Rick Reels and Brian Park. All right, and we are off. First match here. It's going to be a great one between John Mora, one of the early favorites in this tournament, and a guy named Danny Olson. Danny, I have heard about. He's a kind of a road player. Gets involved in a lot of cash games from South Dakota, and uh, I know he travels around. And um, he's had a great tournament so far. Had a thrilling match. In his last match against Jeremy Long, John Mora drew in his first match uh, Stephen Holm, who is a great player. So it's been an interesting, interesting tournament, interesting draws. Some of the brackets had no players. Oh, starting off nine on the side. We've seen that a lot over this tournament. Doing the old cut break, ball comes over, kicks the nine on the side. Cut break from the box. This rules for this tournament is. Alternate breaks, loser, our opponent racks, and break from the box with an Accurac. Apologize if I shake up any, shake off any cobwebs. Haven't been behind the mic in quite some time, but uh, everything seems to be working all right. We'll get a good commentator in here soon when Sue gets here. She did an amazing job over the last few days. John checking the rack, as you should. It's an Accu rack, but you can definitely have some challenges with it. John Cut breaking from the other side, I think. And I think it's going to be a dry break. Right, so not a good start. Two, three is a little wacky. Two goes in, but still. Got to make the one first. So it wasn't a dry break, so it's John's shot as well. Probably going to miss the two or three and come around, but he's got to worry about getting behind that nine. He might try to collide into it. Might play the one on the side. I think that's probably what he's going to do. Yeah, just got to miss that four ball. Wow, great shot. As you would expect. So John Mora, someone who doesn't really need any introduction. Been playing pool a long time. Famous for... Making the switch halfway through his career. She was left-handed, still breaks right-handed. He was a right-handed player, and some sort of injury kept him from continuing on. So he took a year off and relearned the game left-handed, and now obviously plays at an exceptional level. Quite an amazing story. Real nice guy, too. So this is a winner's side match. All four 
matches going on are on the winner's side. Everybody's guaranteed the money. We have Rick Rios, who's playing Sergio Rivas. I'll be giving you score updates, but you can also look at Digital Pool in the link that's in this chat. And then you have Renel Pira from Hawaii. He's playing Nino de Guzman, a local player. And then our final table is Sina Valazada, who is playing Ian Costello. Another great match there, great players. On this table, Mr. Smooth is making quick work of this rack. John's a calculating player. He doesn't play slow, per se, but he definitely takes his time, as most pros do. So we are going to be tied 1-1 momentarily. <clears throat> no rules on where the balls go, so no two in the back or anything like that. It's opponent rack. So obviously these guys are all good at their game. Nobody's going to be slug racking. It's hard to slug rack anyway, but nobody's going to be trying anything funny. It's all the same. And they having a conversation about something with Jack. So Danny was asking about pattern racking, um, just what the rule was, and Jack who's a wealth of knowledge, said there's a precedent already set for this. The only BCA rules are the one is in the front, the nine is in the middle, and there's a precedent set that repetitive racking is, I guess, okay. Um, obviously, with an opponent rack, you could pattern rack for a disadvantage, but he was just asking. It wasn't anything. Just, just asking. Yes, APP John is amphibious. He can swim underwater and on land, and he is also ambidextrous. <clears throat> Rum runner about one third full. It'll definitely get more full during the day, especially towards the end. Danny got a tough cut here. He's going to just negotiate around this six ball. Looks like he's going to play safe and he's going to get behind. I think he's going to poke out. John's going to have a shot. John can definitely see this too. Angle looks like he might end up colliding with the five. But whatever the case, not a good save from Danny. He's not happy. John's going to have a chance here. All he's got to really do is figure this shot out, and the rest of the rack is pretty standard for a player of his caliber. Tides the slow roll and he missed it. That's the trouble with slow rolling. Sometimes on these tables they're well felted, they're well taken care of, but sometimes I mean he got a good roll, but that's still an uncharacteristic mistake from John. Not a lot of great options here for Danny. I mean, he could try to kick this two a couple rails out behind the nine and leave the cue ball where it is. I don't think he's going to try to play it behind the three, per se. I think he's going to try to go two rails and leave the two somewhere around where that eight ball is. I'm sorry, where the six and the nine, between the six and the nine. 
Yeah. Well, if you tried to get him behind the three, he six. Uh, no, he didn't. John can see it. It's about as good as you could do. If he hit a little harder, he would have been safe. So, Bowden Shadow, yeah, John takes his. He puts a brake glove on most of the time and then takes it off, so he has to switch gloves around a lot because he brakes right handed and shoots left handed. So, he usually takes his brake glove off when he brakes. I'm sorry, his, his playing glove off. Looks like he might be trying to cut this two into the bottom left corner by the way he's shooting it. Nope. Wrong again. Nice shot. Nudge that four ball into a precarious situation now, unfortunately. It does not go past the seven. So he's going to have to figure all that out. And first thing he's going to figure out is how to make this three because he's got a pot potential scratch shot here. Could play safe here. I don't think he will, but he could. So John Mora has made two uncharacteristic misses. He's left a bank on the three. The four ball's in a challenging situation. Danny Olsen getting kind of a break on that after playing a bad save to begin this, this, uh, this game off with. Going offensive here will be tough. The only bank really is to make it in the bottom right corner, but then you've got to mess with the five. I think he's probably going to play safe. It looks like he's either going to try to bank the three past the six, eight, or he's going to possibly play safe and leave the three right around where the five is and come around. And he hit it. Not very good. So Danny's had a couple challenges with saves. A shot on the three. APP, I've used that joke before about amphibious as well, so I'm sure <laughs> that would be... Kind of funny if somebody on a professional broadcast starts mentioning amphibiousness. And I had quoted earlier that Rick Rios is playing uh, Sergio Rivas. He's not. He's playing Brian Parks. So I apologize for that. Brian is up one nothing on Rick Rios. Nino de Guzman is up one nothing on Renel Pira. And then Sina Valizada, I'll get that eventually, is up 2 nothing on Ian Costello. Great shot by John. Is he going to mess this up a little bit? Wow. Wow. I'm not sure if that's exactly what he was trying to do, but that's about as good as it gets. Now, this six still doesn't go past the seven. So let's see what John does here. He's got to get on the five first, obviously. I don't think he's going to try to move this six right now because he might get in the way of the nine. Yeah, so he's got some sort of plan for the six. It's obviously a pretty standard combo for a pro-level player to make the 6-8. Patrick McKinney, Sergio Rivas is still in. He's on the one-loss side. He'll be playing in the next round. APP, not sure what you mean by the unnamed person, but Danny doesn't seem to be pissed off at all today. So, most likely a combo coming here. Just going to make sure to control the speed. She does. Nice open shot here. But John got a little lucky to get out of this rack. Couple mistakes by Danny. Kind of a tough leave for Danny after John missed the two ball. What up, Earl Ross? Welcome to the stream. I 
Nice shot by John. Muffs himself. Pretty standard shot on the nine. Should be 2 nothing. John Moore here in this winter side round of eight match in the Andy Mercer Memorial Nine Ball Classic. Yeah, Sergio plays Jeffrey DeLuna, and I would assume it's going to be on this table next. Thanks, Tim Cole. We appreciate it. The support from the pool world has been great for that restaurant. Try not to talk about it too much and um, keep focused on Rum Runner and the, the venue we're at. But, but yes, uh, a lot of pool players have come out and support our restaurant, uh, Table 34, and we really, really appreciate it. So we try to sponsor as many events as we can and uh, help grow pool. Obviously, MOB Productions has done an amazing job as the premier tournament organization, perhaps in the country. And um, we're really excited to be part of what they're doing there. So John winning the first two or last two after Danny broke and made a nine. John's breaking again right-handed from inside the box. He he, just about everybody here is going for a cut break. Not many people are hitting them head on. John has made a few balls and has a very good shot on the one. Earl Ross, who's left on the winner's side is who's playing right now. Brian Parks is playing Rick Rios. He's up 3 nothing. These two gentlemen here are on the winner's side. And then you have Renel Pira and Nino de Guzman are playing right now. And then Sina Valazada versus Ian Costello. Those are the eight people still on the winner's side. On the loser side, you got Walter Glass. It's going to be playing Edgy Geronimo. You've got Jeff Whitehead versus Jeremy Long. Sergio Rivas versus Jeffrey DeLuna. And the final match is Doug Whaley versus Warren Camco. So still quite a few really good players left in. Hey, uh, Jim, can you ask her for a flyer? I mean, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Last day, okay. Jack Murray giving me a little helpful hint. Cena's last name is pronounced Velazade. So now I know. Now I know, and you know. Real nice guy, great player, Iranian player, lives in San Diego now. Left himself a little funny, but nothing that John can't handle, so textbook run out here. Barring some kind of crazy thing right now. Which does not appear to have happened, so Danny will be breaking down 3-1. Both players checking the rack very conspicuously, which is expected at this level. You really always check the rack, but... Okay. 
Danny electing for a cut break. I think he's breaking from a different side than he did the first time. He made the nine the first time, so maybe maybe not. Oh, that one ball was going right to the side pocket. He got saved by a ball in the way. In that case, he's got good break here. Um, I don't think he's got a shot on the one. I'll be joined in the booth by Sue Orr eventually. She had a long day of commentating yesterday. Told her to show up whenever she feels like. So she'll be here soon. Probably have Tom DiLorenzo in the booth later. Maybe we'll pull some other people around. Jump in and say hi. What's Danny going to do here? Ethan, this is a seven foot uh, table. So, seven foot diamond table. You think he's going for a combo here? Can't. Maybe a safe? Yeah, good shot. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't see what else he was really going to do there. Combo is way too risky. So, well done. No jump really present here, so John's going to be going for a kick. He's just going to decide how to do it. I probably would think that he's going to go two rails on the on the left side there, but I'm not sure. I'll get my telestrator going in between matches and uh, start doing the John Madden. Uh, well, what he's got to do over here? Looks like he may be going one rail. Oh, he almost made that, but he's going to get a favorable now. Not going to get a favorable. He went for it, though. That's. Came close, very close. Thanks, Jeff Gray. I'll try my hardest. Nice shot by Danny. Is he going to get on the next one? He is. Thanks, Robbie. Appreciate it. So Brian Parks is up 4 nothing on Rick Rios. Rios from Arizona. It's about a 614, I think. I played him last year. Renel Pira, who's only who's a sub 600 player, is playing Nino de Guzman, and that bracket was interesting. There was only one player above 625 getting to this point. It was Ronnie Wiseman. And Alan Cox beat him to knock him into the one loser side, um, one loss side. Sorry. So you've got a couple players there on the winner side. Who are Nino's a 650. He plays in town, but it's interesting because then you have a couple of, you know, over 750 players in the losers bracket, and um, because they had to play each other, so it's just interesting. The uh, the bracket definitely makes a big difference. Cena is up three nothing versus local fave Ian Costello. Ian, one of the better one pocket players around, really plays a lot of bar table though. Is he going to graze this four? That's what he's looking like. Is he going to try to get behind the nine? He can't be going for a carom. Maybe. Yeah, he was.
So John's got a little work to do here. The four ball does go by the eight, but it's not a full pocket. Looks like he might be going for a duck here. No? What do I know? Wow, he grazed the seven. Still made it. Great shot. AC Henry, it is a tough tournament. Anything could happen in a race to six, and you'll see all kinds of different things happen. Um... You know, last year Gary Lutman got second, and he's a sub-700 player. And um, there were a lot of over-700s, and Gary just played well. And um, he, he did well. Dave Dettillo, uh, Dettillo got third last year, and he's a 652. So, you know, bar table, race to six, alternating breaks, lots of stuff could happen. You know, Shane Van de Winning played last year and didn't even place. You know, he got knocked out by uh, Blake Baker and then Donnie Branson, who were couple of really good players. This year I think there was 16 players over 700. Yeah, Timothy, there was a couple over 800s last year. I think Shane might have been the only over 800 last year, but I don't know. I think Vilmos was kind of the second best. I mean, he won, but John's a little straight here, but looks like he's going to play with a little follow. Great shot. Things are not looking on the up and up for Danny right now. He hasn't necessarily done anything wrong, but John's got this rack together. He went. He had a tough shot where he went through a carom, which was a very tough carom. Jeff Gray, Shane, I don't think cashed last year, but I know for sure he didn't make the Calcutta money. And yes, there was a couple disappointed people. Thanks for bringing up the memories, Jeff Gray. Nice shot by John. 4 1. Gonna try my best to actually keep an accurate score today. Anybody who's new to my uh, streams might not know that I am the worst at keeping score properly. Thank you, MOB Productions, for clarifying that. So Shane almost made the Calcutta money, but didn't. Danny Olson racking, John Mora taking a break. AC Henry, Jim Blakeman has taken a step back. He's here, actually. He's sitting right next to Jack Murray. But Jack Murray, who um, runs a, a pool tournament company called MOB Productions, which is where you're seeing this stream, uh, is directing the tournament. He did both the Doc Hill and the Mercer. Um, Rebecca Hendricks and Jason Osborne and uh, Mona Thornhoff, they're all part of MOB Productions and they do a great job. So John Mora went and switched his gloves, getting ready to break, checking the wreck. Looks like Rick Rios has uh, had a rude awakening this morning versus Brian Parks. So AC, Henry, MOB, and Jack and Rebecca have done an amazing job running these tournaments. The Doc Hill was very well run and smooth. 
gone flirting with that side pocket, but he has made two balls, but does not have a shot on the one that I see. I mean, he's a pro. He probably knows more than I do. He could chop this in, maybe. Let's see. But, um... Not a great thing, and the 2-9 is not lined up really for anything, so... Let's see how this, uh... Pro guy handles this. He could he could play safe and try to leave it behind the seven. I don't think that's likely. I think he's probably gonna chop it in chop it in, but he's looking at the seven to graze the one and leave it behind the seven. But it's tough for these guys. You have someone like Danny shooting behind. You leave him any kind of a reasonable kick and you're getting resafed. So it looks like Warren Kiamko is being called. I'll give you some updates. He's playing. Who is he playing? Doug Whaley. Rick Rios, who's a, a very jolly, jovial guy. Yeah, it looks like John. What a shot. That's, that's Mr. Smooth right there. Uh, so Rick Rios got locked into the loser side, loser side by Brian Parks, but he's a great guy, and uh, he's happy to be here. Obviously, he plays every year, I think. <clears throat> Elsewhere, Cena is up 4 1 on Ian Costello. So Danny measuring this up. He wants to hit it not too hard and maybe leave the one ball messed up around those balls. Again, the two is tough anyway. So he's just hitting it, hits it good. I think he's going to leave John a shot, but that's about what he was trying to do for sure. Just hit it. You got to really hope for a, a good leave there, but he hit it solid. John does have a shot on the one. I don't think he's got to go real first. It looks like he might be lining up real first. I can't tell from, from my angle. What do I know? What a shot. I mean, John's just a, obviously a world-class player, so you just never know. That kind of stuff is what makes him the way he is. Yeah, Jim Blakeman... Um, has been doing this a long time. He's here. He's watching it, but he's retired, and Jack's taken over the reins. And, again, I think Jack has done an amazing job with Rebecca and just running his tournament. Jack runs a lot of leagues out of here and knows what he's doing. And, and you know, not um, not for nothing, but dealing with a bunch of pool players all the time can be a challenge for anybody. So Jack's done a great job. Nice shot by John. He's going to have a little bit of a tester on the three. Nothing he can't handle. Had to mess around that a little bit. APP, I'm still talking. If you can't hear me, then uh, I'm not sure. Testing. One, two, three. Yeah, somebody let APP know maybe something on his end or her end. I don't know who APP is. All these pseudonyms on YouTube. And while if John gets on the six, it's big trouble for Danny Olson. One mistake can really make a big difference here. I can try to troubleshoot your issues over there, APP, but uh, I would start by turning up the uh, sound and maybe checking your audio on your side.
Just been informed Jeffrey DeLuna and Sergio Rivas will be the next match on this table. Glad to help you, APP. John cut that. Oh, he's perfect. So, barring some sort of cataclysmic event here, John's going to go up 5-1. It'll be Danny's break, I believe. Aldoble uh, or Aldubi, um, no video issues that I know of. So maybe check your end, hit refresh. Everything seems to be streaming well. The Rum Runner did refresh their, um, or up their um, bandwidth on their on their internet. So should be streaming fine. All that being said, I am an amateur streamer, so things can go wrong, but they don't seem to be going wrong right now. So, Danny Olsen down 5-1, which in a race to six could mean anything, but he's facing a top-class pro who's playing pretty perfect. He, John missed a shot early on, a slow roll to two. Got pretty fortunate on the, uh, on the roll. And he breaks. He's got a shot on the one. He can get something going here for himself. Again, I'll have Sue or joining me in the booth. I might pull somebody from the crowd to jump in and say something now. If they're in the mood for it, we'll see. Joseph Krugnelli in the crowd. Kind of surprised he didn't play this year. He must have had something else going on. Is that Drew Cruz? Drew down Cali? I mean, I'm guessing it is. Haven't played any other Drews lately. If it is, congratulations on your BCA win. So Danny's got a chance to get something going here, and he's doing well. Pretty standard break here and break and run. Ah, Andrew. What's up, buddy? Andrew from Seattle. So I guess I'm wrong. I did. I played other Drews. Good seeing you, my friend. In a race to six, I will be the first person to tell you that anything can happen, so you never know, but Danny's on his way here. Nino de Guzman up 3-2 in his match, and then Warren Kiamko looks like he still might be practicing. I don't think they're up to the races yet with that. And Cena is up 5-1 on our local favorite in Costello. Cena has played pretty flawlessly from what I've seen in this tournament. It's a 727, I think, maybe 737, and he is playing smooth as silk. And uh, as evidenced by his 5-1 lead on Ian Costello right now, a nice shot by Danny. He might get it a little in between, but he's fine. So Doug Willie and Warren Kamko are in an actual match. Warren has played safe. Doug's got an opportunity to run out of rack to get on the board first. Timothy Cole, Drew Cruz, and I played a little bit before his BCA tournament, and I would take full credit for him winning because I smacked him around a little bit. <laughs> uh, he's a great guy, and uh, he won the BCA nine ball gold division, which is a great event. I mean, you know, hundreds of players, and uh, couldn't be happier for him. Andrew McMahon is from the Seattle area. I played him after the Moby Dick, and we had a great time just playing some cheap sets at Griff's, and uh, it was a lot of fun. No, oh, I remember you, Andrew. Of course.
a bunch of guys from Seattle came into the restaurant, had a good time, and then I ended up playing one of them my first round at the Moby Dick. Didn't go that well. I mean, it went well as the fact that he was a great guy, and we played pool, which is always fun. Didn't go that well for me. Anyway, Danny Olsen here, shooting on this 8, deciding what to do. Looks like he's going to play with a little draw to get on this 9. Played kind of a stop. I don't think that's where he wanted to be, but this is definitely not a tough shot for a player of his caliber. Speaking of plugging things, you guys are going to hear me plug a couple times on this an amazing new app that my buddy George Meyer is doing. It's called Vegas Near Me. And honestly, I've never quite seen anything like this. It's really intuitive. It's a great app. It's for restaurants and shows and everything. If you want to go shoot a machine gun off a helicopter, it's all in the app. And they've got a lot of people working on it, and it's just really cool. They have timestamps on YouTube videos. You can connect the things here and there. It's a real big project called Vegas Near Me, and I'm sure it's going to be an amazing thing. And George will be rich and famous, and it'll be the biggest deal. You're going to hear me talking about it a lot just because it's a great thing. George Meyer is a big part of the pool community. And uh, check it out. It's an app on the all forums, Vegas Near Me. Tim Cole, you know, I might get out there to Colorado to see you before you come see me. You know, my sister lives out there. We've we've talked about it before. She lives in a little town called Kremling, Colorado, up in the mountains, about two hours west of Denver. I mentioned about cut breaks. Most people doing cut breaks. Last year we did have a few people breaking head on. And when you break head on with an Accurac, you have a chance for the nine ball to come back into the bottom two corner pockets. When you're breaking cut break this style, the nine ball can go into the side pockets. I remember last year Ryan, Ronnie Wiseman had it down pat. He made a whole bunch of nine balls because it would just break it dead on maybe a couple inches to the right, and the nine ball would come back and just clip into the corner pocket. John with a nice break here. He's got an open shot on the one. If he gets on this two, could be lights out on this. Not a lot of room to play with between the two and the side pocket. Although John is obviously capable of making it happen. I think he probably, he's looking to see how much space he's got there. Risky shot, but probably the right way to play it. There's no real follow. He could try to follow into the six, but I don't think he's going to do that. Just going to have to wait and see. Yeah, hit that like a pro. So Cena has won his match. So on the other table, we've got Edgy Geronimo versus Walter Glass. Starting a new match on the one-loss side. Rennell is actually now up 4 nothing on Nino de Guzman. So the winners of these matches get to the semifinals. Rennell is a sub-600 player. Now, I've had some people say he plays above that. I don't personally think so. I've played him before. He plays fast, but he, he makes enough mistakes that I think his Fargo is accurate. But obviously, he's playing well in this tournament. Meanwhile, John Mora really has just got to get on this three. There's not too many issues for, for his caliber. Um, the answer to your question about if Walter and Trick made up, I don't know the answer for sure, but I'm pretty sure the answer is no. I wasn't here, but there were some... Apparently, they weren't best friends after their match. That's all I'll say. Nice shot by John, although that side pocket's looking mighty big, and he has done it 
So Danny Olsen with a break here. Cody DeVito. Jack Murray sent me this cool graph that Fargo Ray did about John Morris rating playing right-handed versus left-handed. I'll uh, get it all figured out, and next match we see if it's, I'll put it on the stream for people to look at. It's pretty cool. Dirty Hippo, uh, how long ago was that? You got knocked out of Junior Nationals. So is Danny Olsen pretty young, I'm guessing, if he was playing in Junior Nationals? Or was this like a long time ago? Fifteen years ago? Wow, all right. <laughs> So costly mistake in the side pocket for John, and Danny's going to be breaking, and just like that, this could be a whole different match. John was up 5-1. Played a shot to get on the four ball. Side pocket got in the way. I think Danny's probably going to yeah, do that. That's what I was trying to say. Not ideal, but nothing he can't handle. And just like that. Alrighty. John going to rack. Again, this is opponent racks. Next match up here is going to be Jeffrey DeLuna versus Sergio Rivas. Sergio Rivas, a guy who won one of those big Calcutta huge that Alabama tournament. Calcutta got the three hundred thousand dollars and Sergio won it which is crazy because he's got to spot a lot of players you know 14 6 14 7 or whatever but Warren Kiamko is down to nothing versus Doug Whaley Danny flirts with that side pocket a lot on that cue ball. Uh, never mind that. He's got a couple tough ways to shoot this one ball. You can play really aggressively and play in the top left corner. The top left corner's pocket is made a little bigger if he misses a bat off the seven ball, or three ball, I'm sorry. But he could play it and hold it You know, for that two. It's a tough shot. Looks like he's looking at it that way. It does go in the side pocket. I don't know if he's going to shoot it that way. And he's definitely looking at how to shoot this. He could come around the four ball so he could stroke it in, but there's a lot of tough angles going on here. I think he's just going to play it with stun and try to have the speed right. Careful not to get behind the seven. He missed it. No, he made it, and he's got to come around and... He's done it, I think. Yeah, typical. I mean, not the semis of the tournament, but like the round of four. The semis for the winner side, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Thank you for the clarification, though. The number one blind pick and the number two blind pick, Cody, were John Mora and Jeffrey DeLuna. I'm not sure what the order was. So Danny Olson with a tough opening shot, got a favorable uh, speed. I mean, I'm not, I think that's what he was trying to do, so I'm not going to call it a roll. I'm going to get a good shot. And just like that, he could be just a game down in this round of eight winter side match. Four four in Nino de Guzman's match against Renel John. Ira 
uh, also known as RJ. There's a couple of RJs in town, but that's one of them. He is shooting and has a chance to go up five to four. Meanwhile, Danny Olson, if he gets on this five, will be down five four. Assuming he gets out. Well done, although he's going to get behind. He got behind the seven. Yeah. So he is looking at the jump cue. Bar box pool, a lot more clusters. Things can get in the way a lot easier. So Danny, I haven't seen him jump yet. I haven't seen him play a lot of pool. Obviously, he knows how to jump. I'm sure this no jump is ever easy, but this is definitely a makeable jump for him. Come on down to the Rum Runner. Food is good. The drinks are plentiful. Danny Olson jumping for his, I don't want to say his tournament life, but if he doesn't make this, this match could be in jeopardy. He's taking his time. Nice hit. Is he going to get a favorable roll? He is. So John is going to have to either jump or kick at this. So, an effective shot by Danny Olson. Nino de Guzman was able to pick up that last ma uh, game against Renel Pira. So now Nino is up 5 to 4. He broke and he's got a clustered rack, but John sizing up a jump here. Not sure if he's going to do it. He is pretty close, probably about 4 or 5 inches away from that 7 ball. Maybe a little more. Maybe just above average. Um, Doug Whaley is breaking, but it, I don't know if he won her, so he lost his last game. So now Warren Kiamko is down to one to Doug Whaley over on the table with Walter Glass versus Edgy Geronimo. Walter is breaking, so somebody won a game, but they have not marked the game yet. Walter is actually racking. I'm sorry. Back on our table, John Mora is getting his jump cue out. He has to remove his... Um, Glove because he also jumps right-handed. So he jumps and breaks right-handed, plays left-handed. Tim Cole, I'm not sure about if Sergio Rivas bought himself in that Calcutta, but my guess is he probably didn't buy himself. He probably bought half himself. But I don't know. Um, I'll maybe ask him if I get a chance to talk to him, but definitely not now. He's got his uh, concentration on what's going on here. Right-handed for all power shots. Makes sense. Makes sense. Naharan. Naharan? I don't know. Okay. He made good contact. Is he going to... No, I mean, Danny can see it, but I don't think he can make it. I don't know if he can see enough to try this combo. So a couple of uh, cat and mouse moves with the jump cue going on here. He's thinking about it. Doesn't look ecstatic as he shouldn't be. Maybe he's going to try to graze this five around into the nine, but not necessarily make it, leave the cue ball back where he is. It's possible. He, I mean, he could be. I, I don't think he's going to go for a combo, but he could. There is a scratch potential. He went for a crazy carom. Not crazy, but a difficult carom before that didn't go in. Let's see. He's definitely taking his time and thinking about it. Came off the shot, looking at it again. Nino de Guzman just scratched. There's an ugly rack going on between them. So Ren Rennell's going to have a an ugly rack to try to negotiate. So I guess he went for a bank, and the five is not going to go in. 
tough, tough position to be in. Somebody mentioned before about not having three foul in this tournament, but I'm pretty sure there is three foul in this tournament. Yeah, three foul is, is or no. I stand corrected. No three foul in the Andy Mercer. So John Mora. Jack reminding me that that is not his rule, so I would stop and not give him a hard time about it. So John, if he makes this cut and gets around the seven, the match will be his. I assume he's going for it. No reason not to. She has, and he has made it. Is he going to get around? Yes. So assuming John makes this, he's going to take this match 6-3 to three, and we'll be all set for Sergio Rivas playing next against Jeffrey DeLuna. Well done. Danny Olsen played a good match. Made one mistake on a safe, otherwise played well. He was bested by John Mora, who played flawlessly other than one small mistake at the beginning. Next match coming up in a few.
Everybody, welcome back. Jeffrey Luna is going to get ready, uh, just taking a little break, and against Sergio Rivas. Um, should be a great match. Both players, obviously, well accomplished. I'm not sure where De Luna lives these days, but he, he has been around a lot over the last couple months. Maybe he's visiting, maybe he lives here now. But uh, he, He's been spending some time at the pool halls and, and around. Jack. So I'm not sure what the conversation is, but they were talking a little bit about how they rack and pattern racks and everything like that. Tim Cole, I uh, disagree with you on pacing and three foul being part of pacing. Now, at these level events, you're not going to see three foul that often, but as we all know, three foul came into play in a very important pro match recently. And uh, I just think if you omit three foul from tournaments, and again, this is not Jack's rule, this is the rum runner rule, but if you omit three foul, in my opinion, it doesn't really make things any faster. Now, that being said, I haven't run tournaments as much as these guys, and if you get one player who gets super annoying and just tries to three, hour, three foul everybody, then yes, yes, it could slow things down. So I understand both sides of the equation. I personally am a fan of three foul because it's part of the rules, but... Not for this tournament, which is no big deal. Everybody understands it. As long as you know the rules ahead of time, then you know the rules. Doug Whaley is up 4-1 on Warren Kiamko. <laughs> and I don't know who Doug Whaley is. I've seen him play in tournaments before, but... I'm not sure he's supposed to be beating Warren Kiampko, but he is. So let's see where it all goes. 5-5, five, five. Renel Pira versus Nino de Guzman. Renel's got a pretty standard run out here. He might, he might do it. Will the pressure get to him? Will Renel Pira make it? To the top four of the winner side. No, he missed a six. He missed a six. He's going to be thinking about it for a while, especially if Nino gets out. Renell got a good roll, though. Nino. He can make it, and he has. Nino's got a three ball run out, but he's shaking his head. Something happened. Something happened that's not good. I can't see. Now he's got a bank or something. Anyways, back to the table that you could see. Jeffrey DeLuna, who I'm pretty sure is taking something off his break. He's not breaking. He's probably breaking 70% with an Accurac from the box. But let's see. He's going for a cup break. Everybody knows he's a power breaker. Or he wants to be. Nice shot. One goes in the side like it's supposed to, but it's a yucky, yucky rack. Lots of not good stuff going on. Nino de Guzman played safe against RJ, and RJ's got a bank now. Winner of that match will be a sub seven, a sub six fifty player on the winner side. Last four. RJ, what happened? Looks like he made the seven, but he has no or tough shot on the eight. Sorry, I'm trying to commentate on a table that's like 40 feet away from me. Play safe. Not a very... No, oh, great safe. What a match. All right, DeLuna's going to figure out what to do here. Obviously, he could trump. He's pushing, it looks like. Interesting choice. He's pushing into a jump or maybe... A Masse. Sergio Rivas looking at it. I'm guessing he's going to take it on. He looks like he's Masseing. Nope, he's picking up a different cue. Oh, Nino just scratched on the eight. 
he 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 hit it and he jumped the cue ball off the table. He's gonna lose this match. Renel Pira is getting ball ball in hand. Wow. Yeah, Tim Cole, just as a last um aside on three foul, when it's a non handicap tournament, I'm pro. But I do understand if you've got a handicap tournament where you have some lesser players, the higher players are going to three foul a lot. And I know I would, so I get not having it part of handicap tournaments. What a shot by Sergio. Wow. That's that's what a great shot. He just nailed that jump in. Renel Pira has won his match versus Nino de Guzman. So Nino de Guzman will live to fight another day. Still one nothing. Edgy Geronimo versus Walter Glass. Meanwhile, Sergio Rivas just nailed the jump. That was crazy. And yes, Jeff Gray, RJ is in the Calcutta with that win. Guaranteed sixth. Jeff Gray, Jason Osborne made that purchase for twenty dollars. That might be a first. A twenty dollar pick <laughs> making the Calcutta. All right, so Sergio's gotta figure out what to do with this four. He could play it. With a little bit of stun and come three rails and try to avoid the six. Looks like he might try to draw it behind, but it's it's I think it's got too much angle to draw it behind the five. Not hard to play it that way. The smart way. Rebecca, that's awesome. Good for RJ. Not a not a crazy amount in the Calcutta this year, but enough that twenty dollars is going to go a long way. So this seven ball is funky over here. So Sergio is taking a look. I think it goes by. And we'll have plenty of opportunity to get on it. So Sergio Rivas looking like he's going to strike first blood in this match with an amazing jump shot. DeLuna pushed into a jump shot um, and was uh, Sergio nailed it. So next up on table four, Jeff Whitehead versus Jeremy Long. Yes, Tim Cole, winner is guaranteed fifth, sixth. I'm not sure if anybody said fourth, but it wasn't me. RJ. Great shoot, man. Awesome. Giving RJ a little props. He's a really nice guy. And uh, what an accomplishment for someone at his playing level to, to get this far. Obviously got a favorable bracket, but that should take nothing away uh, from how he's played, and, and Nino de Guzman is a quality player, and that's just great. Great for him. Awesome to see that kind of stuff. Sergio Rivas now breaking. Yeah, well, he is beating Warren right now. It's 4-2. That would be a huge upset as well. Meanwhile, Sergio Ruiz, just about all these pro-level players are, are playing the cup break. 
That one, cue ball was going the wrong, but he got out of it. It's got a shot. RJ's got to feel like a million bucks right now. Interesting, Rebecca. Doug Willie got second in the Sacktown Showdown, huh? You mean two years ago? I thought Jules got second this year. Or did Jules lose to Adrian and Jules got third? Copy. Okay, I guess that's... Right, and that was a 650 and under, and I'm sure Doug plays well, but getting second in that versus beating Warren Kiamko, who's a bona fide pro... All right, so Sergio going for a bank, missed it pretty bad, so now Jeffrey DeLuna is going to step up the table with an offensive opportunity, first time in this match. Jeffrey DeLuna shoots left-handed, not that that really means anything, it's just a simple observation. Doug Whaley shooting a tough nine ball, which he has made to be up 5-2 to two versus Warren Kiamko. Came precariously close to scratching, but did not. So 5-2. Tim Cole, I've never heard of pool players complaining, but uh, but yeah. Of the many things I respect for uh, um, about the MOB Productions tournament, they do listen to feedback from, and, and, I'm, and they get a lot of feedback. They're trying to run an organization that makes everybody happy, which is impossible. Gets enough players to make sure that the purses are, are good and, and deal with an ever-changing landscape of pool, which includes all kinds of different ways to run tournaments, and they do a great job. So they do listen to feedback, and, and uh, they run a great organization. Back on this table, uh, Jeffrey DeLuna shooting on the six. I would assume he's out on this. Nothing too exciting about the way to play it. Just draw back a little bit. He could play it in the corner, but I think he's going to play it on the side. No reason to try to mess with that shot and get on the other side of the six. Just play it one rail as he did. And there you go. Doug Whaley breaking up 5-2 versus Warren Kiampko. Of course, in the words of John Belushi, nothing is over until we say it is. So we'll see how that match goes. Yeah, Tim, you know, you're saying that uh, about him going to and out, but in this tournament, you play well, you never know what happens. Your opponent could break dry as long as you're getting out. It doesn't matter what your Fargo is. If you're breaking and running and your opponent isn't, you'll win. So I'm, I'm rooting for RJ. That'd be a great, great, uh, great win for him. Jeffrey DeLuna, tied, 1-1, one, one. Sergio Rivas. Nine on the break, 2-1, DeLuna couple things I'll be plugging during my uh, time on the mic. One of them is Vegas Near Me, as I did just plug. Great app. Check it out. George Meyer runs it. It's pretty amazing stuff. I'll talk about it a little more, but all you need to know is it's the most intense, fantastic, and, and it's just so detailed app about learning about what's around Vegas and everything. It's a great thing. And, of course, I'm going to plug my restaurant, Table 34. We love helping promote things in Las Vegas with pool. Um happy to be partners with MOB Billiards 
And um, I think we're doing a pretty good, darn good job there. If you like, if you like food and alcohol, it's a good place for you to be. Timothy Cole, RJ is in the final four of the winner's side. He is guaranteed fifth and sixth. If he wins, he's guaranteed third. If he wins that match, he's guaranteed second. If he wins that match, he's guaranteed to never get a game from anybody under 650 again. Jeffrey DeLuna has made the nine on the break. It's alternating breaks. Here comes Sergio Rivas with a nice break. Straight in on the one. No issues here. Getting on this two might be a little tricky, but he's just going to draw it back and leave it center table, I would think. He could, although I doubt, um, play it, you know, behind the three, but it's all preference at that point. I think the safer one is center table. And, of course, I'm wrong. Warren Kiamko was shooting on a three ball on a tough rack, down 5-2. And he has tough rack, but a winnable rack, although I think he just snookered himself a little bit. Oh, shucks, MOD Productions. Thanks for that shout out. Walter Glass has won a game. It's down 2 nothing to Edgy Geronimo. On this table, maybe, maybe a little tricky getting on this four. Sergio, I think, doesn't like this angle. He's got to worry about where that eight ball is and what's going on. But so this, this could get a little tricky. But the four ball's hanging in the pocket. Yeah, that's where it got tricky. He's gonna leave himself behind this nine ball. Maybe. You might still be able to see it. Might have to mass it. No score update in Jeff Whitehead's match versus Jeremy Long. Looks like he's shooting it straight, so he could probably just see this straight on. It's fair to assume Sergio will get out here and tie this match up. I've never met Sergio before, but I've heard nothing but good things about him as a person. Obviously, he's a great pool player as well. Tutu. So the way that the Mercer works, the same way as the Doc, you do your winner side matches and you go to two rounds of the loser side matches so the winners get a little bit of a break. So the winner of this match is going to end up playing Nino de Guzman. Now have that round of matches and then we'll be left with 12 players. Then that when those have to play, then we're left with eight players and then you have your four on the winner side, four on the loser side. Then we'll play a round of winner side matches. And it'll will down. We'll go down to two tables. When well, it's time to go to two tables, I might do a small adjustment on this table, but you'll be able to see both tables and what's going on. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, RJ, Timothy, what a, what a feeling for him, you know? Nice break by Jeffrey DeLuna. He's going to be straight in on the two ball. Doug Willey, tough shot on the one. He's up 5-3, has a chance to put Warren Kiamko out of the tournament. It's a tough shot on the one. He might end up playing safe, so I'm not sure. The Lunar's just got to get on this three, which he kind of has. Yeah, a little more than kind of. Tough, tough shot. Meanwhile, the waitress is here, and it's time for me to decide when to start drinking. Like, really drinking. I'm good right now, thanks. Probably wait till Sue gets here. Yeah, good shout out, Tim Cole for Vegas near me. I mean, it allows you to, to do everything. It's really an amazing app. When, when you download it, you'll see that it's just, it's amazing how much work and effort has been put into it. George Meyer has 40 people have worked on this app, and uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's mind blowing how cool it is. DeLuna makes a nice shot on the four. All he's got to do is float this over for the seven. He should be off this rack. You do get matches like this where it's a break and run, a break and run, a break and run. First game, DeLuna played a push shot into a, a tough jump shot that Sergio just drilled. Other than that, it's been break and run, break and run. I think. Tons of stuff could go wrong here, but it probably won't. Not for a player of this caliber. All right. Well done. Walter Glass winning a game. It's 2-2 in his match. Walter's been around the game for a long time. Smart player. I don't know how old he is, but he's definitely over 70 and uh, still plays a very highly consistent game of pool. Got third in the Gunslinger last year, I think, which is a nine-foot table. Maybe the year before when there was more players in the Gunslinger. Uh, the year he got third, I think it was a 699 and under. Last year was a 720 and under. This year it's going to be a 699 and under. Looks like Jeremy Long is out to a 2 nothing lead versus Jeff Whitehead. And Warren Kiamko has won the last game to narrow the lead to 5-4 for Doug Willie. Jeffrey Deluna up 3-2 versus Sergio Rivas. Sergio's got a nice break here. No real issues. Maybe the 5 to the 6 could be problematic, but probably not. Doug Whaley came a millimeter away from making the nine ball on the break <laughs> to put that match away. Nice control by Sergio here, although he overran it just a little bit. 
Yeah, that actually might create some problems for him. I think he might play it. You can come around and play it with just dead ball English and come one, two, three rails around the five to get on the four, which might be how he decides to play it. I don't feel like he's going to be drawing it and messing with the nine, although he could play it with a little bit of right, come off the four, and collide back into the nine. No time clock in play, Linda. Walter was old 20 years ago. That's probably true. I think he's going to try to maybe go one rail and come back into the nine. Nope. Hit the nine straight. Had enough angle. Good shot. Don't worry about that white on the screen. I'm just getting my Telestrator all set up. Ravi, Table 34 is on Warm Springs and Amigo, just south of the airport. Linda, the tournament is scheduled to end today and will end today no matter what. Yes. If you guys are seeing a bunch of white flashes on your screen, it's just me messing with trying to get my Telestrator set up. So don't worry about it. Nothing on your end. Yeah, I'll figure that out later, I guess.
the white flashes are on the screen is what I was talking about. I'm getting my Telestrator set up, which I should have done before the stream, but I gave up on it just now. But if you saw the white markings around the stream is what I was referring to. Audio seems fine on my end. Check yours, but I uh, will uh, keep an eye on it. Yeah, eventually I just want to get my uh, Telestrator lined up because it's kind of cool, but I'm using an old version of Microsoft Paint for the Telestrator, so it doesn't always go perfectly. I have the new version, but it doesn't work, so not that anybody cares, <laughs> but it's fun having a Telestrator putting my best John Madden voice on. Sergio Rivas. On a nice run. That could cost him dearly. DeLuna was not expecting him to get up out of his seat. Now he has four ball run out, and he'll be breaking next. Very costly move by Sergio Rivas. Edgy Geronimo is up 3-2. Doug Willie did, in fact, knock Warren Kiamko out of the tournament. Jeffrey DeLuna is now up 4-3 on a very fortunate break with a shot that Sergio overran. Sergio is breaking, though. Doug Willie with a big smile on his face, as he should. Jeffrey Long, who's a player I'm not too familiar with. Um, what a tough loss against Danny Olsen to put him in the one-loss side. He's up 3 nothing on Jeff Whitehead. Over here, Sergio Rivas trying to rebound from a tough overrunner of a ball that would have put him up 4-3. He's got an open shot on the one. A little work to do. Just has to learn. Not learn. He obviously already knows how to shake off shots like that. Nothing ever goes perfectly in the game of pool. Well done. It's going to get perfect on this, too. Could be a nice rebound going. Yeah, that is a great win for Doug. Obviously, Warren is a bona fide pro player, and Doug's that's a great win for him. And Doug Whaley is going to be playing. I wonder if one of these matches is going on. Doug Whaley is actually going to be playing Rick Rios, who's a 6-14, so a match that could go either way. Derek Moore, you are correct. This is a one-loss match. I shall amend that.
this guy, Jay Thomas, me, does pool commentary for once in a while, about three times a year. Um, I don't do an app. It's not my app that I'm promoting. It's George Myers, but he's a friend of mine and a friend to the pool community. So I like to promote it. But yes, as Tim said, I'm a restaurant owner and I like pool. I play decent, not near these guys' speed. But good enough to talk about pool a little bit. Hopefully. Sue Orr will be here, who's been commentating the last two days. We'll have a little smarter take on pool. Not sure when she's getting here, but she'll be here. Meanwhile, Sergio Rivas has bounced back quite nicely. And we'll tie it up. It's my pleasure, Jay. I wish I could do this more often, but unfortunately, uh, if you ever want to not have much time, go ahead and open a restaurant. It'll uh, it'll definitely take your time. Um, it's a good thing, though. I love it. Walter Glass is down 4-2 four four to Edgy Geronimo, which happened quickly, and I just missed a nine-ball carom that would have made it 4-3, and he just conceded the shot back to Edgy because it was hanging in the pocket, so it's now 5-2, Edgy Geronimo. No match called on table four yet. I think we might be going down to two tables. Nice break by DeLuna here, although the 2-9, I can't tell if it goes as a carom or not, but I don't think it does. We'll have to see. Just getting on the 2 might be difficult here. He could play it around the 8-ball with follow, but I think that's a risky shot. He might try to draw back and get around the 3. Let's just wait and see. He might power draw it and come around into the 7 This is what he looks like. He might be going for a carom here. Uh, uh, splat. This is a seven foot table. Richard, the link to the bracket is listed. Up top, but the players still in the tournament are John Mora and Brian Parks. This is all the winner side. There's four left on the winner side. And then Sina Valzdeba and Ronell John Pira. Zach, how do you pronounce Sina's name again? Sina Valazade. And we have Doug Whaley and Rick Rios. Danny Olson is waiting on the winner of the Walter Glass Edgy Geronimo match. And then you have Sergio Rivas versus Jeffrey DeLuna, as you see right here. DeLuna is up 5 4. I'll mark the score in a second. Didi, I'm waiting for Sue to get here, and then uh, commentary will be elevated significantly. And it's much better when you have two play two people because you go back and forth and everything. One person's tough to just talk and talk and talk and talk. But Sue will be here soon. I'm not sure when. She had a long day commentating yesterday. Um, and to answer your question about who's left, Ian Costello is going to be waiting on the match versus Jeff Whitehead and Jeremy Long. So that scratch could be the difference that Sergio Rivas had.
Linda, I'm not sure what you mean by your question, but yes, the one loss side would have to come and double dip whoever gets the hot seat. So Sergio Rivas taking a look here. Tough table, doesn't have a shot on the one, trying to figure out what to do. I'm guessing he's going to come behind, try to graze the one, but he could leave a shot there because of the way that the five is lying. So it'll be a tough one. He, he I don't think he's going to go to try to try to go two rails because he could threaten not to hit a rail there. Although, probably would be a better result for him. Because splat, you're supposed to break from behind the head string. But if he was over the line, it would be on his opponent to say something. These are not refereed matches, so nobody's going to say anything. But I didn't see where exactly he broke from. Meanwhile, Edgy Geronimo is on a open table run up 5-2 versus Walter Glass. Sergio is pushing the 9 away, it looks like. Or into a different position. And Walter Glass has conceded the match with a few balls on the table, so Sir um, Edgy Geronimo has advanced. Meanwhile, Jeff Whitehead is up 4-1 in his match. No match has been called on table four, so I have to assume they're going to be going down to two tables soon. Sergio is looking to see how this ball was going to interact. He's going to come one rail most likely. It's obviously an important shot for him. He pushed into this. DeLuna gave it back to him. I assumed incorrectly. They did call a match to table four. Edgy Geronimo is going to be playing Danny Olsen. And then on table two, Rick Rios versus Doug Whaley. And then we'll go down to two tables here at... The Rum Runner. Mm, nice try. I think he's going to get safe. Yes. Well done. Mid-table. I don't think DeLuna is going to try to jump this, although he could. Jeff Whitehead up 5-1 on his opponent. I'm sorry. Jeremy Long is up 5-1 against his opponent, Jeff Whitehead. So what to do here? DeLuna's got his jump cue out. He's going to have to stretch a little bit. He might have to do a, a jump with a bridge. I'm, I, I don't know. I don't see pros doing that very often, but I'm sure he's done it before. Looks like he might be getting some sort of extension, maybe a bridge out. He, he might be going for a bridge jump. Luna is a caliber of player who pretty much can do everything. He's getting some different chalk. Maybe he's getting the extension. I think he got the extension for his jump cue. But yeah, he is looking for a bridge. He's got the metal bridge. I don't like those bridges. I think it doesn't matter to a lot of players. He's got a metal bridge, and he's going to be looking at a bridge jump. To make the one, which would be challenge number one. No, challenge number two is not drawing it back, so you're behind the six ball to hit the three. Many challenges on this here shot.
Well, he made the one, but he's a little funky. Yeah, Tim, I'm really looking forward to Sue being here. Commentating solo can be uh, challenging for the commentator and the people because you're listening to one person. Sue will be co-commentator, and then uh, Tom DiLorenzo has asked to jump on, and he has done many Andy Mercers in the past. We'll see some other people. I love pulling people into the booth, having them chat, getting their take on what's going on. So DeLuna didn't even have to change cues. He's got his jump cue in his hand. This is a much... I mean, that was a tough jump. This one, he's got all kinds of things that could go wrong. It's a long jump. Wow, what a shot. That's crazy. And he's straight in on the five. What a shot. And all Sergio could do is appreciate and look on. So DeLuna becoming precariously close to the pocket on his last jump and then just nailing that one. Ray from nowhere. Jimmy Mattia will not be commentating this year. I asked him if he'd like to, and he declined. Always fun, Mr. Mattia. Love the guy. DeLuna is not happy at all with where he is here. Close to the six. I'm guessing he's going to have to play safe. I don't see an offensive shot opportunity for him. Although maybe. He could chop into the side. I think he's going to be play safe by the eight, which he has. Sergio looking to pocket this seven on the kick. Jeff Gray, uh, there's some things to joke about, but that last comment. <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't. Um, I would have to filter out some people from coming into the booth, including the individual you just referenced. So Sergio Rivas, who's down 5-4, looks like he's lining up a kick to try to make the 7 into the side pocket. He's definitely thinking about it, though. He could try to kick this 6 and have the 6 hit the long rail and try to hold the cue behind the 7 and the 8. Not an easy task. Mike Leos, that's way too technically savvy for me to do. I guess I could try. Ronnie Allen just walked in. He might jump on the mic. Next matchup is going to be Ian Costello versus the winner of Jeff Whitehead and Jeremy Long, which is looking to be Jeremy Long at this point. He's up 5-1, shooting on an eight ball. So, I looked away for a second. I didn't see what happened with Sergio's shot, but I see Jeffrey at the table shooting a fairly standard run out, so it looks like it might be Jeffrey DeLuna. Looks like Jeff, uh, Jeremy Long has won his match 6-1 versus Jeff Whitehead. Jeffrey DeLuna has won his match versus Sergio Rivas. 
So we will be seeing Ian Costello. They're going to take a short break um, to allow the players because the Whitehead match just ended. So I'm going to cut the mics for a second. Next matchup will be momentarily.
I'd like to point out that Brian Parks is a wimp for not jumping on the mic with me. Brian Parks. Ronnie Allen said he would jump on. It's not here yet. But he threatened to jump on. So Ian Costello plays very fast. I'm very familiar with him. He's a local player. Extremely good one pocket player. Um, but plays all forms of pool. A pro. You know, a local pro. There's no pressure he has not felt. He plays a lot of big money games. Um, very smart player on the bar box. Yes, confirmed. Brian Parks equals wimp. Not coming on the mic. <clears throat> Tough roll here for Ian. He's a very aggressive player. I mean, he plays safe a lot, but well, it looks like he's going to play a safe here, though. He doesn't take time to think about much. He's a very intuitive player and um, shoots fast. Aw, oh, shucks, Mike Leos. What I need is for you to come back to Vegas so you and I can match up. I feel like I'm ready. I feel like I'm ready for Mike Leos and your buddy Lim, too. Ray's in the house. Ray who? Oh, in the house, you mean the chat. Ray from another mother or whatever is. Ray from nowhere. Nice jump for contact by Jeremy Long, and he's going to fluke it in. The fluke is in the way. Ian Costello showing his frustration at said fluke. Jeffrey DeLuna has started his match against Nino de Guzman. High ball game. Doug Willie is up 1-0 on Rick Rios. Danny Olsen is playing Edgy Geronimo. So, Jeremy Long with a fortunate turn of the balls on a nice jump to get up 1-0. Tim Kovacs in the house. Thanks for stopping in, Tim. Thanks for stopping in last night, and thanks for stopping in today. There will be a couple things I plug on this free stream, and one of them will be my restaurant. One of them will be Rum Runner, because why not plug Rum Runner, the host of this venue? I'll plug MLB Productions, and I'll plug Vegas Near Me, my friend George Myers app. That'll be it, though, for now. Trace Kane over there talking to Brian Parks, the aforementioned wimp, and uh, Ronnie Allen. Trace Kane, I think, comes up just about every year for this event. Jeffrey Long with a tough shot on the two, which he has made, and he's going to get on the street, so trying to capitalize on that fluke jump shot. The most popular dish at Table 34 is the Anchor Steam Marinated Pork Chop, and it is delicious. Actually, the most popular dish is the fish of the day, whatever that is. We get fresh sea bass, walleye sometimes, bronzino, halibut when we can get it, striped bass. That's the most popular dish. But after that, the anchor steam marinated pork chop. Back to pool. Jeffrey Long with a nice break and run here. He should get on the seven, and he's going to 
keep his foot on the gas pedal. It's Ian's break next. But Jeffrey should be able to get out to a 2 nothing lead against a very game Ian Costello. Jeffrey made a good contact on a jump in the first rack. He got a very fortunate roll to make the six ball and got out. Rum runners filling up a little more now. Bar's getting a little busy. You'd expect it to be packed in here for the second half of this tournament, especially for the finals. It's just an amazing environment for a I mean Rum Runner's done so much for pool last forty years in town and just a great environment. And even if you're not a pro, and a lot of these guys are, you feel like a pro when you're playing in these tournaments. It's Jeremy Long, you're right. Thanks for that, Jeff. Um, Gray, but it's, yeah, Jeremy Long, I had it right. Jeremy Long. It was Jeffrey Whitehead he was playing last match. Maybe that's why you were getting confused, Jeff Gray. Joe Klimchak in the house, if anybody ever needs quality. Hey, look, here I am, plugging something else. If ever needs quality key work done, Joe Klimchak's been the class of the city for a long time. He's got a mobile unit that does... Tip repair, shaft repair, he does rewraps, he does just about anything. He won't deal too much with taking a cue apart or doing repair or finishes on finish work, but he does do rewraps. Does a great job on it too. He did the rewrap on my Sean. I love it. Nice break, although the two ball is not in a place where he can see it. I don't think he's going to try to remove that AccuRack just yet. I don't know what the ruling is if a player demands for the AccuRack to be removed, but. Jack's, um, I don't know. What time is Sue coming in? Not soon enough, Ramil. Probably two, I'm guessing. Thanks, MOB Billiards. Any tips I do receive today, I'll be splitting with Sue Orr and some other people. So... We will accept any generous tips, and yes, thank you for that. I have heard from Sue Orr. She will be here around 1.45. Uh-oh, trouble, trouble brewing. We've got the one and only. Hold on one second. Ronnie Allen has joined us in the mic. Ronnie, how goes it? Hey, how are you doing today, Constantine? How's be... everything going today? Everybody seems happy. How the heck are you doing? I'm doing I'm doing really good. I understand these are 9th to 12 matches going on. This is whoever wins goes to into the top 8. Is that correct? That is correct, and when we go to the top eight, I don't know. I don't think they go down to two tables at that point, but they'll go to two tables sometime after that. Maybe when it's the fourth through, uh, I'm sorry, the fifth through sixth matches. They got some pretty good matches going on right now. They got some real good matches. Danny Olson and Edgy Geronimo, they're tied at one to one. Ian Costello and Jeremy is that Jeremy? What is that? What's Jeremy Long, yeah. Jeremy Long, two to zero. Jeremy, Doug Whaley from California against Rick Rios. So how did your tournament go? You played in this, I assume, right? I actually played pretty good. I lost my first match to Dave Totillo, six to four. He played really well. And then my second match, I lost heel heel to, um, I forgot what his name was. It doesn't matter. He some, played really guy. well. If anybody has any questions for Ronnie Allen while he's here, wealth of knowledge. In the pool community in Las Vegas. Oh, Constantine, I lost to James Cab Cabrera. James Cabrera? Yes. He played really well. Beat me six to five. 
Well, I actually played a pretty good tournament. I just lost. That happens. Sometimes you can't control the breaks, the rolls, and things like that. So, as we mentioned, they have asked for the Accurac to be taken off. So, Jack Scott, you know, I always make fun of Jack for this, and I thought after a couple of years it would change. He doesn't have one of those tools. He just uses chalk, which is lame. I should get him one of those um, those tools that the real people have, <laughs> you know, where you can put the ball down. Over on our table, with Edgy Geronimo is tied. Danny Olson. No score yet in Nino de Guzman's match with Jeffrey DeLuna. Doug Welly is up 2 nothing on Rick Rios. Nice shot by Ian. You've played Ian before, right? Yeah, I played Ian. Ian's a really good player. He's very, very consistent. He's running out right now, shooting the eight and then the nine, then it'll be two to one, Jeremy. Did you play in this thing, Constantine? No, I couldn't. I couldn't um, justify taking two weekends off from my restaurant in a row. I played last week, and um, but yeah, I, I wanted to. I really love this tournament, but I just couldn't justify it. You actually played really well last week. Congratulations on your second place finish. Thanks. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Now I'm super happy for Steve. I uh, I had my chances, but I did play well. I did play well. Now, were you the winner of the winner's bracket or the winner of the loser's bracket? Yeah, I stormed into the winner's bracket, and then I got double dipped by Steve in mm. brutal fashion. <laughs> oh, I don't think I played bad, but the roles got a little funny and Steve played great so he deserved it it's his time to win a couple shots I'll be thinking about for ever but <laughs> that's the game you know these things are really hard to play sometimes you know you make these balls a hundred times in a row and then you look at it and it's really easy and then you miss a ball or something happens and it's kind of hard to control yeah, the environment was electric last week, and I know it's like that for the Mercer, too. It's just, you know, these guys are a little more used to that kind of pressure, but uh, just an amazing environment. You feel like a pro playing in these tournaments. Ian trying to tie this one up after a couple of unfortunate, uh, oh, he got behind this five. I think he's... Is that a four ball That's over the there? four, yeah. Sometimes no, I have I a hard time good. seeing the four. That's the four. I thought that was the eight for a second. So, yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's going to shoot the four. I don't know if he'll bump the nine or not. I, I don't think it really matters. That was a good shot. Ronnie Timothy Cole from Colorado says hi. Hey, Tim, how are you? Did you come play in the, in the Doc Hill or no? Not this year? He's typing, so. He said, hey, Ronnie, how you doing? How you doing, Ronnie? I'm doing good. Nice to hear from you, Tim. Ian gets perfect on this seven. Just going to play it with just simple dead shot, and it'll be 2 nothing. I'm sorry, 2-2. Two -two. Ian Costello coming back. So, Jeremy Long taking a break. You're allowed one break during these matches. Rick Rios is breaking over there. He's down 2-1 to one versus Doug Whaley. And then Jeffrey DeLuna is up 2 nothing versus Nino de Guzman. Danny Olson up 2-1 versus Edgy Geronimo. These matches, the winners of these matches, go to play... The winners of these matches will play for s in uh, the next match will be guaranteed 7th or 8th. So anybody, everybody who wins this match will be in the Calcutta money. 
clearly an important piece of the puzzle. Calcutta not as strong as the prior years, but still, there's money involved for sure. I got a question t for you on the break. Last week when you played the Dock Hill, was it winter break or alternate break? It or? was winter. But the Dock Hill is always winter break, one on the spot, break from wherever you want. This tournament, as you know, is nine on the spot, alternate break, break from the box. And I believe that they changed that rule back. I was told the story that there was one Andy Mercer, and I forgot his name. I think he was called King Kong or something like that, some guy, and he... He ended up playing in an Eddie Mercer without taking a single shot. He lost a flip both times and lost six nothing, six nothing. Some pro, you know. So that's when they changed the rules to make the Andy Mercer a little different. That's the story I remember hearing last year. I'm sure somebody can chime in on that one. I know that I know they did it because they didn't want people to run out. But I actually, I actually prefer that. Now this uh, format with the nine on the spot and the break box, it was very difficult for me to make any balls and string right. any racks. I like winter breaks just all the time, but I do understand why a tournament where they have pro players, it's a race of six, they would they would not do it. But um, but I'm I'm a fan of winter breaks. Yeah, I wish they would change it back because I have the opportunity to run out six racks and alternate break. You have no opportunity to do that. You have to break good and you have to get lucky. And uh, it's very difficult to play these strong players that might be used to it. So interesting versus. decision for Jeremy to make here. The three ball goes in the corner, obviously, but it's going to be a little difficult for him to get around for this four. There is a combo, not a really functional shot for him to take. He could try to play safe. What would you do here, Ronnie? I can't see the angle from here, but it looks like he's going to cut it in the corner. And now it looks like he's lining up to shoot it, the combination, like you said. So he's trying to see where the cue ball goes and which is his best option, but he's elected to shoot the combination, just like you said. I wonder if he's going to try to break the 7-9 out. Oh, he almost flukes the 9 oh, in. Oh, he scratched. And, and he then... scratched. That was actually a tough shot, you know, because he yeah. didn't know where the cue ball was going after he hit that, and so it caromed off. One of them balls and scratched. Knowing Ian, he's going to go for a run out here. He's not going to try to set up any combo or anything like that. It's a pretty standard run out. He's looking at all the different angles, though. Sometimes he play if he's going to play the the five. He's playing nine, the combo, I think. Yeah. Is is the nine ball really close to the pocket? That's it, the only it, reason it he is. would do it. So it's a very very easy shot, and he won't. He knows right. he won't get out of line on that. So he actually played perfect shape. So he's going to go ahead three to two here. Nice shot. A lot of these times, you know, most top players run out, but if, if the nine ball is close to the pocket, it's a high percentage right. shot. So that's why he determined to hit it that way and it worked out good for him. Jeffrey DeLuna up 3 1 in his match versus Nino de Guzman. Jeffrey or? Well, Nino's lives here, but Jeffrey, I think, lives here now, but I don't know. Yeah, that's what I heard. I heard that he moved here. I'm not quite sure, but I see him around a lot. He's a great player. So that means we got two local players left in. Uh, Timothy Cole, answering your question, Ronnie, he's not eligible for the Doc Hill. You have to play in a, um, a oh, local you league. That. You've been playing it for how many years now? He's still got to play in a local league. You have to play through a league that runs through Rum Runner. Oh, I got you. Like, I wasn't eligible just by entering it. I had to win a qualifier to get into it. What to do here? Interesting rack here. Three balls tied up. There's a carom opportunity there. Getting from the two to the three might be challenging. It looks like he's going to shoot the the one and then the two, then play the combination maybe on the three seven. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, he, he could gets do a right that. Right end angle to come back down, or he can decide to play a billiard on the three seven if he if he prefers, depending on where he gets. Uh, 
No, he came all the way down for the combination. I think he could do either one. Yeah, I think I think he's. Uh, this is kind of tough to do the billiard on this one. So I think what he'll do, he'll he'll play the combination and then play the cue ball up and play the the three in the same pocket. There is a safe, but I don't think he. I think he is going to play the combo, like you said. Which he, oh, he actually he, did, but uh, he actually missed it. Got shape on the three. I actually like the way he played it. He just missed the ball. And the all important make the object ball part of the shot. Nice carom by Ian. Is he going to get on the three? Yes. So Ian could be cruising right along after starting off the match 2 nothing down. Ian, I believe, did get in Calcutta money last year. It was close. Rick Rios down 3-1. Actually, uh, Ian's a local Las Vegas player, too. Yes. So we got three three local Las Vegas players. Well, we also have Rennell Pira, who's from Hawaii, which is the Ninth Island. No, wait, Vegas is the Ninth Island. <laughs> so, but he spends a lot of time here. But Ian's definitely local. He plays out of Griff's. Big one pocket player. Nice shot. Uh -oh. Good shot, Ian. Three to two, Ian. Against Jeremy Long. Jeremy hasn't really done anything wrong in this, although he did miss that last combo. Just, just, that's an unforced error, but he shot the ball correctly. He just didn't make the ball. If he would have made the ball, I believe that he would have ran out there. Everybody's cut breaking. <clears throat> Donnie Branson said the year he got third, he was just breaking head on really hard, <laughs> and uh, his break was working for him. Is Donnie on the stream right now in the email? On the Texas right uh, now? No, no. He just told me that last year yeah. that that's how he um, was breaking. Yeah, he actually broke really good that year. I think he got. Second place? Did he get second place that year, Constantine? I think do you he know? got third. Second or third, I believe he did. He played really well in that tournament. So Andy Hughes, who is the definitive voice of knowledge with this tournament said that they cha made the change in 2015 to alternate break after Shane won four in a row. They wanted to try to slow him down a bit. That's according to Andy. Yeah, they definitely sl slowed him down. They slowed him down so much he didn't even show up this year. <laughs> yeah, he didn't really show up last year either. <laughs> so. yeah. I prefer they would change it back. I think it gives the uh, lesser player more chance to win. Even though the better player breaks and runs out more, but the lesser player has an opportunity to string racks too. Right. Meanwhile, Ian Costello is about to make it 5 2. He's played, I mean, flawlessly at this point. Yeah, he's playing really good. Nice and steady. If you Jeff. watch, notice the way he plays. He actually plays, you know, nice and, and you don't take any chance. You don't. Go flying around with the cue ball. You know, a lot of people are flashy and stuff like that. Just gets the job done. Gets on right. the right side of the ball. Takes his time. Good pre-shot routine. Then hits the ball in the hole. And, and that's the way everybody should probably play. Next up on this table is going to be Brian Parks versus John Mora. Well, that's going to be a great match there. Heck yeah. Both players are playing good. Nice break by Ian. Made the one ball on the side, which is the goal with the cut break. 
I don't, what would he, what's he going to do here? He's checking to see if the, if the uh, five ball goes past the nine. So if, if it does, he'll play the shape in the corner on the three. Nope, he actually bumped it. I don't know if he did that on purpose or not, but. I don't think so. I think there's a carom on the five seven, but he's probably going to play safe. It's kind of difficult to tell the angles from here. If it goes or not, but yeah, he's looking at all his options here. There's a top view on the screen, Ronnie, if you want to look at it. This one here? Yeah. Banked it. Got on the five. Good shot. I don't not know. Not an five, easy shot on the five. I think the five goes in the corner. I don't think it goes in the side. No, it definitely does not go in the side. Uh oh. Players kind of bumped each other by accident. I like to see what he's going to do here. He's going to elect to shoot this in the corner and, and try to get out. Unless he plays a safety. No, he's not going to play safe. No, I think he's thinking about it though. This is a tough shot. Not just making the five, but getting back on the six. You got to dodge that nine. You could get messed up with that eight. I think I think it looks like it's going to bump into the nine. How that? Well, he made it. No. He actually hit the ball pretty good. Over yeah, he did. just a hair. Now, if he made that, he had to come with a, a bank, too, to get out. I kind of like him going for that shot, too, because, you know, you play a safety or something, and it leaks out, and the guy runs out, and then you didn't give yourself an opportunity to win. At least he right. gave himself an opportunity to win. You know, if he made that ball, he can bank the six and run the seven, eight, nine, and get out. Speaking of getting out, all Danny's got to do is get on the six. Ooh, he might have hit this bad. This he is what did. I did when I was playing, too. He, now, this, I don't know if he has an angle to shoot this. It's not easy. Or not. He can make the six, but it's one of those hit it really hard and slice it. The six goes in the top right corner, but it's it's not an easy shot. Yeah, he's a little close to his work here. I think it's the only shot to take, though. He's got to go for it. He gives himself an opportunity to win. He made it. He actually hit it really well. Really well and got good shape on the seven. Not exactly where he wants to be here, but he'll be fine. An interesting way to play that. Well done. That was actually not a bad shot. That was, yeah, that was definitely in interesting. So the score is now 5-3 to three in against Jeremy Long. Danny Olson and Edgy Ger Geronimo are tied up 3-3 three to three with Edgy breaking. Doug Whaley and Rick Rios. Doug has him 3-2. to two. Then we have Jeffrey DeLuna and Nino De, Gu De Guzman and... Looks like Jeffrey's on the hill, and Nino has won. Yeah, Nino had a tough loss against Rennell Pira um, that would have made him uh, put him in the Calcutta money, but... Nice break, nine balls moving. I don't think it counts in the bottom two in this tournament. No. Which kind of doesn't make sense to me. It should count everywhere should if you're using an Accurac. Yeah. yeah. If you're using Accurac and the nine's on the spot, the right. The whole reason for not counting. Yeah. Anywhere. The whole reason for not counting in the bottom two is to, is if you're playing a rack your own. There you go. Ian just won the match. He did a one nine combination, hit it perfect, and put the cue ball behind the six just in case it didn't go. Nice shot, Ian. Yeah, that is a great shot.
So that puts Ian in the top eight. Yes. On the loser side. Next up is going to be John Mora versus Brian Parks. I'm going to cut the mics for a second. Yeah. I'm not very good at this shit. Got to... So I turned the mics up and not soon enough before Ronnie said he's not very good at this, but I think he's great at it. <laughs> Cutting the mics. Hold on a second. Okay. It's mouse. Something's wrong with my mouse today. All right, everybody, it's going to be John Moore versus Brian Parks. They're just taking some quick breaks, getting set up. Sue Orr will be on the mic with me in about 15 minutes or so, and we're looking forward to this winner side match. Top four in the winner side. We'll be back in a moment. All right, the coin has been flipped. Looks like John Mora won the flip. The winner of this will go into the hot seat match. Oh, Barring Parks, I was making fun of for being a wimp, but he's an amazing guy, a student of the game. I think he might have won this tournament once. I know he's won the Swanee. I could just walk over and look at the plaque and find out that information. Um, but yeah, so John expecting the rack as he should. John played basically flawlessly in his last match, except for an early miss. He points out there is a gap in the rack.
Brian racking again. John inspecting again. Looks mildly satisfied, as John Moore does sometimes. I probably should take this banner off. Looks like it might be a dry break. It is. But thankfully for John, not much there for Brian. So Brian Parks set to start off and make his run at the Andy Mercer Memorial Classic nine ball tournament 32nd annual obviously going to play a little safe here which if he gets behind this nine he has not so not an effective shot for him john's got an open shot on the one no easy task getting on this two but john's a crafty guy and he'll figure out what to do i think me being a lesser player would probably try to hit this one with a little bit of draw and just Come around where that five is to go to the two, but that's kind of a risky shot. I don't think there's a follow opportunity here for him to play around the seven ball. I think you just draw back one rail with a little bit of low left English to get on this two. You gotta juice it a little. That's what he's done, but he's missed the one. Will he get a favorable roll? No. This two ball does not land in a great spot, though, so Brian's going to have to figure out exactly. Two ball goes, obviously, but with that angle, a little weird. You draw it back into the five. He could maybe stun it and bring it around to kind of nudge the eight, which, is, which might be how he's going to play it. I think that might be what he's trying to do. Yeah, he's gonna well he's gonna jostle around the two. So pretty easy safe here. I mean there's no safe that's easy to hit against John Moore who can hit the ball from anywhere, but he can probably just graze. Oh, he's gonna go to the other side. That's probably a smarter play. I think he overhit that a little bit, but he'll be okay. No, nah, that's a that's a tough ball to hit. How do you hit this two? You can come around jacked up two rails and maybe hit it. You can't go to the head string. There's no masse there. This is a really tough ball to hit. It's tough to just tie balls up against a player like Brian, but maybe three rails. Yeah, that's the way to do it. That's what he's going to be trying. Wow, he hit that dead on, and he's going to make the six. What a crazy shot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just when you think you've made the perfect shot for safe. What a shot by John Mora. Electing to go for the duck. He's going to get perfect behind the nine or not what he was trying to do, but he got behind the four, so he had a couple balls to get behind. Elsewhere, Doug Whaley is up 4-2 on Rick Rios in a close match. Jeffrey DeLuna is up 5-3 in his match versus Nino de Guzman, and then we are tied 4-4 between Danny Olson and Edgy Geronimo. 
Brian Parks got his work cut out for him, probably looking at a one-rail kick, although that seven ball might be in the way of that. He's looking at his different options. He could jack up over the five, and try to kick the two up table, but he's going. That's what he's doing. I think he made it. Yeah. Nice shot. It's about an 80-degree cut on the three ball, so he's got to figure out what he's doing with that. George Meyer just sent me a text. It's ridiculous how good these guys are. I'm like, yes, it is. Nice bank. Brian helped my game a lot one day at Putters after we both had many drinks. Him and Jimmy Sweeney actually both told me the same thing. Just open up my stance a little bit. And Brian was very forthright in saying, you're too fat to shoot the way you shoot. <laughs> and he was right. He's, I, was, I was compensating my stroke by going around my belly. And it, it helped my game a lot. So I, I really appreciate it. He's a real smart guy. And he, he's an ambassador for the game. And um, just a great guy. Takes the four ball here. He's going to get a little. Is that ball going to slow down? Is it going to go in? It's going to be close. It's going to go in. Oh. I can't tell if he could see the five enough to make it from here, but he could definitely see it. Tough roll for Brian. Yeah, Cody, he definitely told me straight up, you're too fat to shoot the way you shoot. <laughs> and I opened my stance up, and I sh it, it, it helped a lot, a lot. Danny Olsen shooting a nine ball that would put him up 5-4 in his match versus Edgy Geronimo, and he has made it. Meanwhile, Nino de Guzman is about to close the gap. Oh... I can't tell from here, but I think he got on nine good enough to make it, which would close the gap in his match 5-4. Can't tell what Brian's doing here, but I think he can see enough of this to try to make it. Which he has. Great shot. Great recovery. Doesn't get much easier on the seven, but I would say this is an easier shot than the one he just made. Not trying to commentators curse my friend. Winner of this goes to the hot seat match. Well done, one nothing, Brian Parks. Doug Willie now up 5-2 on Rick Rios. Winner of that match goes gets into the Calcutta money. This is a winner's side match here. These guys are both already in Calcutta money. Losers guaranteed 5-6. We'll play again, though. Um, the winner is guaranteed third. They win this match. Lots of familiar faces around here. I'm sure more will be here. Paul McCaffrey in the house. 
Let me take a look and see who Paul's going to be sweating. Let me just look at this little sheet here. It might give me some insight. I see he's usually an active member of the auctions. Uh, not this time around, I guess. Just here to look at some good pool. So Brian trying to figure out what to do here. The combo is not probably the smart shot. He could try to play safe. It's always tough when you're playing someone like John, who is going to get out just from about anywhere. He might go for a combo here. I don't, I don't think he will. You try to play safe and graze the one, maybe get behind that five. Now, oh, it's tough double hit there. So John Moore with an open table. No real problems to speak of. Three to the four is really the I mean, maybe getting to that seven ball, but it's a pretty open table for John. Nino de Guzman down five four versus Jeffrey De Luna. Nino playing his heart out. Renel Pira overlooking that match. Danny Olson is up 5-4 and currently at the table. John's got a little more angle than he wants on this, but he's just going to keep it right around the top half of the table. Oh, wow, he went around. I don't know exactly what just happened, but I saw Danny Olsen shooting down on a ball. I think he bank massayed and made a ball, which is crazy. And now, the moment we have all been waiting for, the one, the only, Sue Orr has arrived in the building. Her mic's not on yet, but it will be in a moment. Oh, my God. Welcome to the booth, Sue Orr. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's our final day. This is exciting. It's been an exciting time. Yes. What are we watching? Let's see. We got John Mora and... So, oh, Sue, yes. speak right into right the here. center here. Okay. I'll adjust your mic as necessary. Okay. Hello, hello. I've got three angles. I got top view. Oh, this is awesome. I got I side it. view. Okay. I got main view. I like that top view. Yeah, I like this view because you can get a really good gauge on where everything lies. Yeah. This is nice. Way to go, Constantine. My pleasure. This so tell us awesome. about the last couple of days. What have you seen? Oh, my What's gosh. going on? Um, hmm. Well, obviously, we've had like some world-class matches, um, some huge upsets, definitely ones that I personally didn't expect, um, uh, some that really kind of shattered <laughs> the whole tournament, I have to say. Um, you know, one thing I definitely do realize is I, I feel like, you know, when you're a lower Fargo-rated player, when you're an amateur and you watch these higher-level guys and these pros, you know, the perception is they play perfect. And in some cases, they do. But a lot of cases, they make a lot of the same mistakes that the lower right. guys do. They are human. And it's really cool to see that sometimes. I'm sure they don't like that. But at the same time, you know, from, you know, even for me, like, you know, I'm a 577. So I'm, you know, an amateur by every means. But to watch a pro miss a shot because the angle was weird or they were under pressure, like, that's very human. I feel like that's the commonality we got all kind of share. 
Right. Now, all that being said, this guy shooting <laughs> is not very human right now. I know. <laughs> Although he, he did miss a shot last match. A shot? Was it a hard shot? It wasn't. Really? It, it was. Uh, he slow rolled a two and missed wow. it. But. Yeah, I mentioned to the audience before, uh, I was watching the match with him and Stephen Holm. That was such a nail biter. It went hill hill. And I swear the whole room went silent just watching this match. It was unbelievable. And uh, first, first round match. Yeah. Right. It was a first round match. Yeah. And it went hill hill. And they went back and forth on the safety battle. And Stephen Holm ended up leaving him. I mean, not a duck. I mean, a shot you have to use every ounce of your energy to make. And John Mora just made it like a champion. It was, yeah, it was awesome to see. That's why they call him Mr. Smooth. Yeah, no, right? <laughs> he stroked it so perfect. I mean, he definitely earned that last rack, but it was a nail biter to the end. It was awesome to watch. Stephen Holm and John drew each other first match. Here, I'll pull up which the is, chat here. Let's yeah. Let's see here. Two great players. The draw has a lot to do with everything. Yeah, for sure. Let's see. Edgy Geronimo pulling to even in his match with Danny Olson. Ooh, that's another one. I don't know if you're watching. I think you may have been watching during that time. Uh, Danny Olson was playing um, Long, Jeremy Long. Yeah. Yeah. I went. did see that match. Yes. Jeremy had that eight ball. Hair. That just hair. Yeah. Hair. Oh, yeah. But after he missed it, he hooked um, He hooked uh, uh, Danny. And I, just watching him, what he was going to do. And he just fired and executed the shot exactly the way he needed to to get out of that rack. Sorry, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> there, no, I'm just going to play with your mic a little <laughs> okay. to avoid reverb. Oh, It'll reverb? stop after a while. Okay. But let me pull up this live chat so I can see who's talking to. Let's see. It's right here, too. I can't see. My, <laughs> my oh. vision's terrible. <gasps> Thank you, Ravi. Hi, Cody. And Ramil, oh, you guys are all in here. That's awesome. Ah, and Didi, hi Didi. Very cool. All right, let's see what's happening here. So we got okay. So it's a little problem here. You can see um, he's got the angle on the four, but it's not ideal to get on the five. So I'm not sure which direction he's gonna go. Yeah, there's only a small window by the seven, so that's not ideal. I'm thinking he might even try to push it forward and maybe go up and down. Just... Maybe maybe collide into the nine. I think he's gonna try to miss the nine. Let's see. I can't tell how he's hitting it. Yeah. Yep. Missed the nine. I come. Oh, he turned the heck out of that ball. Yeah, that was definitely an awkward angle. Is this five go? Mm -mm. Is a bank? I don't think so. It, well, he no. Mm -mm. I mean, unless he can make it lose weight, but I don't see that happening. I mean, too soon, Sue. <laughs> I've, I've been trying. I was. I, I worked out today before I. Yes. <laughs> My teacher used to say that. Only if the ball lost weight. Look at this. I guess he made it lose weight. Well, I guess we didn't know. <laughs> From here, it looked pretty tight. <laughs> you want to hear the funniest comment I've ever heard somebody make? It was Derek Lorcher. Was some guy came into putters asking for action, and Derek's my size, right? And um, the guy was like, uh, Derek's like, are you any good? The guy's like, well, I had a pool table at home when I was growing up. Derek said, well, I had a treadmill at home when I was growing up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm good right now. Thank you. A couple sweet ones. Okay. All right. He makes the six, and he should be good here. Pretty. That was such a pretty stroke, wasn't it? Just clean. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Smooth. John Moore. There was a uh, graphic that um, Jack sent me that Fargo did about John Moore, a right-hander versus him left-handed. Oh, yeah. And it's pretty interesting. I always tell people, you don't want to see me shoot left-hand. I, I can't even shoot straight. I can barely hold a cue when I hold the left-hand. I might never shoot left-handed again after a four-ball <laughs> I shot in the Dock Hill. <laughs> <laughs> 
see, but you know what? I bet you could at least hold a cue. I can't hold the cue left hand. It feels so foreign. It's going to be a long time before I shoot at an important <laughs> shot left hand. <laughs> Meanwhile, John Mora is about to go up 2-1 here. Yeah. He recovered well in that rack, that four to the five. Um, it was it could have turned out wonky, and it did a little bit, but he recovered well and got out. So, are you rooting Very for nice. anybody in this tournament? Oh, oh, hmm, that's a hard one because I have a few. I have a few. Um, so just to name, so instead of saying rooting for somebody, I'll say who I've seen that could be a favorite to win um i think uh john mora definitely up there of course he's been playing like beautifully uh cena is another one to keep an eye on um i commented on his i think he a played couple super of his well today he plays very clean and simple nothing right. weird um very simple patterns he never does anything no superman shots like you know he gets out um danny's another one uh danny this is actually the first time i've watched danny shoot and um i was very enamored by the way he he's very effective at how he hits the ball and then of course you know that hill hill match we talked about um i mean to get out being hooked after the opponent uh, made a mistake, <clears throat> hill, hill, and to execute that shot. I mean, he he hit it exactly the way he needed to, to potentially have a win, and he did it. It was oh, it was amazing. Are you talking about watch. the eight ball? Yes, that he kicked in, yeah. yes. <clears throat> and I saw the look on his face. He had the eye of the tiger, like he was ready to strike. <laughs> oh yeah, he. It was good. It was so awesome to watch. Well, my my answer to that question would be less detailed than yours. I want Brian Parks to win. <laughs> Because he's all right, I, right, and I like him. <laughs> you know, Brian Parks also is a very decorated player. Uh, that I'm also aware. Yeah. He's won many, many, many events. He's definitely nobody to scoff at. I have actually haven't seen him shoot uh, on the live stream. Um, I may have missed a couple here and there. Um, I don't know if he ever got to do on the live stream. I think this might be his first match on the live stream. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so this year. Yeah, yeah. If Brian Parks wins, the party will be the best. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. What are Some the of these other guys are too uh, serious. <laughs> Speaking of Cena, he's on table two against Rennell. That is a winner side match. Rennell played great. Wow. I, I think that's the first shot I've ever seen. seen. Oh, is he practicing? Okay. I was yeah, going to say, so... I've never seen him miss a ball. I can't believe he missed that ball. Let me see John here. Okay, so he's got a little bit of a tester here, too. To go from the two to the three. Yeah. He might be looking at playing the extra rail with this kind of angle, but it, it the real estate is so tight. Yeah, he's looking at it. I think what he's thinking about is running into the nine. Slow down the cue ball. Maybe yeah, but make then it. He, could, he could mess up on the three if he Thank did you. that, but... I let's, think let's you're see. right. Yeah, I. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Let's see. I want to. Oh, can he even see it? Oh, that's the other question. I wasn't sure if he could see it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he's looking at. Okay. Oh, I love this thing. Oh, this is so awesome. Yeah, this is a good one. Way to go. Let's give snaps to Constantine. Mm hmm. Well, I had to dust off the equipment mm -hmm. to get ready for the. East versus West match that's coming up. <laughs> Are you I'm... gonna be doing that for us? Yeah, I must have been drunk when I agreed to do it, <laughs> <laughs> but I was reminded recently yes. <clears throat> that I'm. Uh, oh man, I'm to be there. I better start practicing more. <laughs> I gotta play good. Yeah, gonna it's gonna be a fun one. This quality of live stream, you're gonna see all of my misses. Pretty. One of these days, I've always threatened. In an event like that, to mic up the players. No oh, God, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and I have the ability. I just don't know if I have the inclination. Uh, Edgy Geronimo turning in a sheet. He won. Okay. He won it. I didn't see what match. happened. I see a two railer coming around here, and it's the only part of the ball that he can see. He hit it good. Look at that. Yeah, he did. Yeah, th that is so funny. This is actually the first time I'm really watching up and close, up close and personal, how Brian shoots. Brian takes chances sometimes. Okay. He makes 
It's just about anything he shoots at. Mm -hmm. He shoots hard. Doesn't um, it's a very soft roll sure out player. things. He's uh, one of those, if I decide to make a shot, I feel like I'm going to make it, guys. Which did not work out well last year in the Mercer. Mm. <laughs> I know because I had him in the Calcutta. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me see what's happening here. This is a little bit of a tester. Great shot. Look how pretty he hit that ball. Yeah. Kind of a little straight on the six, but not bad. I mean, he's going to have to float forward. He might even have a little angle. It's hard to tell. It looks pretty straight. Yeah. He's going to leave himself a tough shot on the seven for sure. Yeah. Where did my chats go? There it is. I can move this monitor closer to you if you want. Can we? So I, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so give me a yeah, moment I'll and I'll too, so make sure not to equipment. unplug anything. Okay. Yeah. See, he wiggled that a little bit, but he got it there. Look at that. He hit that really pretty. Got the angle. He's going to have to pop over for this one. It's not angled enough where it'll naturally Tim go. Kovacs is already talking smack on the chat. Uh-huh. Don't make me rap battle again because <laughs> my last one was pretty infamous, I got to say. Here, let me move my drink. Look at that. Pretty. He went forward. Landed perfectly on the eight ball. Very nice. Thank you. I know. I, I should have brought my glasses. <laughs> my vision is so bad. Yeah, Zach, you're right. He was kicking. I couldn't tell how much of the ball he could see. Tim, let me see what you said. <laughs> East side, B side. Get ready, guys. Is that a good... Uh... Can you see it, the chat now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I can see it now. Go. Thank you. Look at that. Nice. All right. That makes it 2-2. Two 2-2. -two. Two -two, John Mora and Brian Parks. Hmm? All right. Let's look around the room here. Okay. So RJ and Cena looks like they just started their match. So it's score 0-0 zero -zero there. I see Ian Costello. And who's on the other? Who's the opponent there? Oh, Jeffrey DeLuna. DeLuna, yes. That is a seventh and eighth place match. That's about to start soon, too. So for those who don't know, there's been a tournament or match organized, East Side versus West Side in Vegas. And Sue is playing in that. Jack Murray is the captain of the East Side, and Tim East Kovacs stars. is the captain of the West Side. <laughs> I have been swindled into doing a stream for that event. <laughs> it should be a lot of fun. I basically agreed to do that event so I could make fun of everybody <laughs> and have other players come in and make fun of everybody. So Let's be real here. Constantine says swindle, but he's going to be there with bells on. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> and drinks in my hand. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bri Brian has played well. Um, made a couple of clutch shots. Tied against Sean Moore. Cena and Rennell are off to the actual races. All right, John up to break. Oh, no. Sue, have you seen many players breaking other than the cut break style? Yes, yes. Have you seen some people hitting it head on? Actually, uh, uh, Jeremy and Danny both uh, were hitting pretty dead on most of the rack, yeah. Uh, a couple other matches as well, too, but... Um, it's weird. I don't feel like they had much difficulty with the break. I didn't see people struggling with getting balls down. But I also think it's because they're able to power it quite a bit. Um, but yeah, not some cut breaking, but definitely not everybody. Let's see here. What are we thinking here? Play the bank? Who is sitting by the pocket? I think or is might he playing play... a safe? I think he's going to come up table with a safe and try to leave the yeah. one behind the five. He's aiming the other way. Pretty. Uh, he might have left the window. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Mm. Let me see. From here, it doesn't look like he left a window. But, you're, I mean, you might be right. Let's see. Ooh, that is I don't a... see Brian jumping very often, although he does have a jump cue in his hand right now. My goodness, that's a tight window. 
make the cue ball lose weight? Let's see. Is he jumping? No, he pulled it out, but he's putting it back. Ramil, I'll tell you right now if Sergio's breaking head on because he's about to... Uh, well, that's not Sergio, so never mind. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> All right. As he's getting ready for the shot, looks like Cena just took one game against RJ. Rennell. His name's Rennell, but he goes by RJ. Yeah. So... <clears throat> What a great tournament he's had. Right. He's played some, yeah. He actually just beat Nino, too. He beat Nino. Nino, Nino was his toughest piece. opponent. Yeah. Um, Because Alan Cox had knocked Ronnie Wiseman out of that bracket. Mm. And uh, Nino is, is great. They went hill hill. All right. So Brian for the jump. Look at that. Oh. Clean. He hit that so clean. Yeah, he just did a slight jump. He must not yeah. have had too much of the ball. Like he touched the hairs on the top of the ball on the four and the eight. My goodness. He got it just over. I'm going to fix my drink real quick. I'll be back. Whoa, they messed up your drink. Well, they gave you Those HT. jerks. HT. It's if you see it in your heart to ask them to give me a Diet Coke, Diet even Coke. though they've been here nine times and asked me if I wanted something. I got it. So Ian Costello getting started in his match versus Jeffrey DeLuna. Doug Willie is playing Edgy Geronimo. We are in the final stages of the Andy Mercer Memorial. My pleasure, Emil. So Brian is jumping again here. Oh, he made it, but he's scratched. Is that okay? Okay. Someone will always be here with me. Brian just made a bank uh, on, on a jump, but he scratched off the table. Oh, man. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Ramil Constantine did a good job, didn't he? I was really looking forward uh, to the extra camera angles. It helps us a lot, too, to kind of view the table. Uh, Ramil's from Seattle. Yeah. He knows, actually, a lot of the players here. I think I've met him before. Yeah, I don't think I've met him. I mean... I just love the pool world, which I was, I've only become part of over the last two years, two and a half years, but some great friends and great people. I still remember when you walked into my tournament at the Q yep. Club. Nobody <laughs> knew who I played. when you first came in? Really? Nobody wow. knew who I played and I didn't, you know, I just bought a brand new Q and, and I, it was a, it had a 13 inch maple shaft and it was just throwing a bunch of deflection and yeah you had to ask josh condo and eric isonina how's this guy play and josh was like <laughs> not very good <laughs> and he wasn't wrong <laughs> meanwhile john mora making quick work of this rack yeah clean i still remember uh when you first came in and I asked you what your name is and you said constantine i was like "Ooh, that's cool and then what's your last name alexander i'm like wow yeah, have they, a very grand name. <laughs> they wanted me to run a country one day. It so turns out <laughs> just a restaurant. Yeah, Cody DeVito was one of the first people I met because I got to know Katie, and they invited me out. We went to uh, Baiwan Sushi. I was going to say probably and, Korean yeah. barbecue. No, sushi? Yeah. Somewhere where you could eat a lot. <laughs> oh, Katie. <laughs> For yeah. Katie. Yeah. Shocker. <laughs> It's my shock and surprise look. She can put it away, can't she? My goodness. I wish I could eat like it's that. It's amazing how much that woman can eat. I know, and she's just a stick. Ian just missed a, a shot where he slow rolled a three ball. So it looks like he's probably going to go down one game. Meanwhile, Cena is up 2 nothing in his match. Oh, it's both. Okay. I got to take you guys to my spot next time, Cody. I got What's your spots. spot? 
Um, I do like Master Kim's. That's a good one. Uh, they just I opened like one. Uh, I like the variety of their menu. Um, and the quality of their meats are pretty good. Um, you know, another one that's been kind of a sleeper that a lot of people don't know about is Nabe. Have you heard of Nabe? No. Yeah. It's a hot pot spot that serves unlimited sushi. So you can do sushi Ooh. and you can do Where's hot that? pot. Uh, that's on, it's right near Decatur and Spring Mountain. Um, it's actually not that far from Griff's either, like right around the corner. Okay. Yeah, that's a good spot. That's actually one of my favorite spots in town. If I get a hand cream for late night sushi, I'll go to um, Sea Salt, which sea is... Sea Salt. I haven't gone there yet. It's good. Mm, I want to go there. They cut their nigiri a little a little big, but... Does uh, it have the tail? Yeah. I hate it when I don't have, like it. Mm -mm, that's not how you're <clears throat> supposed to do sushi. For those of you guys just listening, but the rolls proper are good. sushi should not be cut like that. And a lot of these sushi spots do that. So if you're listening, owners of Sea Salt, <laughs> you've been put on notice. Yeah. It's, it's off-putting. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's just something weird about it. How's Brian going to get on this, too? Can he get enough inside to get around the forge? Is he going to come around? He, he's not going to come around. I think he is. So from this angle, uh, because the shot isn't too difficult, if he puts center right and gives it a consistent push, he can get it up there. Is it easy? No. I think, but that's the only way he's going to get up there. I mean, he can't go behind. He can't go behind the four, so that's not going to work. Um, he can't pop it. I mean, only other option is to duck, but even the duck, I, he look at it. He's putting extreme. See it? Look at that. Yeah. But did he push oh, it? Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Snap look for at that, that shot. shot. Snaps. Yeah. Very nice, Brian. It's a snapper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was the only way there. Dee Dee says Katie's secret is she has a hole in her big toe. Oh. Now we know. Mm-hmm. What a shot by Brian. Oh, yeah. No, pretty. Just Wanted looking at sure the angle. to get an angle. Yeah, it was the only floor. way to get there. He shot it perfect. I know, right, Ramil? Mm-hmm. He shot that good. Let me look at this four. Just got to knock it behind the six. Ooh, a that's a risky slow. way to shoot that. I know, but look how perfect he hit it. Yeah, he, he was probably trying to <laughs> hit the eight, or I don't know, he's probably trying to do exactly what he did. Go. <laughs> All right. Landed a bit straight, can't go forward. I think he may just pull it back just a hair and take the uh, the six ball to the corner. But even with that, because the seven ball's there, it can be quite touchy. He might even pull it back more to take the six to the I, side. Maybe the six in the side yeah. is what I was thinking. Yeah. I think it's. He could play a stop shot. No. No. I think it just depends on where he's gonna land. He's gonna. I think he's got options. Corner. So yeah, he kind of landed in the middle. All right, a little bit of a tester. There go. This is the key ball. Pretty. Pretty. That's pretty. Uh huh. As oh. they would say in my homeland of Virginia, that's pretty. <laughs> um, did Rebecca tell you the word that's banned in this booth? What word is banned in this booth? Fantastic. No fantastic, because apparently Jack overused it, so it's banned. That's good for to be fantastic. It is a fantastic <laughs> shot. And Jack Murray. And uh, I just really fantastic. What we got to do is come down to Rum Runner and... Uh, you know, check out the, the, the Gino Hill has done an amazing. This is my best Jack Murray impression I could do at this time. <laughs> <laughs> this is really fantastic. What a fantastic <laughs> way to do something. He didn't Jack had his work cut out for him last night. Apparently there were some players not getting along. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Ooh. I want to hear the tea. Come on. What which happened? Jack is great at uh, shutting people down when they're acting. Mm -hmm like fools it can happen in any tournament though right i mean yeah. even, at, even at the alpha there was drama i remember or was it the predator i met it may have been the predator event but it's you know we're pool players and sometimes we disagree and some are more vocal than others it's just the reality of the situation you know who's the only player i'm sorry the only tournament directors who's ever had to really clamp me down rebecca hendrix <laughs> what did you do i was acting like a fool uh -huh. and she had to give me the the threatening, which I 
stopped acting like a fool. Self-awareness is half the battle. <laughs> uh, looks like DeLuna's up 2 nothing on Ian Costello. <clears throat> okay, what's the... Uh, I see Doug Whaley, and is that Edgy over there? That's Edgy, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, uh, Doug is up one on Edgy over there. And he's on fire. Yeah, he beat another big fish earlier. Was it Walter Kiamco. Blatt? Was it Kiamko? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. 5-2. Oh, no, 5-3 maybe. 6-3. That three. is nothing to scoff at. Let's look at this break. That last break didn't lay up ideally. He took a little bit off, it looks like. Same thing. He got the one ball coming down to the bottom of the table. He just doesn't have a shot at it. I mean, he may cut this anyway, but... I think he's probably going to play the cue ball up table, maybe get behind the the two-ish, but that six isn't kind of in the way for that. You know what? I'm also seeing, if I'm looking at this line correctly, if he makes this, he can also bump into the seven in the middle of the table. Don't mind me when I start adjusting. Yeah. Well, oh, it's, it's because here. I'll, I'll... It's whatever's natural for you, yeah. Yeah. I, I stood up because I was looking at the ball. Um, but yeah, no, if you look at the angle, he can actually bump that seven. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. He might do, oh. and if he misses it, he'll um, get behind the two. I don't think he's going to try to go for any bank or anything here. Mm -mm. Yeah, he's yeah. cutting it. I mean, he may even go right through the window, but or run into the eight and bump into the two. There's a few things that can happen here. Let's see what he does. Oh, he just right made it. Right through. Oh, goodness. oh, and then the oh, standard Lord. four position, uh, four rail shape. <laughs> and he got the corner <laughs> pocket. <laughs> uh, Kyle Triple R. Raku is in Spring Mountain, but it's not a sushi restaurant. It's a Japanese robata grill. It's one of the best restaurants in town, and um, it's expensive. I am such a critic when it comes to food. I, I'm sure you are too, considering the caliber of your restaurant, but I cook a lot at home, and I, I know food, and... I know it's relative and everybody has different opinions, but it's really hard for me to uh, go to pretty much any restaurant and say, oh, the food is unbelievable. Right. It's, yeah. It's hard. I judge everything by how much it costs. Is it that worth? That too. Yep. Yeah. That too. That's a good point. Tough shot for John here. And honestly, yeah. I think kind of an inexcusable shot for him. Um, I, I mean, the angle looked funny, but he's frozen up against the three. There's no offensive shot for him. He didn't have a lot of wiggle room. He was so up close on that two ball, so he had only so much room to move forward. Um, could he have hit it better? Yeah. Percentage-wise, though, it was a tough shot either way. We're, we're probably going to see a duck here, I'm assuming. But where is the question? You know, all I see is him sending the three to the bottom half of the table and then trying to get the cue ball on the top rail that's really the only thing i can see because there's a few balls for traffic maybe shooting the cue ball towards <laughs> the nine thin enough where the three nestles up behind the uh -oh. eight the eight that's another option yeah but i think he might have too much angle for that mm -hmm. but and you gotta have touch too on that because you can hit it that's mr smooth he's mr. got touch smooth Oh, he's he's oh, yeah. gonna draw the cube behind the eight and nine and. Let's see. Oh yeah, Kyle. First Saigon eight, they're legit. I love first Saigon eight. That we have one right by our house, and it's the best. And that one of first one is another really good one too. If you're like in Spring Mountain area. So Sue, I have a telestrator, but for some reason, there's interference. My mouse is not working great. Oh. So I don't. I'm not gonna mess with the telestrator okay. which is unfortunate for the players at home yeah that's what i think too zach i think he's <clears> gonna <throat> push it to the other uh, if if you're reading the same thing i'm reading i think he's gonna send the three ball towards where the side pocket is and then try to hold the cue ball up on the high rail yeah oh yeah they're the bomb all right let me get my ice tea ready. he's kicking at it Oh boy, what is happening? Oh. What? Wow, wow, wow. Kind of surprised he hit it as hard as he did. Why? Here's what I'll say. These rails at Rum Runner are bouncier than 
some other of the diamond tables. Um, I've noticed that when I'm playing here. But it, it did seem like he hit that harder. Yeah, considering than... the distance. He didn't have to hit it that I far. mean, he made the three. <laughs> he did. He saw the line. Oh, but either did. way, Brian Perks should be up 4-3 in this match, and I believe it's Brian's break. Yeah. A nice little natural two-railer to the seven is what I see here. He goes straight up and down. That's okay, too. He shoots good. Just get on the right side of the eight. Well, either way, I mean, he can recover here. He does probably want to close up the distance, though. Yeah, Paul, um, it's, uh, we were talking about that earlier, you know, so we were talking about the cut break and I've done it many times on the big table and I think I kind of have it dialed in on a big table, but I have yet to execute it on a small table. Um, there were a couple matches where I felt like they were scratching quite a bit. Um, but yeah, it, it's tough for sure. I feel like the cut break for players of our caliber is tougher. Yeah. Um, when I played in this, I did the dead-on break, and it actually worked really well for me. Mm. But um, You have a firm break, though. You have I a do. very firm break. And it worked better for me, but the cut break is a finesse thing. But I have seen these guys flirting with scratches a lot on the cut yes, break. Yes, on the side. A lot of on the side ones I see. Oh, and the corners. It drives down to the corner quite a bit, too. Gutsy shot here for Brian. Yeah. He's I'm obviously going to go for it. I'm kind of surprised he didn't try to get better on the eight. He kind of just took the seven where it was. Here we go. He made Look it. Look at that. Pretty. Pretty. Well done. Nice shot, Brian. All right, so it looks like Brian takes the lead here. Uh, scores 4-3 against John Mora. Uh, update on the other table. Cena versus RJ. Cena's up 3-0 on RJ. That's an A-side match, you said, right? Yes, okay. both of these are A-side matches. Uh, let's see, Jeff DeLuna and Ian Costello, another good match. Jeff is up 3-0 on that table. Oh, that is it looks correct. like they started. Yes, they started Doug Whaley. Uh, Doug and Edgy, they're 1-1 one, one on that table. Devin, you are correct. You don't need shape when you could just make everything. I know. <laughs> yeah, that was a huge rack for Brian, and he's breaking. It is quite unbelievable. I mean, especially on a bar box, the rack turns very, very quickly, and it just takes a single mistake for that to happen. Well, especially at this caliber. Yeah. I mean, if these guys break and make a ball and have a, a look. Sergio's still in, right? Sergio Rivas is still in, yeah, I yeah. think. I think he might be on the B side. I gotta look. I don't have the bracket in front of me. Sorry, Zach. I've got the bracket right yeah. here. If my damn mouse would work better. Hold on. I'll have Constantine use his eyes because my eyes are unreliable. You know, whenever I hear the word eyes, <laughs> I think of the movie Blade Runner. What? When uh, Roy Batty said, if only you could see what I've seen with your eyes. <laughs> oh, that was a I've great scene. I've seen play. things. You human, you people. <laughs> now I gotta watch it again. Sergio Rivas got knocked up by Jeffrey Deluma. Oh, okay. Attack ships off the coast of Orion, the shoulder of Orion. <laughs> so Hello. Brian did a good break. He's hooked on the one. I don't see him going for the kick. He's probably gonna push out. Well, I mean, he can push out anywhere, but. Let me see here. Any problems on the table? Two sevens, all right. They're relatively wired. So yeah. So Kyle R R R. Back to the subject of Blade Runner. That scene, um, Rutger Hauer rewrote it, and the director let him flow with it. And they said people were crying on the set because of the emotion oh, behind it. Really? It's one of the best scenes. One of the best yeah. soliloquies. <laughs> Not a soliloquy, I guess. Monologues. Greg Romero. It was very light. It was a light Calcutta. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a sign of the times. Maybe because no clear favorites. Ooh, I'm not sure maybe. that's where he wanted to land. Sorry about that. I just saw something. No. Pool should take precedent. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Cena is in firm control of his match yeah. with Rennell. Four nothing. Jeffrey Deluna is in firm control of his match with Ian. Four nothing. And here we've got quite a good match. So I John pushed right. He, or no, uh, he, no, no, uh, no. He, he gave Brian it back. Pushed, he gave it back. So uh, at this point, he's going to have to kick. I mean, he, I don't think jumping is the answer here, but I do see right there. So coming off behind the four ball, two rails into the one. That's one option. This will go too long. Yeah, that's a, that's going to go too long. I, I only really see one option for kicking here. And, and then, of course, he can go one rail. But again, he's going to have to do shot. something because of the side pocket. Yeah. Can he see? Oh, he's jumping. He's jumping it. Ooh. He's been jumping good. He's got to watch that pocket. Ooh. I think he's going to get a good roll here. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. That nine is wired, though. John could jump this. Yeah. You know, the only thing is, let me see here. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell if it's wired to the point or the pocket. It's wired enough that John's going to go for a dart jump here. Yeah. Oh, boy. David LaRusso just walked in. <laughs> now, this is the beginning of the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, John's going for a dart jump with a full cue. What the heck is going on here? Oh, he's just measuring it. What, what to do, what to do, what to uh, do. I, you know, I'm looking at this. I don't think it's wired. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hold on. I can't move my shit. <laughs> He's going for a kick. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> David's only here 15 seconds, and he's already causing problems. It's wired. Yeah. Okay, it was so close. I was wondering where it was pointing. What a shot. He shot it good. Actually, you know, the shot choice was good. I like that. Uh, the kick was way, way higher percentage than the jump, and so that was a good shot choice. Yeah, here we are being <laughs> stupid, and him being the pro is like, I'll just kick at this. So 4-4 four, four with choice. John breaking. <coughs> All right, let's look around the room. Jeff is up on Ian, 4-0. Uh, looks like Probably 5-0. He hasn't uh, marked his game yet. Or Ian hasn't marked. Did he? Yeah, 4-1. Oh, no, 4-1 on that table now. So Jeffrey is up against Ian, 4-1. And then Doug versus Edgy. It looks like Edgy just came up one game, so the score is 2-1 on that table. RJ is over here. Score is still 4-0. It looks like he's attempting a long shot. We're on a player break on our table. So on the top table, Renel Pira playing Cena. He's down 4 nothing. <clears throat> Cena's really hard to fade. His he plays so clean. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever really seen him make so, a mistake. Yeah, so actually I don't know. Have you met him before? Do you know do you know of him? No, I haven't. So I actually talked to him. Um kind of wanted to get his story. So apparently he was playing uh competition pool and then he had quit for a few years um just helping out with the family business and so he had actually just come back to playing again and so that's also the reason why he said that a lot of people don't know who he is because he kind of stepped away from the scene for a while and he's from iran right he lives in san diego now from what i understand mm -hmm. i just looked him up the other day actually because he had made a comment not a good comment about um just tournaments in general. Um, and we got into a little bit of back and forth, a positive back and forth. Yeah. And um, so I looked him up and seems like a nice guy and he definitely knows how to shoot. Yeah. And he's looking to go into the hot seat match yeah. against actually, the winner of this match. He actually just did something that I haven't seen him do the entire tournament. He missed a ball. <clears throat> yeah, RJ is definitely struggling over there. It's tough when you're down four nothing. Yeah, yeah. To a player of that caliber. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, look, RJ is in the Calcutta money. Oh, yeah. And he bought himself for $20. No, he didn't. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So he's a winner <laughs> no matter what. T dollars. But they're they're not in the money yet. They have to wait. They are. Are they already in the money? Because in the Doc Hill, 9th through 12th didn't pay. You had to get to 8th. For the Calcutta, same here. See, they're not. But this That's is a winner side match. On the final day, but no, I no, was no. in the same boat. That is a winner side top four and the winner side player. Oh, okay. Never so mind. So the loser of that is guaranteed fifth, six. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, <laughs> he bought himself when... for $20. 20 bucks. <laughs> Good investment. My goodness. I mean, it wasn't a huge Calcutta, but big enough that $20 is going to go a long way. Uh, yeah. Oh, Kyle. Only reason you like Vegas is pool. What about Lake Mead or uh, Mount Charleston? Greg Romero. I don't know that I saw your comment, but I'll scroll back. I don't know. I've lived in a lot of different places, and honestly, there's not a whole lot of places like Vegas. And life is, to me, I mean, this is all relative, but to me, I just seem like, I feel like life is just easier out here, but that's just me. It is. And most people who move away move back. To answer your question, Greg, 16K, which is very light for this Calcutta. Vegas is a great place, although it's lately it's changed a lot. There's a lot to do though, and there's never you're never too far away from anything. Yeah, for sure. It's, and our roads are wide. They're nice. Roads are and wide. Big. Speed limits are faster. They're well manicured. You could lose your paycheck at a Seven Eleven. There's yeah, so many good things you know? that are about Vegas. Yeah. I'm not sure the uh, Lake Mead brain-eating amoeba has been a problem lately. Yeah. You know? I haven't been a victim of that yet. Or I, I don't know. <laughs> well, you wouldn't be around if you were. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're back to this match. John Mora, John Mora breaking. So his last couple breaks, he hasn't been Nine able to get a up nice. It looks like, okay, not terrible. He's got a shot, but not ideal either. He's got to move a little bit. So Kyle says the state flag of Nevada should be a traffic cone, and he is correct. <laughs> Cena is up 5 nothing. Ian Costello down 5-1. Doug Willie tied. Edgy Geronimo. And Doug Willie's playing an impressive tournament. Yeah, he is. You know, one thing that I have noticed about Vegas, yes, we have a lot of road construction. So does other states. You know, I've experienced that. But one thing with Vegas is they are not very good at laying up their cones appropriately. <laughs> <laughs> and so it confuses the hell out of a lot of people. And uh, I've seen many accidents happen from that. So Vegas yeah. needs to work on that for sure. Sometimes I feel like they're just throwing it in front of you as you're driving. Ooh, John missed. Yeah, it was a touchy shot. That is shot. a costly miss. That was a touchy shot because look how he held the cue ball. He had, I mean, any more and he wouldn't have had a shot on a two. So he really right. had to just touch this ball. But he still should have, that's a tough <laughs> shot. Mr. Smooth. Mr. Smooth <laughs> was jagged on that one. So Brian has got to either draw this back, but he might have too much of an angle for that. I um, think he might go forward, actually. I do. I do too, yeah. yeah. It's going to be tough to squeeze between that nine and that and two. And even if he lands short, <clears throat> he's got the shoot this way. No. David LaRussa approves of our our commentary. He's drawing. He wants to come underneath. Kyle Triple R, I will tell you a Ooh, hilarious story. Look how he hit about that. Perump. Very nice, Brian. If we ever meet in person. Snaps. Are we doing snaps on that one? That was pretty good. I don't like the snaps. <laughs> no snaps? No, I tap my cue. I hate the snaps, actually. Today's an interesting day because usually I can't snap, but I really can't. Maybe, some, maybe the uh, the extra particulate in the air? The <laughs> I smoke. think so. Yeah, I've been like bathing in it for the last few days. I will say that Rum Runner does a very good job with their smoke eaters. It's not too bad in here in general. He landed on the wrong side. I, that five doesn't go. Ooh. Yeah. 
I think he's just going to do a stop shot here. He's got enough angle. Uh, or, or not lack of angle. Um, Ooh, yeah, now he's checked yeah. up. It's tough. You think he goes for a combo here? Uh, no. I, I mean... Mm, because getting on the six is going to be really tough. Yeah. Well, actually, I, not that I'm tough. I'm honestly surprised as good as he shoots. I thought maybe he was going to draw it back. Right. Um, but he left himself in a compromised position here. And I and he knew it, too. I, I think he maybe just undershot it. No. That's a risky shot. David LaRusso is making I know, we got a, little uh, sweet nothings. We got a third commentator here. <laughs> Looks like he's just going to try to stun it. Look at this. Great Pretty. shot. Pretty. Pretty. And he's going to get shape. Pretty. I nice feel shot. like he was trying to get shape on the other corner, but It just went a little whatever. further. Yeah. 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 All right. So no snaps. Where's the Q? Q bump. Yeah. Bumping the Q. Tapping the whatever. Nice. He, wow. He recovered well on that one for sure. Jack Murray is a habitual snapper. He snaps a lot. He's fantastic at it. Brian's going to get a oh, little man. straighter than he wanted, but he's oh, fine. that's more than fine. More than fine. He can draw back. He can go... F uh, he could go he forward. He can get shape on this the... ball in 19 different ways. Let's see. It looks like he's going center, and he's pushing forward. Nice. Good speed, All right, too. Brian Parks. Pretty. Going to be on the hill here. He recovers well. Nice. Very nice. He recovers well from nights out drinking, too. Because <laughs> that's just about See, every night. Now you make me want to have a, a beer with Brian Parks. Is that what I need to we be We can doing? have a beer. All right. Yes, Brian's a great guy to have a beer. He's already starting without us. Look. Well, he's <laughs> he's drinking Bud Light. I'm not sure if that counts oh, as that beer. Oh, is that water? Okay. <clears throat> All right. All right. I'm sure, Cody. <laughs> so Brian Parks breaking up 5-4. Winner of this match goes to the hot seat match and will then be guaranteed third place at the Andy Mercer. Mercer. Andy Mercer. Memorial Classic. Looks like Cena's match is over. He won 6 nothing versus Rennell. All right, Brian up to break. Brian took Cena. that. Let me see. This is a good Nice break by Brian. Oh, oh, he's going to get behind the nine, though. Yeah. We, we haven't seen a break, like a solid break where everything was open and they had a clean shot yet. They've been struggling with the break for a few racks now. No, RJ did. Our, this is the winner side match. Hi, Q. What's up? Tim Cole is back. All right, so it looks like he pushed out here. You know, I talked about this earlier, about pushing out and giving somebody the whole ball. I'm personally not a fan of I'm this. not a fan either, especially yeah. at this level. They're always going to take it. What I mean, up, Q? I, I personally will only push into a kick or a jump situation. Yes. But yes. he might have been trying to do that. I don't know. But if you give him the yeah. whole ball, there's so many things that they could do. Oh my god. And he gave it back. Why? Why? Wow. Why? I would I you know what? I would love to learn the brain behind Well, there's this. no bank here, you know. Yeah, but and, and the, mm. the 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 I mean maybe you hit the one and, and bring it on it's down to the eight ball. Yes. And try to leave it, but mm -hmm. that's a tough shot and too. Bring the I'm kinda surprised back. John gave that back. I agree. I'm on on with him on the hill. With him on the hill. That's that's risky. Especially with your opponent on the hill. I wanna I wanna keep that table. I just don't like pushing in general because I just you know, I hate giving my opponent the opportunity. Hi Josh. But I, I will you know, obviously you can't do this against a guy like John Mora, but I'll typically push into a kick 
Because I feel like, and I know you, you're really good at kicking too. I feel like I, my, a kicking game is better. Yeah. But against John Mora, you know, yeah. I'm surprised John didn't take that push. Though. I'm surprised as well too. And I mean, look at the rack. It's wide open. It's a drill. It's basically a drill. It's just wide open. And I, what is he going to, oh man, I, I personally think if he hits quarter ball here and draws it back, that's what I would do. And then send the one ball right. towards You've the middle. You've got two different ways to do it. Yeah. I the mean, problem is he's on the rail, so it's going to be hard to. That's true. This is true. Um. I think that's what he's looking at doing. He's looking to see how the one's going to come off if he hits about quarter ball to the left of the one ball from the shooter's perspective. Bank one, two Let's... rails and bring the cue back by the eight. Oh, that's tough too, Zach. He's talking about this shot. Yeah. That's tough, Zach. I mean, he could. He might try to hit the right side of the one and bring the cue ball, but that's tough because you have to worry about the side pocket. Yep, he played what we thought he was going to play. but He scratched. He... Oh, wow, 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 wow. That's a surprising result yeah. for me. And it's it's one of those situations, and people always say when you're trying to play a save, focus on controlling one ball, not both. Right. And he tried to do both in that situation. Um, either get the hook or send the one ball where you want to take it. But he tried to do both and unfortunately went in the pocket. So we are going to be going down to two tables shortly. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm sure John saw it, but I think Brian could have hit that better, too. Um, it, it was tough, though, where he was. He was frozen on the rail. It was a tough situation either way. Well, one thing's for sure. If John is to pull this out and come back, Brian will be thinking about that shot for a little while. Yeah. Am I good? I just want to lean back my... That's, yeah, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. double check to make sure you're okay. This should be business as usual for John. The only thing here I see is he just needs to lay up nicely on this four. I mean, the three ball. That's the one. Yeah, the three to the four is going to be a little touchy here. And he knows it. Like, he may try to land it here to try to get on the four, but let's see. Yeah, he's I think got he enough angle. That perfect. He got just enough, yeah. But it's one of those things, like a lot of players take these for granted. They don't really realize how difficult it can be if you don't land on it correctly. You, they just see two balls just hanging around on the bottom side of the table and just think it's easy. So right. He took his time on that shot. Oh, did he hit this hard enough? I think he might have. Yeah, that's all right. He, I mean, it's close. Oh, I I, I, I confuse the four and the eight. Sometimes I do that. <laughs> I thought, I thought yeah, the eight they're was both the dark. Four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So clearly he hit it hard enough because he's straight <laughs> in on it. That's why I every once in a while I do a meerkat because I want to look up at the table, make sure I got right. the colors yeah. right. <laughs> you can't tell on the TV screen, but yeah. you can tell. At least the four is purple. <laughs> it's or, not pink. <laughs> right. Well, at least the five is orange, maybe, I should say. Or like baby blue. Aren't they baby blue sometimes, the four? As long the as seven. the five is orange, when the five is purple, Two bad things happen. That's pretty. Natural shape. All right. Oh man, it is interesting. It's gonna be a hill hill match. Oh, I can't even tell you how many hill hill matches I've seen. Yeah. Ooh. Thank you, Q. <laughs> yeah. Q and I have a funny story. So, um, long, 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 long time ago, when I was running the Q Club tournament. Uh, Q came and played, and then he left without his sunglasses. He's got these Oakleys, and so he messaged me, and I was like, it's okay, I got them, you know, I'll get them to you next week. Well, next week turned into next month, and then next month turned into about a year and a half right. before he ended up getting his sunglasses back. <laughs> but he got them back. I had them. Yoni Barraquatro left his sunglasses in this booth 
two years ago, and I've told him, I'll just mail them to you, <laughs> and uh, I might hand them to him when he's in town next week <laughs> for the MLB 550 and under. If I could find them. <laughs> yeah, for a moment, I even lost them for a sec, and then I freaked then out. I, I'm like, oh, my God, but then I ended up finding them. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Tim you Harris. Do. I brought him to you. Thanks for the love. Tim Harris, thanks for the love on Cash App. Appreciate it. All donations are going gonna, gonna to split with Sue Orr since she's the real draw. We got donations? We're, we, we've got a couple. We're getting oh some my donations. Gosh. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh, that's so nice of you. So last year at the Andy Mercer, um, Richard Miller donated a, a high quality. Canon camera to me that I haven't oh. been able to put together awesome. as a main camera. It's an EOS something, but it I'd have to make changes to my whole setup mm. to um, intertwine it. A lot and of it, them also are in build for live stream, unfortunately. Yeah, oh. so um, I have to get a lens for it, and um, but I might one day. So one thing I do know about Canon cameras, I only know this info because I tried to do a live stream with a Canon camera, and um, they have this uh, setting on the camera that actually kills the power after a certain number of minutes. And so when you're trying to do live stream, you want it on constantly. And so uh, in the cases, and that, mind you, this info is from two years ago, so it may have been different. It may be different now, but you need to modify the camera to make it stay on. That's one of the issues with the Canons, yeah. I love cannons. I have several cannons actually. Yeah. Q, I'll get your glasses. I thought I gave it to you already. <laughs> I'll try to get it to you. All right, what's going on with the rack here? Okay. A little bit of moving here. Um got the cut to the one. Okay, so here's one. Yep, that's exactly the line I was going to say. A little bit of draw, send it past the side pocket. Only thing is um I would say go yeah, go a little deeper, not so shallow, and it should land. It may even bump into the 9. It may go right past at 9, but I see that's the natural line to get on the 2. That 2 is frozen it looks like. Not that that means anything right now, but Yeah. Yeah, he sees it. Now, the key thing is he really needs to control this draw. Like just a night, yeah, yeah. Take your time. This is a touchy shot. And then on top of that, first trying to make the ball one, two, control the draw, three, control the speed. He needs to just barely miss that three. It's definitely taking his time yeah, and thinking about it, yeah. and obviously. Important Real, shot. It's a key ball, really. At, at the whole rack, looking at this, that's the key ball. Looks like Edgy Geronimo is just taking his fifth game against Doug Willie. Here we go. Up 5 2. Pretty. Oh, uh, how do you hit it? As long as he doesn't get behind this nine, no, which he's not going to. Is pretty. he going to scratch? No, 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 no. He's okay. good. Okay. Wow. That's Mr. Smooth. Pretty. He's straight. Still not though. out of the woods, though. Yeah, he's straight. I mean, but could you have hit it better, honestly? <laughs> I mean, he could have been about a centimeter to the right, but other than that, yeah. I mean, but come on, that was beautiful. Now, the thing is, it's not dead, dead straight, so he might he might be able to play the draw and get a decent angle on that three and also get off the rail as well, too. David LaRusso told me, can you go to the other view when John Mora was right in front of the camera? So, sure, here you go, David. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you're right, Kyle. Um, I do. I, I re I'm. I've always been a fan of Canons. Um, but I do know that nowadays, God, with the digital imaging and where things are right now, like there's so many good stuff out there. Here we go. Yep. He had just enough. Yep. Rest of the rack should be business as usual here. Uh, key thing right now is just to make a good angle on that four ball to get back down to the five. But really. That's yeah, about it. It looks like that scratch might have ended up costing Brian this match. Yeah. Which is so weird. They gave they gave it back to each other. I mean, he gave it to him and he gave it back to yeah. him. And it's that's so weird that that I thought happened. for a second John was had given made enough mistakes here, yeah. but Yeah. It just tells you just one little hair of something different during the match. Uh, the four ball is the one 
at the top, right by the, mm-hmm. on the left. Yeah, that's the four. Seeing this, John wants to get under the four. He doesn't yeah. want to get to the side of it. Towards the nine ball. That's where he wants to be because he wants to run just like that. Yeah, he wants to get underneath so that way he can run the rails. Came a little far, but uh, no, it's fine. He's fine. Kyle Triple R, John Wick 4 comes out soon, right? Obviously, I want to watch it. It's mm-hmm. going to be the last one for a while, they said. This is a two rail down. There He's are some the things angle. that could go wrong here, but not much. He shot it good. This is a center right kind for of For a player like John, this is a pretty standard shot. Just got to hit right above the pocket. Yeah. Just like, oh, he hit oh, that he hard. Went, he went wide. And yeah. that's okay, too. That's a good shot. That's good crazy because I would never have tried to play it like that. But that <laughs> now seeing it in action, it seems like such a smart way to play He saw it. the path, yeah. yeah. He knows his rails. All right. So it's it's presumable that John will get out here, in which case Brian would go to the one-law side. Brian will have some time to think about. Oh, look at this. That was close. He knows it. Take a breather, John. Take a breather. He did that pool player thing that we all do, you know, when we know that we just escape danger, just look up at the ceiling and question life for a second and then get back to shooting. Now you got a little close for comfort on that. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Nice. Good stroke. Clean. Mr. Smooth. Yep. Wow. Crazy. It came down to that push, isn't it? Yeah. All right, John Mora takes that match. Congratulations, John Mora. Uh, score was 6-5 on that match. I don't think I have another match right now. We're going to wait for this Doug Whaley match to go, so we are going to take a quick break um, from here, and um, I'll let you know what's going on. This is awesome. I'm loving the camera. It's fantastic.
All right, everybody, we're doing a little break here. They're covering up tables three and four. We're going to go down to two tables, probably about 10 minutes or so, maybe a little less away from the next match between Brian Parks and Jeffrey DeLuna starting. All right, we're going to get started here in just a few minutes.
Interesting thing just happened. Jeffrey DeLuna wanted to lag. Brian Parks didn't. The rule for this tournament is if there's a disagreement, it goes to a flip. So now we know. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Sue will be back on the mic in a moment. Brian Parks has won the flip, and we are off to the races. Brian looking at the rack. Nice break by Brian here. He's got a good look at that one. Oh, wait, but he didn't make a ball. So I guess not a nice break by Brian. Oh, they're removing the rack, I guess. So DeLuna was instructing Jack how to move the rack, and Jack said, I know how to do this. So <laughs> DeLuna's been making a couple friends already early. Nice shot by Brian. Yeah, so the rule in the BCA is that if there's a disagreement, it goes to lag. But I don't know if it's a rule that the rum runner has or how it is, but I, I confirmed with Jack because this situation came up in the Doc Hill. It's It goes to a flip. But the BCA rule is that it goes to a lag, or at least it was when I played BCAs, but I'm not sure. So you missed a couple of things. Your mic is not on yet. Hold on. I will turn it on. All right. What I miss? So they were arguing over DeLuna mm. wanted to lag. Brian didn't. And uh, so they had to get Jack involved. And, Bryce, and Jack said it goes to a flip if there's a disagreement, which I think is a rum runner rule okay. or it's Jack rule. One of the two, because in the BCA, I believe it goes to a lag if there's a disagreement. But I don't know. Um, oh, that I couldn't tell you. But in any case, they flipped. And then... And then the other thing you missed wasn't anything special. In other way, Brian has uh, broke and he is on a break and run. Came a little short there. It's all right. I mean, if he pushes forward with left, um, he should be able to stay under the side pocket and have a shot on that eight. You just can't hit it hard. You can't have that cue ball react too fast off the seven ball. You got to have it roll off of it. I think that's what he's playing here. Yep. See that? Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, oh, he on. went behind. He chose to go behind. But yeah, nice little push. For the next little while, I'm going to eat this delicious salad, and Sue will be commentating solo ish for a second. That's all right. I know. <laughs> you, you, no you problem for you. Yeah, I actually just spoke with the Mary Kaufman, and she, they said they went back and listened to my commentary, and they were just laughing, just cackling the whole night listening to my commentary. You were good. You are good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. All right, Papa C is going to go eat his salad. Salad, steak salad, too. Protein, lots of protein. Well, double steak, so enough calories. All right, so we got Brian Parks and Jeff, and this is a B-side match. Uh, looks like Brian yeah, Parks. Yeah, winner of this game. goes on to the third, fourth place match. Loser of this gets fifth, sixth. Okay. Wow, we are coming down to the wire. This is crazy. This is, I, I have to say, um, you know, when all these events were going on, this is actually the first time that I got to be here for all three days and just 
experience these matches and i have to say it's i it's been a privilege i it's been really cool to watch and um i'm glad i was here All right, Jeff is up to break. I keep wondering if Jeff is going to do that little hop that he normally does or that he used to do <laughs> on the break. I think he's been uh, taking a bit off just because it's a bar box. They even had that at the BCA with his with him in the air breaking the rack. Okay, so the cue ball did not lay up as nice as it could have. So cue ball stayed on the other side of the table so he's not seeing his one here let me look at the rack here five seven yeah everything is open here actually even the four to the five to the six there's a path because the five ball lays by the side pocket so really the only obstacle here is the one ball that is unfortunate because it is sitting right next to the pocket what's he looking at here he's gonna push i think he's gonna Let's see. Yep, he wants the jump here. He wants the opportunity for the jump. Possibly even a kick, but where it's laying, I don't see him going for a kick. I think he's going to want to jump this. Yep, there he goes. This is one that I've seen quite a bit through the event. And um, the only problem with jumping to a ball that's sitting right by the pocket is some players can hit it too hard and end up coming off the table. Let's see if he can control this. See what I mean? Yeah. I thought that was a pretty risky jump. I mean, I know yes. he's a great and he's a pro, but it, it that was. was pretty risky to jump yeah. with that ball. And honest, and if you look at how far he jumped it, he he jumped it on top of the ball. He jumped it to hit the top of the ball, and so right there, right then and there, he just hit it way too hard. Mm -hmm. I. <coughs> So here's an interesting thing. So I see a lot of players um, going for jumps where the balls are sitting right by the pocket. And as I mentioned earlier, a lot of times the ball ends up jumping off the table. Yet I kind of I kind of equate this to the same thing where, um, you know, I see two really close balls. Like if your, clo uh, your cue ball is right up on an object ball, barely any room to move. And generally, when I see the when I come across those shots, I will almost always shoot away from it. But I can't tell you how many times, regardless of the chance of it being a bad hit, players will almost always attempt to shoot into it some way, somehow, and end up fouling. And I think this is a similar situation where people know what's possible, but they do it anyway. I tried to work in my game on the. Avoiding the effort mentality of shots, like okay, well, I don't have a better shot, so I'm just gonna do this, even though I know it's probably <laughs> not. So, you know, obviously a different scenario there because I mean Jeff Loon is a pro, but it's just not doing those shots where you're like, well, I think if I hit it, I might jump the ball off the table, but I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot you're it anyway because anyway. I don't have a better shot. I mean, there's gonna be situations where that's gonna happen, yeah. of course, but oh yeah, I, I've worked on not doing the effort shots, you know. Yeah. And um, Mike, I just saw your comment how he hit it 2% hard. I, I think he hit it a bit harder than 2%, to be honest. Like, even if he landed on top of the one, what was the likelihood that the cue ball was going to stay on the table? Well, he, yeah, he, he almost hit the back side of the yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, he hit it hard. No. This is an opportunity for Brian. Now, for those of you guys just tuning in, uh, Brian just came off a match um, with, uh, who did he just play? Uh, Mora. Mora, John Mora. And it came down hill, hill. And honestly, the, the one single error that ended up costing him the match was a push that went back and forth. And then Brian attempted a safety that ended up scratching. Um, 
And so Brian is coming off that match now, but it seems like he's got good momentum and um, he's pushing forward, which is really, really good. I did, uh, I did see a couple matches earlier in this tournament where they had some bad losses and they kind of internalized that loss and they were having difficulty performing, which happens to all of us. And so it's really nice to see that Brian is recovering well and he's moving forward. So this is going to be a good match. I'm trying to remember, Narnar, -nar, are you the one that that owes me a dollar? I think you owe me a dollar. <laughs> it's either you or Emil. I couldn't remember who I bet a dollar against yesterday. <laughs> I would I would like to test that. Like uh if Jeff DeLuna made that shot five times, how many times could he make it and not jump off the table? I'd really be curious to see those stats. I think it might be Narnar that owes me a dollar from yesterday. We'll see. We'll confirm. All right. Brian is up to break scores 2-0 against Chef DeLuna. Do we need to break out the Papacy Collection Agency on this? <laughs> Let's see the break. The ball pocketed. One ball's moving. He's got a shot. A uh, bit of a tester, but not. he's got the shot, though, and he's not jacked up over a ball. He has enough of it to shoot the one. There is a potential run out here. No obstacles. The only thing is the angle, uh, at least from here. Could we see a different angle, uh, Constantine? I want to look at the angle on this one ball. Okay. So if you look at that angle, it actually sends the cue ball more towards the eight ball. And I'm sure he can hold it with inside and graze off that eight and try to get a straighter shot on that too. But this is going to, I see this as a tester for the entire match or for the entire game rack i guess so let me see what he does here does he have enough of this to throw enough insight on it let's see he is hitting low why is he hitting low yeah that was oof he got a little jelly roll there now this one that's what i was talking about with brian he goes for those shots and he makes them most of the time but he's not afraid to really yeah. juice a ball like that didn't work out for him well worked out for him but um he um he's not afraid of those power shots you know this is type of player looks like you're gonna have uh, your dollar in your hand eventually <laughs> narnar is gonna yes. find you will seek you out all right now this is a jump that i do see has a higher chance a higher success right here let's see how he does this little pop yeah see that was better that was better it looks like he's going to be pulling it out again for the two ball. Two zero one one for the four digits. Thanks, Ramil. Good time to say that any proceeds or little donations I'm splitting with Sue Orr, Aww. coming out and donating her time to this to this match. He might get a little bit. Oh boy, look at that. Hey, it can happen on a bar box to anybody. He hit it firm. And thank you everybody for um, whoever's donating. I didn't even realize there was a possibility for donations here. I've just been here commentating, but that's very kind of you, Constantine. I really appreciate it. And your F they need your SSN. <laughs> My SSN is 867 5309. The name is Jenny. <laughs> okay, so here's it. So I'm not sure what happened here. He didn't hit this as clean as I expected him to. And now he's got a bit of a tester here. A couple ways. I, I don't see him going forward. Um, he doesn't need to. He can actually draw back for this, but. But also the line for the draw, if drawn too well, can side actually, pocket's yeah, gonna get in the way. It can go sideways quite a bit here. Yeah, he is drawing. I see him. Look at this. Look at that. Pretty. And he got the angle on the six. Yep. He hit it good. He hit it good.
it's of note to say that you can send me any wagers lost to Sue to one of the uh, <laughs> links you see, and I'll be happy to hand her a dollar. <laughs> All right, Brian Parks. Uh, so scores 2-1. Jeffrey is on the board. All right, he got a little jelly roll getting that three ball into the side pocket, but it is bar box. It is absolutely possible on these tables. Oh, and I'm happy to say I got to have my beer with Brian. <laughs> <laughs> there are many beers in Brian's future, no matter what happens. I officially introduced myself to him and had a beer with him. You know, life is good. What can I say? All right, Jeff is up to break. His last break didn't lay up as nicely. I want to see how this one does. He hit that much more square, and he got the cue ball squat in the middle of the table. Yeah, I think he got rewarded much better here than he did the last rack. Now, two is a bit of a tester. It's not a tester in the shot, but it's a tester to get it on the four. Um, let me see here. And he's jacked up. I think, let me see here. Okay, so he is hitting outside on this. He's just going to try to, he might even just run into the five ball. Yep. My goodness. Did I call that or did I call that? Nice shot. Still not a duck, but shot to the corner should hold it well enough for the five and the rest of the rack should be business as usual oh he went to the side hmm kind of one stroke that wondering if I gotta try that steak salad now. The steak salad at Rum Runner can be hit and miss. It can be very, very good, but it's also not expensive, so sometimes the steak, you know, you might have to go through, but it can be very, very good, as mm. it just was. Is it tender? The steak? It can be, you know, it's a six dollar steak. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you can only ask for so much. It's tender in your imagination. Just... You might have to go through a couple pieces, but <laughs> Um, elsewhere on table to uh, Renel Pira's uh, tournament has taken a different turn. Um, he had a comparatively easy route to the round of four on the winner side, but then he ran into um, a couple of high 700 players, and unfortunately he, he lost his first match to Cena, and now he's going to be down 5-1 to Edgy Geronimo, who is very much cruising along. Yeah, he's got Whatever happens, them. great tournament for Renell. It's not looking good for him right now. All right. So Jeff had a good break. And he actually had a good recovery on that first shot, and he ran out the rack. So let's see what Brian does here. Score is 2-2. Two -two. Like he let off a little. Oh, that is unfortunate. He got the kick into the pocket. And let's see. Any problems on the table? Okay. So the two to the four is going to be a little touchy. Um, there's a bit of traffic. Nothing too complicated, though. There's enough of a gap right by the five to be able to squeeze in that two and roll up to that four. So it shouldn't be too bad. Is he aiming it to go to the other pocket? Hmm. I thought for a second he was trying to set it up to shoot the two as a combo, but I don't 
I think he would do terrible. that. Terrible. Yell Mika while he's aiming. Come on, guys. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even know if I wanted to address that comment. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Pool players are pool players. We are all. Well, human. everybody's gonna. Everybody's gonna have their opinion on that situation, yeah, but nobody's perfect. We all make our mistakes. Didn't appear like Deluna did much wrong on that one, but I don't know. I don't have all the details. I guess that's one thing about being in the public eye. You know, people tend to not forget <laughs> about your mistakes and you have to kind of relive it sometimes. But, uh, but you know, I got to hang out with Jeff a little bit. I don't know Mika personally, but, you know, we're all human and, and there are mistakes made and we react and then life goes on. But didn't the ref call that? Yeah, I think the ref foul? called yeah. it. The only thing is uh, Jeff didn't contest it. That's the only thing that I saw. But, you know, as an opponent trying to get back to the table, you know, not surprised why I didn't. Oh, so it. people are saying Jeff should have been like, whatever. Yeah, like that's, whatever. It's obvious. Right, right, right. But, you know, in a pressure match like yeah. that, you know, you want every little bit you can. I mean, I, I, I get it. Oh, this is OK. I was looking at that. He hit it firmer than I expected. I thought he was just going to barely tap it, but he ended up hitting it firmer. And now he's wonky on the four ball. Well, I can tell you at last year's Doc Hill, different situation. But I told a player they were shooting the wrong ball, and it almost cost me the match. And I oh. said, I'll never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> but different situation. Yeah, I mean, you know, for majority of players in any given match, I think we do try to conduct ourselves in the best manner possible. I mean, we really do. And there may be some that don't, but for the majority, you know, people do try to be honest and stuff, but we're never going to be perfect. You know, we are, we do make mistakes. And especially in a heated situation, to expect somebody to act correctly immediately, it's, you know, it's human nature. Well, in this match here, Jeffrey has come back three in a row very quickly and will be breaking next. Nice. All right, Jeff is up 3-2 against Brian Parks. That was an unfortunate scratch. He had a good break, made balls down, but he scratched in that corner pocket. Oh, yeah, I got to get my cable. Do you have your cable, or is Rosen Rebecca? Oh, I can You know, Narnar, I didn't see what happened. So, you know, Trick texted me and he told me that he had such a tough match against Walter, but I didn't get to watch it. And so I don't know what happened. But, you know, both of them, I have much respect for them, for both of them. Uh, Trick is my practicing partner. We shoot with each other quite a bit. And Walter is a legend, of course. So uh, I'm. my only regret is that I didn't get to see that match. So I spoke with Trick last night because I bought him into the tournament and he, ah. he was just calling to tell me about it. And, and um, he, uh, without going into too many details, I don't think they'll be hugging anytime soon. Oh. <laughs> Trick played very well, though. He was um, close to getting into money and uh, he's a great guy. Nine ball almost went in. All right, we got the break. We got hmm, potential carom into the eight, depending on how he hits this ball. Who is Nar Nar, by the way? I know, I never got his name. <laughs> I've been calling him Nar Nar the whole time. These YouTube synonyms or pseudonyms are. Uh... Very nice. Congratulations, Kelly Fitcher. Way to go, Savannah. That's a great finish. Ramil, right. I've, I've considered miking up the players, but what could go wrong, right? <laughs> it's my initials. Nar, Nar, N-A-R, N-A-R. What? Nar, Nar. What is your name? Give us your name, Nar, Nar. 
See, just because we're like asking for it now, he's never gonna give it to us. So last year I was getting trolled, and I'm not suggesting you're trolling Nardar, but I was getting trolled by a a person named Buddy Jesus, and then um I was trying to figure out who was, and finally Rebecca Hendricks uh, dimed him out. Was like it's Bill Paola. <laughs> <laughs> he was like I was gonna keep that going all week. <laughs> You know, I'm wondering why Jeff sent it there. He can see a piece of that one. Actually, you know, he could even nudge that one into the eight and possibly make it. Or the four, I'm sorry. What, is that the eight? That's the eight, yes. That is the eight. That is a potential shot here. Kick into the rail. Oh, he could see more of that than I thought. A nice little high. Wow. Nice shot. That's going to be a tough ball for Jeffrey to hit, actually, because where the eight is. I, I think he sees the point on the table, though. Yeah, he could jacked up, shooting jacked. I mean, up. he could hit it for sure, but he's it's a tough, tough shot. Oh, bad hit! Kind of rushed it, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you know, he hit it kind of fast. I mean, he's kind of in a groove, you know, shooting yeah. fast, and um, but. Edgy Geronimo turning in his sheet beats Rennell John Pira uh, six to one. Rennell had a great tournament, got to the winner side last four, and then um, ran into a couple of really good players. But he got fifth, sixth place, which is a great accomplishment for a sub six hundred player in this tournament. Congratulations, RJ. This is the key ball right here, and he shot that. My God, could he have hit that any prettier? No, he could not have hit that, that any prettier. Speed. A little high for the four, but I, I think he's going to end up playing it to the corner, possibly. Let's see. Oh. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. There's yeah, a ball he's, on the he's, table. Yeah. Hello. I do that all the time. Gosh, so Constantine. Well, I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> I was just like, well, she'll realize when... Uh, there you go. Okay, now he's on the four ball. I can't even tell which one's the four and the eight half the time. So. <laughs> yeah. He's doing all right. I see a little back and forth here. See, six ball. Okay, so this is a little bit of a. This can be an awkward shot as well. I feel like it would be better just to come and just lay up by the side pocket. But it, like I said, they hit the ball differently. So let's see. He might even come up the other way. Yep. Wow, interesting. Mm, he got in between. It's not where he wanted to be. Yeah. So he could either try to cut this into the bottom right corner pocket which is probably the shot it doesn't go past the seven into the bottom left corner pocket i don't think he's going to try to cut it to the side there's no real safes here i think the only shot here is to cut it into the bottom right corner pocket maybe try to nudge that nine away or come around it but or make the nine that's an option too i thought about it you know but <laughs> Say it again, Rocky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, great. We had David LaRusso behind us. Now we have Rocky <laughs> Phipps behind us. <laughs> Somebody. I'll take Rocky. Rocky's a little more stable right now. <laughs> Mike, I would do. I would be doing the exact same thing. Like, <laughs> you don't want to mic me up. It, it's going to be bad. It's just be a really Well, the bad. idea to mic players up was like one of those like cash game things or whatever. <laughs> You know, I actually, the first time I thought about it, I was, I was re Reno Provine and my, and myself were playing Jack and Rebecca and I was like, I'm going to put the player mics on. She's like, no, I can't unsay half the things I want to say. And I'm like, you're right. I think we should do it for fun. Just one time. And just I might do it happens. during yeah. the, the East versus West Yeah. and just mic some players up. And don't make it live. Can you, Ooh, that's the thing. It's gotta be, it's live. gotta be. Oh, oh, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> I don't know about that one. 3-3. Three, three. This is the only match going right now. The winner of this match is going to play Edgy Geronimo. Knock over this hole, sir. No. Hey. All right. What do we got here? 3-3. Three, three, close match, as expected. Oh, look at this. Ugly rack here. Oh, clean shot on the two this time. Clean shot on the two and the three. Five ball is going to create some problems. Five. 
Jeffrey DeLuna definitely playing with pace right now. Five and six is going to be, it's going to come into play. Six is in an awkward position. Uh, five is blocked. Rum runner um, starting to fill up a little more now, although it's not quite as full as I remember last year, but I'm sure it will be. Yeah, and he's trying to, so I can see, so he actually got on it pretty well. Um, he's trying to get the angle to shoot the five into the side pocket. Um, also, if he gets the right line on the five, he should be able to get the right line on the six. It is touchy, though. There's there's a little bit of traffic. To answer your question, Kingfish Red, David LaRussa has never been stable. He's a friend of mine. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, I'm not going to comment on the... Good speed. The, Look at that. Yeah. I'm not sure what that means, but... Look at that. He hit that exactly where he needed to to get yeah, to Yeah, he's playing with speed. He's, he's, he's in a groove here. One rail, draw down. Voila. 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 To check your phone. Yes. Oh my gosh, Andy. If if I ever had the opportunity to commentate for the Moscone Cup, it would be that would be unbelievable. That would be an amazing opportunity, and I would love to do that. Both of us, Constantine. Andy saying both of us. When where we should be commentating at the Moscone Cup. Heck Can yeah, you we imagine? Should. Oh. Ooh. Somebody should send them this video. I know. There's some good commentators out there in the pool world, but there's some. There's also, I'm not gonna name names, but there's some bad commentators out there. <laughs> yeah, there. Who are like on pro events, and I'm just like, what's going on here? You know, one of the things personally that I wish I saw more commentators do is talk about the game. I I can't tell you how many events that I've tuned into. Where they're talking about everything else but, but the, the match, game, yeah. you know, and it is frustrating for us viewers because not everybody understands what's happening at the table. So to have commentators that are knowledgeable that can actually explain in layman's terms a lot of times what's happening, it's it makes the experience so much better. Narnar, and that's just personal opinion, right? Narnar telling me to work, us to work on our English accents. <laughs> How about this? Welcome to McGregor's, where if it's not <laughs> Scottish, it's crap. <laughs> The best I could do is a Korean accent, and I'm not even good at that either. Look at this oh, nine. Yes. Oh, my goodness gracious. Aren't you, like, Korean? I am Korean, <laughs> okay. but I, I, I'm i an American. I mean, I I speak Korean, but I speak better English right. than I speak Korean. So this one doesn't go. The combo is not there. Um, you know, Jeffrey's going to have to oh, figure out. Oh, that would out. be great. I, I, I agree with you, Kingfish Red. I still have yet to meet Andy in person. I know I will eventually. So but... you think a safe... I've met Andy once. Do you think I say? And I asked him if he could be here, but unfortunately, the smoke is a little. You know, um, you know he's what? He's gonna I graze the one here and go behind the seven, or or try to go behind the eight. You think? What I see here is that he's gonna graze it and then put a lot of right and tuck in behind the six. Right. I think that's a viable shot there. Yeah. Um, you, what about grazing the one on the right side from the shooter's perspective? And, and trying to play behind the seven. That's, you That's can, risky. You can't, but I think with enough, you know, these guys have the touch to do it. Even if the one ball peeks out, I don't think it's they're going to hit it hard enough for it to peek out where they have a shot. Oh, he wants to draw. He wants he's to looking pull to play, that back. He's looking to, to play the cue ball back behind the five, yeah. But then where does the one go? Does the one potentially go in the side pocket? No. Let's see. Yes, I, that would be so awesome, Andy. I would love to meet you. You've been such a big supporter, and I really appreciate all your encouragement. So honestly, uh, I thought about it, and I don't think I'd even be here volunteering my time if it wasn't for you. You gave me such wonderful feedback from the last time I did this, and so it, it makes me want to do more. So I really do appreciate it. Andy, what I want to know is how big is your storage area? Because you seem to have things dating back <laughs> quite some time. You pulled out the you pulled out a copy of the first ever Calcutta and Andy Mercer. 
which is amazing, by the way. He has the best stuff. Yeah, he does have the best stuff. And the, the Southwest cues, I'm like drooling. Yeah. I'm, I'm like drooling. That's one of my dreams, actually, to have one Southwest cue. Maybe one day when I'm rich and famous, I'll get one, but they're a little <laughs> out of my price range right now. I know. Now. Yeah, me too. Me too. So meanwhile, Brian has a, a really good shot at this uh, rack. I mean, this might be his biggest problem ball here, and it's not a big problem oh, get ball. There, oh, get there. He, he, he got, got there. He, he got, got there. <clears throat> That that was that's the only problem that I see on the table. Well, yeah, the four goes anywhere, and so you yep. just gotta draw this back a little bit, and he'll be Center, good. Yeah, you know the. F just pull it back about what a foot and a half, something like that. There you go, Hardy. Richard Glassrock, Sue's partner in the booth, is me, Constantine Alexander. Yeah, Andy, I, I'll bet that cabinet is huge. Like, I know. Like the hangar that holds the guppy jet. <laughs> if that made sense to anybody. You know that, that plane, the guppy that they did? It was like the... Uh, never mind. I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure Andy's got a big closet. He's got the right angle. Get down to the six, right between the first, the first and second. Yeah, right he there. just he hit it perfect. Voila. A little long, but that's all right. I mean, a little short, but that's okay. He's got the right angle. Probably gonna play simple, go right up the Yeah, table. center table maybe even. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. He has a good flow. He's he does. There's, there's a good Both rhythm. these players have good rhythm. No, I wasn't talking about the spruce goose. I was talking about if you know there's this cargo plane called the Guppy, and it's like at this huge like just look up the Guppy plane. The spruce goose is actually in a hangar, it's in a museum, I think, right now. Beautiful stroke. Yep. They're both playing great. They are. I don't know. I feel like it should be a combination of both, no? I don't know. I don't know what that means either. So Andy Hughes bring up Brian is the last chance we have for somebody to win the Mercer who's won the Mercer before for repeat champion. Just Brian has won this before. Nobody else wow. here has. Vilmos has won it three times. Yeah, but he's out. I mean, he's, yeah, he Andy's was talking out. about who's left in the tournament yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah, he was out yesterday. Wasn't he went two and out. Are you serious? Maybe I not two and out. No, he beat D'Souza, I think. So he, he okay. I think he lost, but his first, I think Vilmos' first match was against somebody really really good oh, I see. um like his caliber i mm. mean he's really really good who beat warren um oh doug whaley right doug whaley knocked warren yeah, yeah. kiamko out of the match but uh you said it was like six two or something like that i think it was six three wow Vilmos's first match, I remember, was a very oh, yeah. tough one. John, I agree. It was it was a great out. He played that. He had a really good pace. He hit the balls really nicely. Yeah, for sure. Beautiful run out. All right, Jeff is up to break. Race to two, guys. This is going to be a close match. Gosh, I don't know how many of these I've seen the entire tournament. Where's the cue ball going? Look at this. Oh. Wow. Look at the 3-9. Is it wired? I can't tell from here. Can we get a different angle? Oh, the the, the other one. That one. Oh, no. It's off. Okay. It, it looked wired from one direction. Okay. So it looks like the 3 goes in the pocket. Looks like the 8 clears the 9. So let me see. Bill first match was against Victor Kakuza. He lost 6 2, Victor mm. from Utah. And then I think he won. He beat Jimmy D'Souza. And then I think he um, lost to somebody else. But yeah, he was out and he won last year. Last year, I don't think Vilmos missed a single shot. <laughs> Different tournament last year. There was a lot of good players, obviously, but 
I think last year, Vilmos and Shane were kind of the class of the tournament. Ah. Uh. Well, you had Brian playing, and you had Max Eberle, who's right up there with those guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking here. The three to the four is going to be the key here. Other than that, everything else should be wide open. I mean, the three does go, right? I think it does. Into the corner? It does. So he's going to try to get on the three, and that's really just getting on the four could be the one. It's just that if he lands anywhere straight, then he has to do a little extra. Right. But um, let's see how he floats this here. He's going to go forward. So he's got a perfect got angle, angle to get on the four. Yep, yeah, he shot it good. He's shooting good. He's got a he good is, angle. He is, he is. Richard Glassrock. So are you from Virginia? Richard Glassrock is bringing up my old friend Jerry Pearson, who is uh, my one of my best friends growing up. You're from Virginia? Yeah, I grew up in Virginia. Oh, I didn't know that. I played that. at First Break Cafe in Sterling. Oh. And Fast Eddies and Champions. Hung I feel up. like every state has a Fast Eddie. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> the Fast Eddies in Virginia um, were great, great pool halls. I don't know if they're still there or not. I haven't been back to Virginia in a while, but... Um, just great pool halls. I think a fast that he's here, that type of pool hall would, would do really well. But yeah, Big Jerry, good friend of mine. Um, great guy. Big gambler, big pool player. In fact, Jerry Pearson was called out to do a match when him and Alex Paggy Lyon were designated breakers. It was Keith McCready <laughs> against someone else. Well, Jerry weighed like 350 pounds and was 6'9", and Alex is tiny, and they both had these monster breaks. So they were designated breakers um, for a, a big match. They had, like, had to travel. I think they traveled to like, California or something to do. It was wow. crazy, yeah. All right, so it looks like uh, Brian actually got the wrong angle on the six. It's not It's not that he can't recover, but now he's going to have to come around two, well, three rails, actually, to get behind that eight, which is what he's playing. And he played, look at that. Wow, Just great shot. Just to miss it. Pretty. That, that's a snap. So Richard Glasscock, I, back in Virginia, I went by the name Cody. That was my name, and I played out of first break. I can't imagine you being a Cody. Yeah, I know. Nobody can. <laughs> I'll draw. Nice shot Beautiful. by Brian. He's going to be Very up 5-4. Nice. Very nice. And uh, Didi, you're right. Um, you know, the thing with Vilmos is I feel like he's a bit of an, an enigma, too, because we never really see him play. And then he comes out to these right. events, and he just shoots like a monster. You know? And you're like, he missed one shot. We're like, he's, he's <laughs> off. Never picks up a stick, you yeah. know? It's crazy. Cody DeVito. I was called Cody, but it was spelled C-O-T-Y. So, yes, you are it a is Cody. a strange name. You can ask my Russian mother why she spelled it that way. Like the perfume company. <laughs> I had a lot of great memories playing pool in Virginia, but I that's I played in Virginia, and I would go up, and we would go up to Champions and Fast Teddies and all that stuff. Aww. And um, somewhere along that time, I had a couple of incidents which caused me to stop playing pool for 25 years. So it wasn't always fun. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Looks like they got a little dispute. We can go... So he broke first, 10, if he broke first. Oh, Jack's making a decision here. Oh, Jack's making a yeah. call here, which I don't think is the right call. Brian broke the first game, and I guess I guess it should be he, it Jeffrey's should be break. Jeffrey's break, but he it, did break that last game. But even if we get out of order, who broke that last game, Brian? Uh, no, Jeffrey. He scratched. He scratched, and he had... Right, but if you him. get out of order, you should revert back to the normal order, shouldn't you? Well, he's Jack is basing it off of who broke last. and so Right, Jeffrey but Brian last, won the flip. Yeah, I don't. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's the right call. Mm. No, I know that Jeffrey broke last, but I think if the order gets mixed up, shouldn't it go back to what the original break with the original orders? That's disputable. I don't know. 
and the reason it's why it's, call, it's only disputable we... really is because brian's on the hill too That's true another true, big one, true you know and brian really wants this break because he's on the hill but you know at one point one of them made a mistake and didn't realize right but my my know. look i'm not second guessing jack i'm just saying my understanding of the of the way it is is if the brakes get mixed up you go you revert to what the original order of the brakes was No, it can't be. We've been okay. watching the score. Kaylin's coming up next. Now right. they're questioning the score. Yeah, the scores are right for sure. I, I remember it's saying it's a race five to four. two. Yeah, definitely yeah. Definitely five yeah. four. Now he's looking at us. I'm not going to say anything unless Jack asks me, which he's not going to. So somewhere along the line, these guys Somebody mixed up, up the yeah. break. And so Jack has made the decision that will stand that because Jeffrey broke last time. So Jeffrey probably broke twice in a row. And didn't realize it. No. As long as they don't ask us to rewind anything, because I don't do that. <laughs> uh, but I, I, could, I can go on my phone real quick, but I, I don't think we're going to go that far. Yeah. Now Jeffrey's questioning the score, score which is yeah. definitely five four. Yeah, we've been we've been keeping an eye on that yeah. too. So, yeah. Jack is is not. He's looking at us like he wants some kind of a yeah. thing, but Jack is standing right. firm because Jack knows he's right. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Four four eight nine. I'll talk to Jack about that later, about why he made the decision that way, and it could be something that they've discussed here at Rum Runner and how they do things if things get messed up. But the score is definitely 5-4. The decision has been made because Jeffrey DeLuna broke last mm -hmm. that Brian Parks is breaking now. Brian Parks did win the break at some point in time. Right, but Brian said he wants to break now. No. So John Francois Chavanel, what's up, my French brother from another mother? Um, he said Jeffrey broke rack six uh, and seven. Okay. And honestly, that's on Brian. He should have said something to know that it wasn't his break, you know? Okay. I mean, it's a player. It's Brian's responsibility to not let Jeff break that rack seven because it's supposed to be his break. Uh, that's what happened. So Jeff broke the last two. And, and 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 Brian didn't realize that he had broken the last two. Okay. But wait a minute. If that was the case, then it would be very unfair to let him break again if he had broken the last two. You know what I mean? To let him so break again. So who breaks again, him if it gets the hill hill? I, I mean, I I honestly feel like I'm 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 leaning on the side of continue where, where, whatever rotation you like you're laying on now because we know for sure he broke the last one. Andy, if he did in fact break the last yeah. two. It wouldn't be fair to look right. back again. Right. Yeah. Andy Hughes, Big Jerry's name is Jerry Pearson, um, or was, unfortunately, passed away a couple of years ago. But he was one of my best friends growing up um, in Virginia, and he had a monster break. And he used to, exactly, he would be Keith McCready's designated breaker. And one time Keith McCready was playing, I forget who, and Alex Peggy Lyon was that person's designated breaker. So... Somebody mentioned Virginia and Big Jerry, and that's the Big Jerry we're referencing. He was a big person in the pool community in Virginia, big road player, um, big gambler. Yeah, no worries. I mean, you know, Jack made a decision, and honestly, yeah. now that we know that he broke the last two, I, I don't think I disagree with it at this point. Um, so, yeah, I, we're moving forward. I'm glad Jack made that decision because my decision would have been it's your responsibility yeah. as the player to know if it's your break or not, and I would have given the break to Jeffrey. Yeah, because that's the order that's. Right. But Jack's run but now a multitude more tournaments, and yeah. he, there might be special rules for Rum Runner because this might have come up before. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that we don't know here. They've been running this tournament for 40 years. I'm sure they have you know contingency hey. plans in place for everything. 
Hey Narnar, I'll, I I I think I would have Constantine be my designated breaker. <laughs> it wouldn't be a bad idea. You should have seen him breaking, playing that match against me. Good yeah. Lord Almighty! The break was working. My God, he almost split the balls open. It was crazy. He was breaking so good that day. Yeah, Mike Glouse. Um, you know, it's they fixed it. They're just gonna continue with the order, but. But yeah, I mean, now that we know that Jeff broke the last two, it definitely wouldn't be fair to let him break a third. So it is what it is. We're just moving forward. None of us caught it, really, until just now. <laughs> so we make mistakes. Jeffrey's thinking about this shot, sitting down. Brian's drinking his beer. Yeah, yeah, they, they got a little bit of fire in between them right now. And so well, now, I mean, yeah. whatever the case, I, 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 say what you want. Brian's responsibility as a player is to break when it's his break. If somebody gets up and goes to break, I mean, for crying out loud, Brian was the one racking, you know? He he should have been like, wait a second, it's my break. So I'm, I very much believe that there's, you know, two people at fault, and Brian yeah. is one of them for not realizing it was his break. Now, after it happened, Jack made a call. Again, there could have been a number of reasons for that call, but it is what it is. And Jeffrey would then started arguing about the score, and I was just like, what that, is that? That's another one. <laughs> right, yeah, what is that? Yeah. Now you think you're saying it's the wrong score. Yeah. He kept looking at us like we were going to say something. I'm yeah. like, I'm not saying anything unless the tournament director double checks with me. It's hard to um, argue score when there's a live stream. Right. You know? I mean, if, if it really came down to it, you could go to the YouTube uh, and you could click on it, and we could have looked back at it. Yeah, I you agree know. with you, Andy. Yeah, both were at fault for sure. But you know. I just don't have an instant replay feature on my streams on purpose. Not yet. No, I don't want one. <laughs> I don't want one. All right, looks like Jeffy made a good hit here. I see a one rail. Oh, I, ooh, barely a one railer. Two, the two is in the way. Um, wow, I think this is a jump stick kind of situation. I feel like. Because even if he comes this way, he's going to have to shorten it up quite a bit going around the two. Robbie, Sue and I's Fargos are very similar. I believe she's around a 578, 579, something like that. And I'm a 581, so we're very close. Mm -hmm. I was definitely pumped up to play her because <laughs> she also beat me the time before that that we played. <laughs> Just happened to get a couple of rolls. You got an awful roll on that eight ball. I know. That was like the worst I've seen That's in a okay. long time. It's bar Sorry box. to bring that up, but I was like, I thought you hit that good. Yeah, <laughs> and, I thought, I was, and position too. Yeah. The speed and everything landed right and it just rolled right into the side pocket. That was but, you a know, horrible one. It's bar box. All right, so Jeffrey DeLuna now has ball in hand on a rack that he really should run out. Is he going to get behind? No, he left himself kind of... No, I'm sorry. The four balls are really only a problem ball, but... And not even Not really even that much of a problem, yeah. right? Just get the right angle on the three and you're good. Even if you don't get the right angle on the three, you have multiple ways of using the rails to get up there, so I don't think it'll be a problem. So many different opinions in the chat, as expected, mm -hmm. about the break thing. I'll stand by my opinion, of course, um, but decision was made and it was, and that's fine. I think there's probably a precedent in the Rum Runner tournaments for that, but. So barring oh, some sort of challenge here, which I don't think will happen, we're probably looking at a Hill-Hill match, and then Jeffrey DeLuna will be breaking. Oh, oh, he caused a problem. Yeah, he did. He... Uh, he, I don't think he can cut that six. Yeah, I've played off the eight. I don't think. Yeah, he's he not can, happy. He can either play it off the eight or he can draw off the six into the eight and carry him, but then he's risking a scratch. Or if he wants to get really sneaky, I think I don't we think, all see that shot too. I don't think there's a safe behind the eight here. Oh, I think he's got to try to cut it in, oh, which is go. a really tough shot. It, it almost doesn't go. He could play it off the eight. Is he trying to play safe? He might. I'd play that safe behind the eight any day. No, no, no. He can't get the cue ball <laughs> behind the eight. There's not enough space. I don't think so. No, there is. There is. I don't think there is. I think he'd come off the six, and he would end up nudging the eight out, and Brian would have a shot on the six. But I think right, he's going to play the six behind the eight and send the cue ball up table. 
Look at yeah, that. He made it. Okay, he's got the tester now. This is the tester. It doesn't really mm -hmm. matter where the cue ball goes. I mean, it doesn't as long as it doesn't go in a pocket, but Ada's hanging in the corner. I mean, the this Luna's is a it. pro, and I would say he's a favorite to make just about any shot on the table when he doesn't have any obstructions, but this is not an easy shot. Let's see. Here we go. This is not a duck. This is make or break for the whole thing, and yeah. he did. Is he going to get behind the, the eight? Oh, goodness. What a horrible roll. Nope, no, nope, no. Nope. He's good. He's No, good. he's going to he jump it. He just cleared he's it. He's not good. He's got to jump it. No, uh, look. He's shooting All right, it. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Rush that shot. But obviously, he's not going to have any problem here. <laughs> Fargo's so low, it's a McDonald's meal number. <laughs> it's not that low anymore. All right. Yeah, he hit that seven ball good. He hit it with conviction too. He didn't roll. He he pushed that. Actually, if if because he pushed it firm, it was enough to push the nine ball out the way to get the shot on the eight as well too. So Jeffrey Deluna Hill Hill breaking. Winner of this goes on to play for third and fourth place against Edgy Geronimo. People still left in the tournament are Cena. I, I I gotta just write down phonetically how to pronounce his name. I'm not gonna Belize try. Belize Day. Belize Day. Yeah. Cena Belize Day and John Mora, who have yet to play the hot seat match, which I am guessing will be next. But they'll probably play the hot seat match on this table and the third, fourth place match on the other table at the same time. I know, right, Andy? I mean, you got the girl that can't really see, <laughs> but it's all right. I was able to see that one. My check is rooting for Jeff. Either player. They're both playing great. Man, I wish my Fargo was the same as my credit score. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. Yeah. I'd be, be in Joshua Filler in uh, Joshua Filler territory. <laughs> I'd be like like Shane territory, yeah. I was gonna say. <laughs> All right, Hill Hill match. Make oh, sure so right uh, Derek Lorcher just texted me, and he said he doesn't even know if he's ever met you, but he's really enjoyed listening to your commentary, especially Aww. yesterday. Derek's a great guy. Thank you, Derek. Derek, I told the story about the joke when you um, made about your the treadmill, which I think is like the best interaction <laughs> ever. No, I've really been enjoying this. I love talking shop. For those of you who personally know me, I love talking shop and... And uh, this is like the few opportunities I've been given to like do this. And so uh, hopefully I get to do more in the future. And we'll hill, hill. See. Yes. Here we go. So you've been great this entire tournament. Thank you. Uh, All right. Here we go. Let's see the break. He looks like he's winding up a little harder yeah, than normal. Yeah, he is. Oh, yeah. He's fired up. You're right. He's he's revving his engine. Oh, wee. That wouldn't have counted with this rules of this tournament. Is that a dry break or did he make something? He made something, but he doesn't have a shot on the one. Yeah. And not a whole lot of places to hide. Interesting. Paul Silva saying what everybody probably is thinking is it wouldn't be an issue if it was winter break. So I'm like, yeah, that is true. That is true. I think they would have avoided the winter breaks runouts, though, if they just changed. Because they were afraid of people running over the tournament. But if you change it to this break format, I think, you know, obviously if you're letting people like Shane Van Boning break one on the spot. Yeah. Get anywhere they're gonna, but I mean, nine on the spot from the boxes. That's a tough. That's the yeah. toughest way to break. I think so. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Cody. You're a natural, Cody. You're. I was hoping you'd be here. I love commentating with you. It's so fun. You're a nice. You're a good talker too. Cody's pretty good in the booth. I'm sure. Yeah. He's always welcome. It's a duck, Tupac. I agree. He's not All gonna right. get there. No, Ooh, he got there. Wow, good shot. The bump. That he is a great shot. Bump. Relatively simple kick, but he got the bump. These guys don't like, and you know, generally in lower Fargo events, all they're hoping to do is just make the hit, right? Right, make but the not hit again, not these levels. But in these events, they're thinking, don't leave them anything, even remotely close to a pocket. And uh, 
Yeah, if you can't re-safe, if you don't have a kick to play safe, then you're trying to make it. Here, unfortunately, there's not much to make. Yeah. I mean, he could try to hit it firm and maybe get that one ball all the way up. It's got a bigger pocket with the six, but... Um, the only benefit here, though, is the fact that the natural kick actually kicks towards where majority of the balls are. So even when they're being relatively open, there's still a chance he can get a hook here. It looks like he's looking at a two-rail kick, though, to come behind the one and maybe kick the one down to where the three is. That's yeah. kind of what I yeah, saw. Yeah, behind the... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. He's he is kicking. He is kicking. If it was me, I think I'd be hitting this firm, but he kicked. Oh, he hit that he good. Kicked. Is he gonna get behind the he six? Kicked. Whoa. Wow. Wow. <laughs> he was looking at it. He was looking at it like I can't believe I just scratched and it just held whoa. up in the pocket. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Ryan Woodell, if it's blurry on your end, it's your end, not whoa. ours. Everything's coming through fine here. Oh wow. My. Oh, my. I need a sip of my beer on that one. Good goodness gracious. Wow. Oh, jump stick is coming out, and Jeff jumps well. Yeah, he does. But actually, there's a line to even, because once he kicks it, it should go bottom, and he should have a if shot. If he makes it, he could get out, yeah. Some people may call that roll luck. I call it Brian Parks playing a master kick safe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a jelly roll. 60, I, I, Someone's I, saying there's a, I think it's a higher percentage. Oh, he makes higher, the, it's just one like. Higher. And he's, he, because he's in a pocket, he's got a lot of space too. Andy, we've she, been offered, Sue actually has a beer in her hand. I'm laying off the booze <laughs> because. I'm gonna trick. I'm gonna give this whole not being fat thing a try. Uh, all right, so Jeffrey Deluna here for a jump. I think he's a favorite to make this. Here we go. Now he could collide into that five if he's not careful, and the bad things could happen. But I think he's gonna draw it back, look which he this, has. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, look great this. shot. Yep, and this is what we were saying. He will have a shot on that too. It's it's a deep cut. It is a deep cut. Um, Andy, I got the beer because uh, everybody was telling me I needed to have at least one beer with Brian Parks, and that's the reason why I got my beer in my hand. <laughs> Wow. Oh, my goodness. This is a hell of a match. This is the shot. Back and forth, inside. I mean, I, I think... The side pockets. I mean, Deluna's an overwhelming favorite. To make the shot and get on this rack. There we go. Here we go. That's not where he wanted to be, That's but he'll not, be okay. Uh, he's got to work a little bit, but it, yeah. shouldn't, it shouldn't be too bad. Should not be too bad. The five's not exactly. I mean, he he got. He's got to get back for this five, but <laughs> he didn't want to be on a rail. But he's okay. That's what everybody was telling me, Andy. But it was my first time meeting him, so I wanted to have my first beer with him. Very nice guy. Oh. I don't think that's gonna be great. It'll be okay. No, he's though. all right. He got nah. the shot. Wow. He played it simple. He didn't try to bring it down. He right. Just I mean, took it from he knows there. he's still gonna make the yeah. shot, and he's a. He didn't try to get um, too crazy on it. Didn't have to get perfect. Ramil, that Tim White must be a hell of a guy. <laughs> it's not the same, though, because Tim White, that's just two syllables. Like, you need at least four in your name. You know what I mean? There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, consonants <laughs> going on, yeah. So it is highly unlikely that Jeffrey DeLuna will not get out here, in which case he will play. Ah, he does. Oh, you know what? Actually, I did know that. Edgy Geronimo. Next match here will be John Mora and Cena. So yeah. Brian Parks is going to end land in fifth and sixth. He's breaking. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well done. Well done. Congratulations, Brian Parks. Woo! Yeah. 
yeah if you guys are enjoying our commentary please be vocal about it as i said earlier i would love to do more of this uh i don't think constantine would be fighting me on this either too much to do what <laughs> commentary no, so please all. be vocal let others know and uh get our names out there and um yeah we're there that was a hell of a match All right, playing for the hot seat on table one, we have Tina Velazade and John Mora. Valiza Day. Quarterfinal match on table two. All right. Andy Geronimo and Jeffrey DeLuna. Hot seat match, guys. Here we go. Oh, I didn't. I wasn't part of the Calcutta. I didn't know. Yeah, I mean, I took half a trick. I bought trick and I took his half. But that's about it. Andy Hughes, seventh and eighth was, let me check, I believe it was Doug Whaley and someone else. Seventh and eighth, Andy, was Doug Whaley and Ian Costello. Cutting the mics for a second. We'll be back in a moment. John Mora versus Cena Velazade.
Three. Welcome back, everyone. Here we go. Oh, hot seat match, right? Hot seat match. Yes, 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 yes. This is going to be a hell of a match, guys. So, oh, I didn't tell you. Uh, so we got John Mora, who is Mr. Smooth. Yes, he right? is. Right? And then uh, I was talking to Mary Kaufman. Uh, and uh, she said that so uh, she said that she had been watching the the live stream commentary uh, that I when I was talking about uh, Cena, and so now his nickname is Simple Cena because he keeps oh, everything because simple, very simple. simple Cena. <laughs> and that came from me. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so we were commenting about Simple Cena, who uh, doesn't <laughs> overcomplicate anything. Yes. Yes. And how well he plays. And I'm really excited about this match. And I honestly, the, the way he's been playing this tournament, I think this match is anybody's. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then she added to that because during the commentary, I said he plays flawless. So they've been calling him flawlessly simple Cena. <laughs> Here we um, go. There's been a request for you to sing, Sue. Oh my gosh, Ramil! You... <laughs> if you're singing, I'm singing. What are we singing? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I guess we're gonna have to sing Barbie Girl. I'm a Barbie Girl. Because <laughs> that's, that's the only joy. <laughs> that's the only one with like the two people say. I don't know. We could sing Love Shack. Oh goodness. <laughs> All something, them. something as big as a whale, and that's about to set. All right, enough of that. So, nice break by Cena here. Ramil, uh, how about when we finish up this rack, I'll give you guys a little tune. Do you try to play offensively and make this two, or you try to hit the two and bring it back around where the six is and leave it behind the eight? I, I think he's going to play the save. Uh, so, f let me see here. What, he's pushing. He's going to push. He's pushing. Interesting. Yeah, I... I He's not overly aggressive. It's either there or it's not, and that's right. how he plays. So, shout out to Canada, John Mora, represent. I want to see what he plays here. I think he's going to draw off of it and keep the cue ball by the eight, send yep. the two ball the opposite direction. Somebody brought up about Moscone oh, being different if they allowed people from Canada, and boy, would it ever. That would allow John Mora and Alex Paggy Lyon to play for the U.S. if they so choose. I don't think Alex <laughs> Burnus is know. behind Is Alex Burnus behind him? Oh, okay. There you <laughs> I'll go. let him know, too. <laughs> your voice on the mic <laughs> it's okay they just can hear you chattering so john's gonna go for a mass a safe here i gotta practice mass saying with um with the carbon fiber um i just it's not the same for me and uh it's on my list of things to do if anybody cares about my practice schedule anyway nice shot Tina's got to jump here if he wants Mass it, but it's with saying a, with a when I switch from fiber. maple to carbon fiber, it's oh. so much different, and I can't masse with carbon fiber. That's an interesting thing. Moscone should be North America. Interesting. I don't know. So, what do you think here? You think a jump uh, kick, or um, is he gonna masse? Like, there's I don't like the masse. There's no natural kick here. That's the scary part. There's I, no natural kick here. No, I mean, there's just a jump, yeah, short rail kick. Um, there is a shortened up kick that's very low percentage. He could just um, do a one kick, kick to the second rail. He's looking at a jump kick. I mean, you could one rail kick at the two. I think he's looking at a jump kick off the short rail. Man, that's a small window. That is a small window. Here we go. Not so simple, Cena. <laughs> Is he going to get away with it? Oh, Is that going to nestle up? He's leaving him a pocket. No, he's not going to get away with it. Tough, tough position to be in for him. Yeah. He played a good shot, though. Right. Uh, John Moore played a very good uh, speed control shot there, really executed well. 
and got rewarded. Oh, a little short. Tough position for Cena to be in. Short. I think he hit that just about as good. Obviously, if the ball had went in, it would have been better, but he hit it good. Uh, so yeah. on our third and fourth place match, it's Edgy Geronimo playing Jeffrey DeLuna. Mm -hmm. uh, Edgy is up one game, and this game, it appears as if John will get out here unless something catastrophic happens. Oh, it looks like I mistook the eight for the four. We did that a few times today. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle Triple R, I do use a Sean, yes. That is my cue of choice. But I recently switched back to a carbon fiber Q-Tech Synergy shaft, and it's helped my shot making tremendously, but there's a few things I can't do with it, and one of them is messing. See, that's where we're different. I don't change equipment, ever. I ever. try not to. Unless it gets worn out. <laughs> I try not to, but... I just remembered back that I played my best pool with carbon fiber, like, and I switched to, honestly switched away with it, from it for a dumb reason. I played so bad at the Sam Lynch style, I tried to blame a piece of equipment rather than, you know, me. <laughs> and so, like, you know, what's on my wish list for pool is a uh, keel wood shaft. That's what I want. Yeah, you know, Chad Nelson shoots with the keel wood, and he's, I mean, they, they hit great, and they're great shafts, but. Because they feel a little more natural. I just like the feel of the uh, wood shaft versus carbon fiber. Yeah, just me personal too. preference. Me too. You know? And there's certain things I can't do. I almost, I almost switched to a maple shaft on one of my shots. That I mean, it, the shot could have gone better, but who knows? Could have gone worse. Yeah. But, but it's all preference. I try not to, uh, to change around too much, though. I feel like the last change I made is going to be the last change for a while. All right, John Moore is up 1-0. He ran out that rack beautifully. Yeah, um, Snooker, the, the Sean Cues are known for having high deflection, so with a maple shaft, they become, become pretty difficult, but they just feel so they just feel so great. They hit so perfectly, but, but yes, they are known for deflection in the way they build their cues, so no doubt. Ooh. Jeff made a Oh, we're getting trolled. Jump. Turn the volume down. The turn gets a load better. <laughs> Yes, true thought. You can turn the volume down. I need a cue that shoots straight. All of us do, Narnar. -nar. I definitely need one. All right, John up to break. I love when people try to troll me in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any trolls. Everybody was so That's because nice. you're a much better commentator <laughs> than I am. <laughs> All right, I, nice I like break here. Made three on the breaks. Yeah, one didn't one lay up nicely, but let's see. He's got options. Yeah, I just feel like for the last, well, now today's the third day, but for the last three days, it's just been like me just chatting with you guys and talking shop. It's been fun. I'm going to miss it. <laughs> All right, what do we play here? Safe. I think the safe is the way to play it. He's um, I don't there's no real cross corner bank that's proper. He's gonna graze the one and try to come behind this nine probably and leave yep. the one maybe around we'll behind ride the six. Under the side pocket. Well he's hitting it a little thick actually. Let's see. He might be trying to leave it behind the three. Yeah, he went yeah. past the side pocket. He went longer. He got a good nudge from the three. Yeah. Good shot. Good control. I like the way he he's I, I I like the way he hits the ball like super steady, Mr. Smooth. Now Chad Nelson has jumped on to to troll me some more. Speak of the devil, and you will find him. <laughs> I wish we had some. <laughs> Oh, Chad, Chad. Chad Nelson, Jeff Gray, and I actually have a chat, and the name of the chat is called The Second Place Crew. <laughs> <laughs> and this was before last weekend. <laughs> Chad, I want to shoot with your keel wood shaft if I ever run into you. I've been wanting one, so I'd love to see how it feels. So what do you do here? Cena has not had an offensive-minded shot. He's just kicked so far, I think. And he's got a, there's not a great kick. He's going to have to do a one-rail kick, or is he? I see a two-railer. No, okay, yeah. <laughs> But that's not what he's aiming for, though. Let me. Oh yeah, he's aiming. That's what he's aiming for. Trying to send the one ball that way towards the other side of the table. Let's see how he hits this ball. See, two rail. Boom. Uh, I mean, he hit it nice yeah. and full, but again, just he didn't the quite get the rail. Yeah. yeah. I know. I need to get a, a thirty-inch shaft, and I need to know who's a reputable person to buy one from because uh, I think most people have a wait list for them. 
Thank you, Chad. That'd be awesome. Chad, if you let Sue just touch your cue, you'll probably play better with it. <laughs> we got business as usual here. No problems. Um, really, only thing is he just needs to lay up on this four nicely. Considering the angle, he may even take it down to the bottom corner pocket. So I don't know if he's going to try to squeeze it behind the four. He might. Let's he see. might. Yeah. yeah, he might. Because he plays that good. But, yep, that's what I thought. He's going to send it Tim Cole, a little short. Tim Cole, that should make me feel better, but it doesn't. All right, so John Mora here shooting on the four and a high favor, high probability he's going to get out here and get up to a 2 nothing lead against Cena, who really hasn't had an offensive opportunity. Yeah, he just he kicked hasn't. out a couple balls. Look how pretty he hit that. Did you see that? That ball just floated across the table. Yeah. Come on. That's why he's Mr. Smooth. Come on. Nothing like getting trolled by my own friends in the chat. <laughs> Good nice. shot. Good stroke. As expected. John's got that same kind of stroke as like as Fedora when he just follows through and commits to every shot. Yeah. You know, he's just nice and smooth. The the way that his cue ball reacts with the object ball, there's no um bump. It's almost just a transfer of energy from one to right. the other. It just flows right through it. It's like they're on a string, you know? Very beautiful. Very beautiful to watch. All right, John Moore is oh, up 2-0. Jack is letting Cena know he's not allowed to wear headphones. Oh, yeah, that's a rule. That is a rule. Yeah, that's a rule. A uh, quick update on the other table, Jeff DeLuna versus Edgy. It looks like the score is 1-1, one, one, so it's a race to five on that table. I understand the headphone rule. I've always thought if the opponent doesn't care, then nobody should care. Yeah. But I don't think John said anything to him. John doesn't care. He's just focused on himself. Yeah. But Jack let him know there's no headphones, and that is a rule in most tournaments. That you, you know, uh, Mike. I heard. Um, I've heard some differing opinions on this. I've talked to a few cue makers, and I've always consistently been told that a three eighths ten joint is better than a radial. Am I? Am I? Not reading that correctly? Um, are you talking about the radial joint? Yeah, comment? I think he's talking about the joints. Yeah, yeah the radial pin. I, I'm, I'm not honestly. I'm, I can't speak intelligently on the, on that. I don't know how the cue differentiates with what kind of pin it has. Yeah. But I have heard people say that they like radial joints better. Yeah. I'm just not good enough to notice the difference. Yeah, uh, cue makers have co uh, have told me that if you look at any high end cue, um, generally most high end cues are made with three eighths ten joints because they're the best one. But that's what I've been told. All right, let me see what's going on here. So he's got a shot on the two. Okay, so he's got to move a little bit actually on this. Um, he's gonna have to go two rails. A little zigzag is what I see here. Zigzag um, to get on the three in the bottom left corner pocket. Yeah. Problem is though, there's another problem there. If he doesn't land on it correctly, he can overrun it and not have the shot to that corner pocket. Right, and then he's also got to figure out what to do with the five. Yeah. This is first offensive opportunity in this yeah. whole match. So. Let's see how he hits this. It's touchy. He's got to go right underneath that side pocket. Boom. Wow. See, and I, I had a feeling he was going to overhit it, but it's all right. He can see the ball. wonder if he was trying to... I think uh, he hit it harder than he wanted to. I th yeah, but he might have been trying to come... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard, Snooker. Um, that's actually that's what I've heard also. Um, I shoot with a Bill Webb cue, and I have a three eighths ten joint. And um, there's definitely a difference from my past cues that I've had other joints. I have noticed. A Look difference. at that shot. Thirty. What a great shot that was. Flawlessly simple. <laughs> a lot of factors in that shot, but it was a great yeah, shot. Yeah, he executed well. And that's what he's been doing, honestly. Right. Um, no wiggle. There's not a lot of wiggle in his game. It's just it's there or it's not. So John looking at a one rail kick from the top head top rail. Putting English on it from only a an inch off the rail. Not easy. Preference is to hit it and leave it behind the five nine, yep. I'm guessing, is probably what he's that's going the shot. for. That ooh. No? He's a little little full. Or not full, less full is what he did, and that's why it came off. 
I think right. he hit it fuller than he wanted to, yeah. Um, let's see here. All right, so again, Tester. So, you know, Cena did the shot on one of the matches I was commentating, and I'm looking at the balls, and they were tied up. I didn't see where they would go. And then he ended up creeping up into the shape and just made it into the side pocket. I didn't even realize the ball had a pocket until he shot right. at it. And so I remember now, that shot. Yeah, it was weird. I mean, Very that's why these guys see things that we just don't see, you know? And it's just like, like oh, what's he going to do? And they're like, oh, well, he's just going to make yeah, it. Just, because Yeah, my mind just, yeah. it did. What is he going to do here? What's he going to do here? Ah. He's going to try to get behind, I think, come around. He, he might try to shoot this with right English and come behind the five. I see. You think he's going to go two, around the three, six? Four. I see a four railer to get behind the five. I don't know if he has enough angle or, or too much angle, With maybe. With enough drive, he can do it. Oh, he hit that kind of soft. What is yeah, this guy made of? Not, no, that's, that's not, not, the not what line. he was trying to do, yeah. No. Mm -mm. He needed to really drill that ball if he had any chance of getting around the six. He didn't drill it. It's just a bunch of people rambling about what kind of, what kind of joints <laughs> in their cues. Nothing interesting in the chat right now. <laughs> You think you try to play safe behind the eight, maybe? Can I get the other angle? You're going to try to make the five? No, I hope well, maybe. I mean, if it goes, he's a very strong ball maker. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. Oh, he my almost gosh. Made it. That was a tough shot. Yeah. This is exactly what he did the last one. It didn't seem like there was a pocket. And then he, he found the pocket. It was definitely a missable shot. He took a risk. He knew, he knew the risk he was taking. Yeah, do or die shot. Yeah. You know? But he is also that good that uh, his percentage of making that ball is quite high. Um, and he just barely missed it. But, uh, As it I stands, he's given a rack to Mr. Smooth. Who will now be up 3 nothing. Yeah. He's having a hard time with momentum. He's not finding his momentum. It's yet. just been a it's been a weird, you know, set for him so far. And yeah. you know, he's that was a tough a tough path to get yeah. to that three and you know, he almost made it on a great shot, yeah. but but he didn't. But he also didn't land on it the way he wanted right. either. So that kind of that just reminds me of um, we were talking about it earlier, the match between Danny Olson and Jeremy Long. When he was running out the eight ball was there. Yes, the pocket was tight, but the shot was available. The only problem was he ran overran the ball about a good eight inches. And if he hadn't, I think he would have made that ball. Right. Yeah. Quick update on the other table. Jeff DeLuna versus Edgy, and Jeff is up one game. So it scores 2-1 over there. This guy, Kyle Triple R, claims he's 16, but I don't believe that for a hot second. <laughs> he's just too hardened and coarse in his words to be 16. All right. All right. Mr. Smooth is up to break. That's never going to leave me. Look what you did to me. I'm not even going to call him John anymore. I'm just going to well, call him Smooth. Well, that's not my nickname. I mean, I've heard him called that by other people, you know. I think he might have given it. Oh, look at this. This is rough. No real problem balls. Five goes no. by the seven with no problem. It's wide open. Wide open. Uh, four to the five. A little moving from the four to the five to the six, but really not bad at all. Other than that, business as usual. Are we not serious commentators? Who cares? If somebody trolls me on my own thing, I just tell them <laughs> to shut up and turn it off. <laughs> I'm doing a free stream uh, here. <laughs> not only that, I think we're pretty knowledgeable. So yeah, I mean. we're not here for in-depth analysis. <laughs> so Romy Buenaventura, 
don't care. I didn't get trolled the whole two days. I, people <laughs> troll me all the time. I don't care. Huh? It's free. Turn off the sound. Oh, that is so funny, Constantine. <laughs> yeah, we haven't had any complaints, so. Ah, well. I get complaints all the time. You know what I do? <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> not, not caring a bit. So, it's a fantastic day here at the Rum Runner. <laughs> yeah. So, here's the here's what we were talking about. The four to the five to the six. So. Yeah, the four. But, I mean, he's got to, he's going to get on this, I think, pretty easily. But the four to the five might be a little harder. Oh, he underhit it a little bit. Um, All right, he's got options. He's got any angle, just yeah. get up to the center of the table, up for the five. Key thing is make sure he'll have a much easier time if he gets to the right side of that five, and that's where he's aiming for. There you go. He even played the extra rail to yeah, make sure that it went that shot. direction. Yeah, pretty. Pretty, pretty. What is that an emoji of? Nice shot. I like what Tim Cole said there. And this this was the this was the shot that we talked about the four yeah, to exactly. the five to the six. Yeah. Just a touch. Draw. It's gonna just bring it up. There you go. Very nice. But see the people who, who complain that there's not like pro commentators or thing like this are the ones who won't pay for it or yeah. won't donate or won't do anything. That's why I'm just like, whatever, man. We're doing this for free. I bought, I bought all this equipment. It's all right. Just watch. Watch and be happy. <laughs> yeah. Mute and watch if you don't want to hear it. <laughs> right. This. If I tried to charge $4.99, people would balk at it. All right. 4 nothing, John Mora. Thank you, Snooker. We're having fun here. Actually, it's it's really nice to have a partner. I've been by, I was by myself the last couple of days, and um, just having a partner to kind of banter with. Going, I mean, besides the trolling, I guess Constantine being all the trolling is normal for me. Trolling is normal for me. <laughs> but other I get than trolled that, a lot. Hey, it's fine. Partners in crime. I can work with that. It's almost like it's expected at this point. Whenever I do a stream. Yeah, Tim Cole, that's a good point. I mean, it's not also that they know more than us, but like I mentioned earlier, there's 20 different ways to one result. So we usually name off what's visible in front of us, but, you know, we can't read minds, and so sometimes they'll do something different. But more or less, I feel like we've been able to uh, we've been able to kind of break down most of the shots pretty well. So, Except for our lack of pro-personalism. All right, I'm just I'm muting I'm muting that one. <laughs> nice, you hit that pretty. Now what's gonna happen here? Oh, unfortunate. It's not that unfortunate. I think he can cut this into the side pretty easily. He's just gonna have to worry about. Um... No, we're looking at the three ball. Oh yeah. Uh. Okay, a couple problems. So I think naturally there's there's a couple things. You can mass say into it, but you, you do run the risk of hitting it too good and end up going in the pocket. Um, you can do a one rail kick. There is a one rail kick here. Um, and then, of course, a jump. But let me see. Can he see it? Is there a window? Looks like he's got a window, yeah. He's aiming at a window. Look at nice. that. He found the window. Sometimes you just need that one shot to get going. Oh, got the nice little bump, too. Yeah, see he's that? good on the four. But problem is the five. The eight's in the way. He should be able to push through this and avoid running into that eight, but it could become a problem. So this is usually what happens when you get a moron like Romy try to troll a couple of amateur commentators that do it three times a year. <laughs> People uh -huh. usually are like, what are you doing, dude? It's, it's a free stream. 
So Cena has gotten a little out of line here. What would you do here, Sue? Do you think you'd play safe? Oh, or? no. No, no. Uh, Got to try to chop see, it in. Let me see how deep that is. No, it's very makeable. Actually, the line's actually there. He's going to come right between the first and... Oh, he hit that firm. Wow. He hit that a lot firmer He's gonna than I expected. He's going to get rewarded, too. No. Oh, no, no, I was looking at the seven. No, yeah, he's not. No, no, no. The six ball. I'm surprised he hit that as firm as he did. I thought he was going to float it around two corners. Oh, man. And the more balls you take away from the table. Do you play safe? Do you nudge? Do you clip the left side of the six and play safe behind the seven here? You know what I think? Uh, you tried to play You know more? what I would do is actually graze the right side the of right it side and bring the... it two rails and bring the cue ball down towards yeah. the eight ball and hoping that the six ball lies by the seven, if not right behind it. Or maybe um, maybe past the nine. Yeah, let's see what he plays here. I think that's what he's aiming for. Tim Cole, I did ask Jimmy if he wanted to commentate. He declined, so I'm happy to have Sue here. He hit that softer than I expected. Oh, it leaked out. It leaked out. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. And he left him the line for the seven as well, too. Anybody who's getting blurry on their side is, is something on your side. I'm looking at it. Um through on the YouTube channel and everything looks fine. So just maybe check your, your bandwidth and maybe do a refresh on your channel and you should be fine. Cena's definitely having trouble with momentum. Um, this is actually the first match I've seen him actually struggling with momentum. Um, any other time he had an open rack, even if even a difficult one, he's actually shot himself out of a few difficult racks. It's just it's been hard for him to get a groove, and yeah. you've got an opponent who's going to basically run out every single time. Every you know, time. if John ends up winning this match, which is not a given at this point, um, Cena will go down and get knocked into the um, second and third place match. Thank you, Dirty. And uh, it's going to uh, you know he can come back, but this match is not a lot's gone his way. He started off kicking a lot of balls. I appreciate your comment, Dirty Hippo, and thank you for tuning in. It's been fun. I'm kind of sad that it's going to be over after today, but. So over on the other table, Jeffrey DeLuna is up 4-1 on Edgy Geronimo. Oh, wow. He took off quick there because it was just like 2-1 earlier. So the winner of this match obviously goes to the hot seat. The loser will play the winner of Jeffrey DeLuna and Edgy Geronimo, which at this point it's 4-1 Jeffrey. John Mora breaking Hill nothing. I like how he broke that. Really clean. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and... nice pace and great shot on the one. Right. Also a good angle to get on the two. He's got to punch it a little bit, but nothing too difficult. This might be the toughest shot of the of the yeah, rack for him. Um, it's just getting me, on this two because he's got to come around. He's a little straight on the one. Yeah, I see him punching over. Um, I don't see him going No. Around. Uh, Let's see here. Let me see. Two, two, the three. Four... Four to the six can be also a little bit of a tester, depending on the angle that he gets. Um, but other than that, yeah, this is this is it right here. And and the problem is the shot to the one is relatively straight. I feel like oh, that's what I'm saying. He doesn't have enough angle to punch it over. I pull think pull it back. He looks like he's hitting it with some significant draw. <laughs> Kyle R R R. Yes, I have. Um, I am actually a. There you go. Look at that wow, draw. Wow, that's a pro level Beautiful shot. Obviously, draw. he's gonna get behind oh, the nine though. No, oh, unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. Kyle R R R. I actually play three cushion as well, and uh, it's my favorite place to go. Um, it's at Greenland, and I know most of the guys that play there and the guy that works there, and uh, it's definitely elevated my game since I played started playing three cushion.
on the bottom left side of your screen, you'll see a donations link. We are doing this stream for free. Any donations that we receive, I will split between Sue and the tournament directors. And, and thank you. Uh, earlier, uh, Constantine mentioned that a few of you guys already donated, and I just want to say thank you so much for that. We really appreciate it. Yeah, Tim Cole, Sue's got a mean kick game. <laughs> I love to kick. I actually hate jumping. I'll yes. avoid it. <laughs> Speaking of jumping, this is a interesting shot here. There's enough angle that he could jump it off the table. I mean, we saw him make a really great jump shot in another match. Obviously, he's adept. Interesting note, John shoots right-handed on power shots, so jump and kick. He's got a four, I think he's got a four-piece jump cue because he just took it down on another notch. <laughs> fancy. These guys with their fancy equipment. Let's see how he hits this ball. He hit it a little shy. He's Why giving. He must have grazed the nine. Oh, okay. He must have because he gave ball in hand. All right. Cena has an opportunity here. Actually, I think this is his first open opportunity. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And the way he plays, he should be out here. He just needs I mean, to it's get important for him to get on the board, time. obviously. Yeah, for sure. It's not unheard of to come back from a deficit like this. It's only a five-game race. Of course, it's tough against someone like John Mora, but it's not going to give up, that's for sure. Brent Babcock, I must say I don't disagree with you, but unfortunately it just seems like that's the way the game is going. Uh, the jump cues, it looks like they're here and they're going to be here to stay. But I do agree with you. I enjoy kicking quite a bit. I think kicking takes true skill um, and knowledge as well, too. Yeah. Okay, Cena's getting some shots in. He's getting comfortable. You can see it in his body language. Yeah. So Cena Velazade will be on the board for the first time. Velazade. Velazade. <laughs> Velazade. Kyle Triple R, Good Times Billiards is over 21 because there is a gaming bar inside. That is the answer to your question. Same reason Rum Runner is over 21 only. And there are laws about these things. There we go. He is on the board, ladies and gentlemen. Score is 5-1. Yeah, Tim, I'm a, I am mean, I jump when I have to, but I'm never happy about it. Like, I don't, I'm not eager to pull out a jump cue. <laughs> I actually just recently begrudgingly bought one uh, from Josh, and he, he he added some complimentary jumping lessons with it. Josh is a heck of a jumper. <laughs> I know, and I am not. And uh, but he showed I you his Propel. One, uh, the, I think it's a Propel. Yeah. Yeah, because I think he, he switched to an Air Rush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which are they're both both great jump cues. I just liked it. It was really light, and I, I it worked fine. You know, I don't see myself whipping it out anytime soon too much. But you know, it's there when I need it. So. So Kyle Triple R Griff's is actually licensed, and I know this for an odd reason. It's licensed as a a different. It's a parlor license, a but it's like a it? it's like an entertainment restaurant complex. Okay. So that's why they allow people under twenty one. Whereas Rum Runner and Good Times are licensed as gaming bars that have pool halls. Licensing in Vegas is funny like that. Tough break here for Cena. Yeah, just when he thought he was just gaining a little bit of momentum. And too far on the table to jump. Can you jump this? I mean, lefty. Um, No, no. Although we did see DeLuna pull up um, a bridge and make a jump shot in a previous match. Yeah, Didi, uh, I, and I have to say I do appreciate the non-smoking. I quit smoking many years ago, and uh, I noticed more since I've quit smoking that it's be, it 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 uh I can't seem to ignore it as much as I used to when I was smoking. So again, I will say that Rum Runner does a great job with the smoke eaters. It's not a densely smoked environment here. Is that what that is? The smoke. Eaters? Yeah, they have they have ample smoke eaters here. Ah, oh, interesting. Okay, I didn't know that was a thing. And they work well. He's pushing. 
All right, so Cena electing to go with a push shot. He I would wants have to, to kick think. Safe. Yeah, I would have to think that the Luna's going to take this on. Cena wants it back to do a kick save. And you know, John. He does. Gave, he can clip the side of it. John gave back that one shot as well, too. Yeah. So let's see what he does here. Wow. Nice shot. So Deluna gave that back. Cena makes a perfect mass A shot. And the here six we are. To the eight needs to be worked out as well, too. Oh, that we don't know. I just know that they closed. I don't know all the no, details. No, they did sell all their tables. They sold all their tables. Yeah, I was. So. I just heard that they closed. Oh, he hit. He was, he was playing safe there. Okay. He was definitely playing safe there. He probably didn't know if he could hold the cue ball to get shape on it, but he was definitely playing safe. Jeff from Tennessee. Gino is the owner of the bar, and he's an amazing person. He's done a lot for the game of pool. He's been the champion of these tournaments and just a great guy. So, okay, I was going to say, so this kick is touchy, but it's there. He needs to barely miss that five. And he should make it, actually. Yeah, he did. There you go. Is the he going to get caught there. up behind the seven is the only question? He's yeah, not. Wow, it's about as good as you can hit that. Well, I'm sorry, the four balls there. That guy saying, um, I don't know how to commentate. It's right. I can't even see the balls on the table. Yeah. <laughs> It's tough when you're looking at the computer the screen because the colors, yeah. But I'll try to keep it on the actual yeah. table. Jump key's got to... Well, okay, so here's the problem. The shot is straight. It's relatively straight. Uh, there might be a little wiggle room here. So if he jumps this, he may be able to come across. He doesn't have his jump cue out yet. I think he might be trying yeah. to think about kicking at this. Yep, jump cue out. Here we go. Uh, we, we talked Unfortunate about that bounce there, yeah. yeah. So Jeff from Tennessee, this tournament is well known in Vegas as one of the better tournaments of the year, and it's just a great environment. Gino runs a great professional tournament. It just has a really good vibe and a feel to it. There's a big crowd of people watching. And uh, yeah. it's it's paired along with a, a B level tournament called the Dock Hill. It's always the same two weekends. And the women's event. And then there's the Western women's event, yeah, which got moved this year to afterwards. And uh, it's just a great environment. People having a good time, and obviously yeah. there's some really good players uh, here. So I definitely recommend making the trip to be part of this tournament. Yeah, it's and just... everybody waits every year for these events to come around, yep. and they're yeah. eager to play. And we run qualifiers for it every year. It's on the cal. It's on the calendar for yeah. a lot of people. So Cena with a really good opportunity here. And next thing you know, 5-1 could turn to 5-2. Things could change, and it's definitely not out of this match yet. Just got to make sure the thread needle for this six, he's good. Those are the five people who played in the first one and this one. Oh. Very cool. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. Dave Dottillo just stopped by and gave Sue some sort of note. Yes. Okay. So he actually gave me a list of players that actually played in the first ever Andy Mercer. Oh, wow. And that played uh, in the one today or in the one this weekend. So the names are Joe Canella, who's a Vegas staple. Right? Yes. Everybody knows Joe. Uh, Bobby Butler, Tom DiLorenzo, Walter Glass, and Dave Dottillo. Awesome. Dave Dottillo got third last year at Ooh. the tender age of 79 years old. Ooh. That's awesome. Oh, that, thank you, Dave. That's awesome. So Cena making a charge here. Yeah. Nice and smooth. I missed what he did with the six ball. What's so he mean? actually got behind. He, he played it behind the nine to shoot the six in the side. Where this I, is what I'm saying. Yeah. He finds those gaps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and actually, uh, uh, Jeff, I'm... I, uh, considering nothing else happens, but uh, I'm actually planning on playing in this next year. Uh, after commentating in it, I gotta say I've been kind of itching to play, and uh, 
you know, and, and especially I, I like participating in events like this. I love competing against men. It really tests, you know, my, my brain and my abilities. And so we'll see what happens. Do you know what tournament was? They, they bumped the Western women's for a reason. I don't, I don't remember what it was, but do you know what the tournament was? That was a conflict tournament. Could it be the East West? No, no, not. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Could not tell you. Yeah, sorry, Mark. I'm not sure. I I, I do know that uh, it started happening last year and then into this year, but we there's been a lot of conflicts with like tournaments, and so people are having to choose one or the other, which is fine. I mean, you know, sometimes you can't accommodate everybody, and there's only 52 weeks out of the year, so. All right, what's the score here? The problem is there's only certain dates that are open at certain pool halls and stuff, so sometimes you yeah. have no choice but to schedule a conflict. Yep. So I, what, I'd what I would love to see is tournament directors just say, okay, well, if I have to schedule a tournament on this day, let me schedule something that's not an identical event. You know, like if yeah, there's a, if there's a 480 yeah. and under going on, then schedule like a higher level tournament and vice yeah. versa. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, John up to break. Kind of a soft break for yeah. John, and I don't think he made, no, he made one. Can you see the one? He can see the one. You can see the one. He made one on the break. Yeah, and you know his last break, he did the same thing as well, yeah, he too. Eased he took up a on little it. bit off, but he's been able to see the one. Um, and so, let me look here. One, two, three. Tim Cole, I don't know if Phil Tatum played in the Andy Mercer. He did play in the dock, but let me check for you. Bill Tatum did not play in the Mercer this year, Tim Cole. So that's the eighth ball up there, not the four. Okay, there's the four. So, so Rebecca Hendricks chimed in. Southwest Challenge for APA, and there was also an Arizona or California tournament, so that's why they moved uh, it. Okay, thank you, Rebecca. Well, are you over 580, Jeff? <laughs> that's probably why. Well, he, he doesn't live here. He's Jeff from oh, Tennessee. Oh, oh, oh. No, our, our out-of-state people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can't play to. in the dock. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 you have yeah, to be right. a local league player yeah. who or plays qualified. in a league. You, I think even if you win a qualifier, you have to live in Vegas. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's a Vegas-only tournament. Ah, Katie, Katie Moses chimed in. Jan Kane and Mary Keniston. Out of those three, the the name that sticks out to me the most is Mary Keniston. Um, I I never got to meet any of them, unfortunately. Looks like this match might be over. Yeah, if, there's no problems on this rack that I can see. May, I mean, the hardest is probably the five to the six, but that's not that hard. Mm -mm. It's manageable. Also, it helps that the seven is kind of in the center of the table. So he didn't seem like he was happy with where he got on that, but I don't see any issues. Uh, by the way, Jeffrey Deluna did win his match against Edgy Geronimo, six-one. So Jeffrey Deluna will play the loser of this match. Look at look how nicely he controlled that stroke. Did you see that? It just danced off that ball that's why they call him mr, mr. smooth, smooth. <laughs> he can do this couple ways one rail two rail i think he's going to keep it simple yeah one rail look at that purdy straight in All right, so um, Cena needs to regroup after this and take a break, and he's going to be playing edgy. John will take a break. Yeah, relax I don't know, a little Tim. Bit. I'll find out for you. Uh, I've never met Phil. Yeah, Phil played in the dock last week, so he's feeling oh, fine. Okay. But okay. Beautiful speed. Look at this. Cena conceding the shot. There you go. John Mora wins. Cena Veliz Vel Veliza Day. Veliza Day. Veliza Day <laughs> will be back to play Edgy Geronimo in the second and third place match. Going to oh, cut the mics. Before you turn off the mic, one thing I did want to mention is Cena is actually the one that put. Uh, oh, he's playing Edgy. 
or who yes. is he playing? Okay. I was going to say Jeff, but never mind. Deluna? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he no, he's Jeff. playing Deluna. Yeah, he play, he put Jeff, uh, Jeff on the B side. Well, so they're playing again. Yeah, Deluna won. So yeah, yeah, he came back around. So this is going to be an interesting match. Awesome. We'll be back yeah. in a few moments.
Everybody, welcome back. Players lagged for Blake. Jeffrey DeLuna won. Thank you for joining us here at the 32nd Annual Andy Mercer Memorial Classic here at Rum Runner in Las Vegas. A refresher on the rules for this tournament as far as break goes for anybody who might have just joined. They're breaking Accurac 9 on the spot from the box. Opponent racks. Deluna looking over the rack. Even though it's an Accurac, their inconsistencies can present themselves. So all the players are looking quite intensely over the rack. He's been doing a cut break from the right side mostly. Made a couple of nine balls. <clears throat> nine ball does not count in the bottom two pockets. So if that had gone in, it would not have counted. Luna makes ball. He's got, I don't believe he's got a shot on the one. It looks like he might be massing around it. This is the break shot, so DeLuna can elect to push here if he wants to, which I know he's looking at. He's lining up for a, perhaps a masse. He's thinking hard about what to do here. He hasn't broken out the jump cue yet. He saw how he's playing cue. He's looking at Masse. He's thinking about how to play it. I think he was trying to think about making the one, uh, making the three ball, the combo. I'm not sure. I think pushing into a better kick might be a good shot here, but it's tough against a player like Cena who can kick like a champion. Yeah, he's pushing into a better kick, I think. Although I'm not quite sure how that made his life better. So now Cena's looking at the same shot about Mass saying it. Inter interesting choice here. Cena electing to give it back to DeLuna, who I'm sure had a plan for this. He's got his jump cue now. Deluna has shown quite a lot of proficiency in his career in jumping and then has shown quite a few times today he's made some really clutch jump shots. Oh, wow. Well done. That's what he was lining up the whole time.
Smooth sailing for here from here for Jeffrey DeLuna. Interestingly, Cena did knock DeLuna into the one loss bracket, so this is a rematch from earlier on in the tournament. Yeah, Tim, I realized that afterwards he was pushing into a better position for a jump, and Cena gave it back to him and did not work in his favor. Nice rack by Jeffrey DeLuna. And it's now going to be Cena's break. Jeff from Tennessee, DeLuna was the first blind, I believe. He was either first or second. John Mora and Jeffrey DeLuna were first and second blinds. Give me a moment. I will check on that for you. With the paper I have, it doesn't say who was first, but I know that Jeffrey DeLuna and John Moore were the blinds at 1,300 each. Nine balls going towards the pocket, but not going in. Cena has a shot on the one. Not a great shot, but it's a shot nonetheless. So there's a discussion on whether or not enough balls have passed the, the, the middle line, and Jack is coming in to explain what exactly is happening. Bang time pool, this is the only match being played. So, Jack, is it a foul because of... How many balls have to cross the read or one minus So it was an illegal break because not enough balls pass the center string. Jeffrey liked to take it and he made the nine on a combo, and that was what happened. Now it's Jeffrey DeLuna's break. Oh, uh, we'll get you another one. I'm drinking alcohol now, so. So the rules of the break are that three balls have to come back past the center string or one ball taken off or each ball made. So that did not happen. It was an illegal break. The option was for Jeffrey to either take it or give it back to Cena. He took it and he made the nine ball combo. Welcome back to the booth, Sue Orr. Thank you. I had to chase down my iced tea. They took my iced tea. What were they thinking? <laughs> you switched to iced tea and I switched to alcohol. <laughs> Oh my God. Really? Did we go there already? I mean, all right. I'm not playing. After my iced tea, I'll I'll be switching again. All right, what's happened? Oh, how'd that happen? Oh, isn't it supposed to be the other way? You have it behind. I have. I, I keep it behind. Oh, okay. I'll tell you why later. Okay. All right, what happened here? My goodness, I step away for a few minutes and the score goes two zero. Yep. Cats and dogs playing together. <laughs> Look at this. Pretty. Pretty. Just so anybody's concerned out there, Sue has gotten her tea. Yes. It's essential. I got to preserve my voice. 
Three to the five to the six. So DeLuna broke. Oh, that's a tough wow, miss. Wow, wow, yeah. wow, wow. So, so DeLuna is... broke the first rack yeah. and had a push shot. He pushed into a little closer to the ball, gave himself a jump, and made a killer jump and ran out in the second rack. Cena broke and didn't have enough balls come back over the middle line, and it was an illegal break, and then oh. DeLuna had a combo. That's why it was so quick. I see. Okay. And that was a tough miss for Cena there. So right here, he got on the wrong side. So now he's having to shoot a longer shot. So right now I'm looking at this. The six to the seven is really going to be... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, there's a four ball on the table. I keep missing that four ball, don't I? The six to the seven is the key. And I think that's the most difficult out of the entire rack and really not that difficult. The Loon is playing very fast right now. He generally does play fast. Yeah, but... he does. Yeah, I had him play in my Wednesday tournament. It was so much fun. He was giving everybody like the six out, five out. <laughs> Does he live here now? Uh, I think so. I think so. He's here pretty regularly. He kept that straight. You see that? He put insight on that and kept it straight. Very nice shot. I think he's going to try the nudge to eight Sweet out? Or? D. No, uh, I think he's... Ooh, he hit that kind of wishy, but he got there. He's there, though. Yeah, yeah he's he there. got it. Yeah, Kyle, I don't do... Uh, sweet tea is too sweet for me. I usually cut it with, like, unsweet tea. But I'm definitely a tea girl. Perfect. That was an uncharacteristic miss by Cena. Yes, yeah. yes, and uh, he was not happy, and it's kind of a surprising miss for sure. And and what I I honestly think that it was just a mental error because looking at the shot, he really just needed to float forward. So I'm not really sure because he missed it by quarter diamond. I mean, it came out quite a bit. The Luna double checking whose break it was to try to not yes. repeat <laughs> the um, the previous matches. The incident. In the incident. <laughs> Larry Davis in the crowd, Paul McCaffrey, Larry Davis, former Doc Hill champion. Frank Curcio, Dave Dottillo is looking upon. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. John Morrow sitting behind us in a fancy leather jacket. <laughs> See who his next opponent will be. Whoever wins this will have to double dip they want to win the any mercer whereas john will have to win one set look at the cue ball cue ball is not going to go in but it's there close yeah it was floating wow look at that break well but i don't think yeah, he can see the see three, the three. Yeah. yeah oh how many times does that happen you break a rack wide open oh, yeah. and you can't see your first ball it's funny that guy big jerry i was talking about he made seven balls in the break once and he had no shot on the two and he lost the rack oh. <laughs> what's a 72 t Explain, T2. Romeo. That's T2. Try T2 T. Terminator. <laughs> Terminator T. <laughs> yeah, see, that's my vision right there. I see a safety beyond the five here. Mike Leos, I don't recall. Ja I didn't catch the Ghostbusters reference. I'll have to scroll back in the chat. Oh, he hit that good. He, I think he can see the side of the three ball, but he hit that pretty good. <laughs> Is this true? Yes, this man has no... No, never mind. Different... Wrong wrong quote. What would you do here, Sue? Let's see. There's a, there's a natural safe here. Well, it depends on how much of the three ball he can see. Can we get a different angle? Ooh, he doesn't see as much of that. No, I he think he's going to try to clip it, it and come back behind come the back. five. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the shot. Oh, wow. Look at Scratched. this. Scratched. Same shot. Same. Well, no, no, no. no, no Brian no, no, Parks, same, same, same trajectory. Yes, yeah. yes. Same angle. When I saw Brian right after his match, he just said, man, that push shot. You know, he, yeah. said, it, he, said, it, he said it popped off the rail different than he expected. Uh -huh. You know. Oh, okay. I didn't know T2 is a brand of T. I'll check it out, Ramil. 
Ramil said, so good. <laughs> Wide open rack, no problems. So Cena's got to win this. This is going to remain competitive in this in this match. No major issue. She's shaking off really his first major miss that yeah that he should have made. I mean, he's missed some tough shots. Yeah, yeah. Like the way he hits the ball. Actually, I think that's the first. Uh, kind of shot where I've seen him judge something. He's usually very like one rail, one rail, sometimes two rails, but very simple player. Pretty natural line for the seven. Yeah, he should be out here. Valija day. Feliz a day. Yeah, we've been wrestling with his last name pretty much the entire tournament. <laughs> so much that I just went up to him and said, how do we say your last name? All right. Nice, nice shot by Mr. Feliz a day. And he's on the board. Feliz a day. Feliz a day. Scores 3-1. He's on the board. Yeah, we didn't know, Mark. Uh, I mean, I never noticed it, and then Jack actually caught it because he was sitting right here. So, I don't think, and 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 Cena had words with Jack about it afterwards, but I don't, I didn't see that John mentioned it about about the headphones. I think Jack might have just noticed, noticed it. Noticed it, yeah. And um, you know, I just, I, I personally don't think headphones at this level. The, the the thought process behind the headphones is that well, people could be cheating and and telling you what to do, but at this level, nobody's telling these guys what to do. So, but I understand why yeah. they don't allow headphones and whatever the case. It's the rule. It's right. the rule's the rule. Yeah, exactly. I think Cena was asking why, and Jack just said it's the rule. Don't yeah, always do have to have reasons. That's just the rule. He did a cut draw break on that, and he hit it really good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really good. Great break. Shouldn't one present to too many two. issues. The one to the two is really it's, the only one. Yeah. And that's actually not too bad. Just a ha just a tad bit of draw, and it'll come naturally, honestly. Should land pretty nicely on the two. There, he pushed it a little bit further, but yeah, he got a good. He got a good. Timothy Cole, yeah, I, don't, I really don't think um, John Morris said anything about the headphones. I think Jack might have just noticed it, um, but I don't know. Rack is wide open. Doesn't seem happy with that. Um, no, he wasn't happy with that. He smiled in this direction. Yeah, he is shooting at about three Smile quarters. of disgust. <laughs> uh, he got about three quarters of this pocket. It, to, from here, it looks like it goes. Uh, I just don't think that that's where he wanted to shoot it in. Yeah, it goes for sure. Yeah, see? And came around. Yeah, he worked it out. Center of the table. Nice. Plugs or plugs. Yeah. 
Nice run out, very com very comfortable run out. He uh, even resolved his issue, and um, it's a good rack. John Francois Chevenal, a lot of the pro players know each other just from traveling the same circles. Mm -hmm. I don't know if DeLuna is friends with Cena or, or not. I think Cena's kind of new to the scene, but... They all know each other. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. know each other. I know DeLuna and Mora know each other pretty well. I mean, they just travel a lot, and they see each other at events, and they end up talking and have interactions. So, well, of course, there are players who are better friends than others, but... You know, one thing I do want to mention is uh, I moved to Vegas back in 2011. I used to live in Washington. And um, in Vegas, a lot of these guys, like world champions, you know, they come in regularly. And, and so a lot of the guys, because we see them regularly, we're like on a first name basis with these guys, right. which is kind of unheard of. We're kind of spoiled in that way. And so I have to tell you, you know, when I was in Washington, if you told me that I was just going to be chumming it up with Alex Pagalion and joking around, right. like I would have never believed you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so Ramil, here I am now. Ramil, this is an opponent racks tournament. So the opponent racks for, so Jeffrey DeLuna was racking for Cena. It was Cena's break. So yeah. And a nice break by Cena. See. Bit of a cut. It's a bit of a cut on that too. Makeable, but really got to stay down. Um, and looking at the angle, he should be able to come around two rails for that four ball to the side. I'm just going to make sure I saw the balls on the table. I mean, he's right-handed, so just making this two is going to be a challenge yeah, in its own. reaching. He may play safe. It is, yeah. I mean, he's slightly, he's slightly jacked table. up around this five, so he's got to pull the bridge out. And he can't hit it too hard or he's going to get himself all mucked up unless he tries to come behind that six ball. Yeah, he played safe. Shot it good. Yeah. Shot nice and steady. I think he may be able to see the edge of it. Jeff is looking. It's funny. He adjusted that Accurac because I was about to say that Accurac being on the table technically oh. is a foul if something hits it. I mean, you have to be a real jerk to call that foul. But <laughs> Oh, look at this. Yeah, I think he sees the side of it as well, too. But problem is, I don't think he sees enough of it to do something. See Anybody that? visiting Vegas, make sure to check out the app Vegas Near Me. It's not my app, but it's George Myers. He's a big supporter of the pool world. Check out Vegas Near Me. It's a next-level revolutionary app. He's not a sponsor. He's just a nice guy who does a lot for pool. So he doesn't have a straight kick on this. He's on this looking two. at a, he looking at a two railer, I think. Well, I can't tell. He might even be coming off. Let me see where he's aiming. He's got There's a jump cue so in his hand, bro. He's gonna go for a jump kick. Right past the side pocket. Yeah. Wow. And How'd he hit it? And will it stay up? Oh, um, man, he hit that good too. He hit that good. It's an unfortunate roll. Another one of those scenarios, kick versus jump. I don't think he had a straight kick. He would have had to go two rails. I mean, yeah, yeah, but that's a kick. I mean, it would have taken the scratch out of the equation. But that was a weird roll, too, the way he hit it. I mean, he hit it good. When he hit rail, it, I thought he hit the, it solid. The, but the, it the just cue kept ball on kept rolling. floating, yeah. All right, Cena's opportunity here, and let's see, two, five, six. A little bit of moving from the six to the seven, but really, not really any obstacles. If you're enjoying the stream, please feel free to show some love. Helps pay for things. 
It's always nice to have a little cheddar for people oh like, my. oh my goodness. Oh my. Wow. He shot that kind of hard, too. I mean, fast. He shot that kind of fast. And he conceded the game. He did. Oh, that's unfortunate. I thought he shot that kind of fast, but I thought it was going to hit the point, and it was just a mental error. Oh, yeah. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. He's getting fresh. I mean, Cena's a much more accomplished player than me, but it, I probably would be taking a bathroom break at this time. Yeah, shake you know? it off. Clear your head. Yeah, I agree. Um, as I said, you know, I... Throughout this match, at least the ones that I commentated for Cena, he's played pretty much a flawless game. I mean, so clean. So this is uncharacteristic, but, you know, it is it is close to the finals. It's pressure, and they're human, you know. Timothy Cole, to answer your question, um, George's uh, stuff is in the bathroom of Rum Runner, so Rum Runner likes him enough to ha let him advertise here, so I feel like it's okay to advertise his product here. Yeah. All right, Jeff is up to break. He's on the hill. Another great sponsor pool, Table 34. Come check it out. Just south of the airport. I know I will be. Heck yeah. I, I, already, I already talked to Johnny about it. We're yeah. planning on it. We're loving the work that Joe Valdez is doing. Great stuff. And we are official sponsors because we actually give money <laughs> so and the restaurant sponsoring my time by allowing me to be here good shot nice nice yeah touch. that is a great shot nice touch but relatively simple kick here he does also have an opportunity to kick that one ball away and possibly even keep the the one uh, the cue ball on the high rail here um i made it the whole day without fetting forgetting to update a score but <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ramil. How dare you. No, nah, it's, it's good for it to take this long. You think At he's going to go? Ramil's on top of it. Right. <laughs> this is not an easy kick, Sue. You said it's kind of an easy I don't think so. No, it's a uh, I, I, I'm simple. <laughs> it's relative. It's relative. I guess he's going he's the other way. Uh, I, I, I see the kick. I, 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 it's there. Because he can't. The three ball's in the way of him mm -hmm. getting there. Even looking. But you can shorten this up. You can shorten it up and make it react quicker off the rail. You can kick this for sure. Yeah, he's drawing, which is how you gotta kick yeah, it. Yeah, that's a tough kick. Yeah. That was it. It's conceding oh, the match. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. All right, Jeff takes the match. Congratulations. So that's a Cena. third place finish, right? Yeah, he All gets right. third. So Cena Valley's a day. Uh, gets third place in the Dock Hill. I'm sorry, the Andy Mercer Memorial Classic. The final will be Jeffrey DeLuna versus John Mora. Into true double elimination. Yeah, that was a tough match for Cena, but he did have a strong finish. So congratulations to Cena on a third place finish at the Mercer. And a uh, big match coming up here. And uh, you said true double elimination, right? Yes, it's uh, ah. true double elimination. Jeffrey DeLuna has to win two Twice. sets to win. Twice. Okay. Got it. No, no, I don't think I don't think he lost his mind at the end. I think he conceded because it's an open open rack and he's down five one and you know, I mean it's frustrating but it happens. He's also, you know, the way he plays, he's a very meticulous player. And I think once he started making those errors, it kind of built up. Yeah, that two ball him. really yeah. bugged him, it seemed like it the did one. Quite a bit. He had a great tournament in any case, he got third place. Yeah. Of course, anybody any day wants to play a much, you know, cleaner game, and they, they want to do well. So it is understandable. He just got I, frustrated. Pappy Van Winkle, I agree with you wholeheartedly. You should get some sort of reward for being in the hot seat, and they should have to double dip you. It's been a trend lately for tournament directors to just say one finals, which I don't agree with. Um, but so I think this is the right way to do it. You should have to double dip somebody if you get to the, if you get the hot seat. You should have the advantage. 
Oh, for sure. Yeah. I agree. I mean, the whole point of double elimination is just for you to be out of the tournament. You have to lose twice, right? So you right. should be held to that same regard all the way right. to the very end. Yeah. But a lot of some directors are saying, well, it's just one set in the finals. I don't, I like think, a long set. Yeah, do I don't one. like that. I, I think no. that's bunk. But, yeah. you know, I've heard all kinds of different reasons for it. Oh, well, then it avoids chops. Some of the clock. If players want to chop, they're going to chop. There's nothing you can do to stop it. You make them play, they'll just make a mockery of your tournament. You yeah. Know, so. It's just preference, Mike. I think, but I I do like a true a uh, true double elimination. It actually brings out a whole other different element. Um, how many times have you seen a double dip in a tournament? I mean, that in and of itself is really cool to watch. I don't remember it ever happening ever. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's, <laughs> but you know, that's I mean, that in and of itself is fantastic just to watch and really see like their heads in the game. And um, I don't know, I. I, I can argue for both sides, but um, but yeah, I'm a fan of double elimination, true double elimination. Tim Cole got your message and copy that. I of all people should have seen the sarcasm in your ways. John just practicing at this point. We're getting ready for this finals match. Gino Hill is sitting right next to us. You know, an amazing person, done amazing things for the world of pool. The man, the myth, the legend. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> Come down to Run Runner. What a great bar this is. I love this place. You should play in the Mercer next year, Sue. I am. I, uh, I've already put out feelers for sponsorships. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Ooh, a lot of English. You can't find anybody, give me a call, but I'll make you slap a big Table 34 logo on your shirt. Oh, I could do that. Uh, all righty then. You know We're what? Good. <laughs> Cody offered, and he said that I have to wear a shirt with his face on it. And I didn't, <laughs> what is I he, didn't say no. What is he promoting? His business. True. His, uh, his auto business. His auto body repair business. So, yeah, I'll definitely let you know. That would be funny if I wore a shirt with Cody's face on it. I'm gonna have I'd to draw the line here. You're, you, we'll sponsor you, and you have a little like <laughs> logo on your shirt. But if Cody's Devito's face is anywhere near that logo, <laughs> the deal is off. <laughs> Romy, that's the first thing you said that I agree with. Yeah, in the in big events like pro events, I think going down a single elimination is fine. Um, you know, the major tournaments, it's the U.S. Open, and those are long races. That's a little different. So there's two sides to the story, and there's two ways to look at everything. Um, I just, I've noticed a trend of going to longer races. I prefer the double dip in these type of tournaments. But, yeah, U.S. Open, stuff like that, you're already playing races to 11, 13. That's, that's tough to try to do a double dip. So I think that's why they narrow it down to single elimination after a certain point. Tim is volunteering you to. Yeah, I know. Me. I just saw that. <laughs> well, Tim, Papa C Productions has very little revenue stream, but the restaurant will probably be able to handle it. <laughs> I'm not sure if my 367 followers on YouTube uh, can monetize uh, fast <laughs> enough to get to a tournament buy-in. <laughs> I'm looking forward to having a meal at your restaurant. Like I said, I am a big food. It's person, great, and I'm so, so yeah, proud of. I'm so proud of the work we're it. doing. And I'm really happy with the partnership we have with MLB. And, you know, we sponsor a lot of different tournaments. We do uh, certificates for other tournaments. And, um, yeah, everybody's pretty much in the same. Don't yes. put Cody's face on your shirt. I'm playing in the Mercer next year. I'll have somebody's face on my shirt. <laughs> Look, as you saw, Rennell plays good pool. He got fifth and sixth. I mean, you know, he got a favorable draw and he played well. You know, you don't have to be a 700 to cash in this tournament. No, not at all. And and you know when it comes to the bar box, um, I, I I do play pretty strong bar box. Um, in the Dock Hill, um, I played a very very clean game the first two days. It was the third day where I couldn't hold the momentum. That yeah. was really it. Yeah. So, 
Um, and then especially watching, you know, the brain behind all some of these players. And, you know, at the end of the day, they're human. And so right. I'm willing to give it a swing. And I love shooting with guys. Um, I, I take it on as a big challenge. And I like it. So nice. I'm in. Narnar, the entry fee to this tournament is $250. Um, there is a, a, a robust um, live auction that if you want to become part of will cost you a little more depending on who you are. Um, if you're Renel Pira, it'll cost you 20 bucks, and he's going to cash out like a bandit on that. But um, so, but $250 is the entry for the Andy Mercer Memorial Classic. No. Did they just say duet? Uh, it's more people wanting you to sing. Duet. Oh, goodness. Um, I'm thinking of the most simplest tune I can put out. Why do birds suddenly appear <laughs> every time? You are near. <laughs> Some kind of conversation going on between Jeffrey Luna and Jack. Not sure what it's about. Um. Okay. I. I want. I'll. I'll give. I'll give you guys one verse, and that, that's all. I can <laughs> that's hear. all you're getting. That's it. That's it. Um. I'm trying to not mess up the lyrics. <laughs> Wise men say. Only fools rush in, but I can't help falling in love with you. That's it. That's it. Woohoo! Sue for the win. <laughs> I don't know what's going on over here, but Jeffrey Deluna and Jack are talking about his cup or something. <laughs> it's like they're just finding weird things to argue about at this point. Okay, Jack's apologizing. I don't know what's... I'll have to ask him about that. Thank you, <laughs> Yes, Joseph Garo, you tuned in at the right time. <laughs> My apologies, guys. It was just one line. I didn't want to do too much. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are too kind. <laughs> I'll have to ask Jack what that conversation about. They're talking about Jeff's, like, Yeti cup. Narnar said, now in Korean. <laughs> Everybody, welcome more. We're about to get started here at the finals of the 32nd annual Andy Mercer yes. Memorial Nine Ball Classic. My name is Constantine Alexander. I'm here with Sue Orr, and we are happy to be here for this amazing tournament. Oh, man. Two bona fide pros playing in the tournament, John Mora and Jeffrey DeLuna, and we're excited. Jeffrey has to win twice in his true double elimination format. Who's pumped? I'm pumped. Are you pumped? I'm pumped. Yes. I'm pumped. Yes, let's do this. We got serenaded by Sue. They're going to be lagging for the break. And we're off. I sound Tennessean. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever heard that. And the lag. Look at this. It's like DeLuna has won the lag. Anybody just tuning in, it is opponent racks break from the small box, AccuRack nine on the spot. Three balls have to pass the center string. Did you get all that? I think so. Hi, Andy. Welcome back. All right, we got a lot of people joining us. I saw Josh. We got Ramil. Oh, wait, did Ramil go away? Nope, Ramil's right there. Ramil's Narnar. still around. Hi, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. We are in the final match. Ooh. I feel excitement in the air. Yeah, it's a nice environment. Deluna checking the rack as yeah. he should. Here we go. All right, so keep record of this. Jeff broke first. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Jeff broke first. <laughs> just look at the positive side. Every time I play Brian from now on, I can just make fun of him for not knowing whose break it is. Thank you, Francis. Nice. Nine ball moving. Oh, Nine ball does not count in the bottom two pockets by the rules of this tournament. Young Tran, the nine on the spot has made a big um, big difference. Uh, obviously, if the nine wasn't on the spot, then the corner balls would go in almost every time. That's the main difference. So a lot of the pros have uh, elected to do a cup break and try to make the one in the side. Mark Gel Gelfer Vilmos played. He drew Victor Kakuza first match and lost. And then he won a match, then he lost. So he went three and out. Jeffrey Galena with a good break, and it looks like he's going to be going, going for a three-nine combo. combo here. Yep. Thank you, Francis. That was very kind of you. 
Here we go. All right, quick rack. Score is 1-0. Well, Ramil, I've had a few people mention about yeah. blurry, but it's on your side. I'm is there looking a data at week? it. No, I'm looking at it right now. There's no blurry on the YouTube channel, so it's it's on it's on the end user side, not our side. And we're we're hardwired, right? We're not hardwired, but okay. they did increase the internet here okay. specifically. Oh, for this. Just in general, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, Ryan Woodell. Yeah, it's 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 on your end, Ryan. We've we've checked everything and we're good to go. Yeah, and actually today would be the day we have better camera um, quality, a uh, video quality as well. To uh, Constantine brought his equipment, and so we got different angles, and um, I noticed a difference already, quite a bit. Well, I mean, I'm I'm not running professional level cameras here, so if there's going to be a little, you know, it's not going to be super sharp, but. All right, scores 1-0. John's breaking. Two ball looks like it might. Five balls in. Yep, he's got a shot. One, yeah. Oh, wow. Look at this. This is pretty. This is pretty. Thank you, Mark Smith. We love you, too. I know who Mark Smith is, by the way. That pseudonym is not going to get by me. I'll tell you off camera. This is this is a Tim Watson. It's going to be uh, if John wins, he wins. If John loses, then Deluna will have to beat him a second set. All right, let me look here. Oh yeah, this is a nice wide open rack. Oh, he hit that so sweet. You are rooting for anybody here, Sue? Oh. Both of them are such good players. No, I, I really don't. They're both great. I, I really want to see just what happened. I'm I'm the popcorn eater. Right. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> Who are you rooting for? Um, I know John personally, so I, I, I think I would be rooting for him as a person because I just know him better. But I think they're both great people and... Yeah, I, I don't agree. Know. No. <laughs> I, I just want everybody to have fun. I want yeah. all players and to just have fun. Play a good match, right? right? Yeah. Narnar said I'm rooting for Canada. Blame Canada. I just, oh my God, Blame just Canada. Out of my brain. I said it takes me to South Park. <laughs> oh my God. I can't believe you just did that. All right. A little bit Careful, of a Careful, you might here. offend some of our trolls. All right. A little bit of a tester here. Not too bad, though. Just make the ball. You know what I've noticed a lot with these pro players? They don't try to cross the side pocket as much. You know, I'm looking at them thinking, oh, we'll go back. They keep it below the pocket, yeah. you know, so they don't cross it just you yeah. know, for a variety of reasons. But I've noticed that a lot on, on, on their shots, especially with John. I've noticed that a few times gonna draw this fully back he's full, look out look how low he's hitting the ball he wants this full back oh watch the pocket very clean he it did wiggle a little bit it came yeah, out to the little. side but i mean he still hit it with a very very clean stroke <laughs> you're welcome tim thank you for tuning in it's been great having you guys And then having Constantine here, that's been a bonus. It's been cool having like a partner. Wouldn't have missed it for the world. <laughs> yeah, I was talking you up like the whole time. Oh, I'm boy. like, wait till you guys, wait till he gets here. <laughs> I'm not as good as I used to be. I'm, I'm just too tired right now. <laughs> I don't have as much energy. Nice run up by John Mora there. 1-1. One, one. All right. Open a restaurant, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> I wouldn't trade it for the world. Curious to see what your menu is. Your menu online? 
Okay. Yes. Okay. I want to look it over. Table 34 Vegas. I want to be ready. So, Rich, Rich B, every time somebody mentions a blurry screen, I look at the feed going straight to YouTube, and it's never been blurry, so it's got to be an end user issue. Thank you, Ramil. Hi, Richard. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, maybe the internet's broken. You would be the person to break the internet. It's happened before. <laughs> I'd break the dark web. <laughs> Get this manogram on you. All right, here we go. Nice break by Jeffrey. Is he going to be able to see that too? He no. is not. No. Uh, let me see the line here. There, mm, I can't. Can I get a different camera angle? I just want to see if there's a window between. There is a window. There's a window. Ooh, there's actually a window to even kick into that nine. Would you go for it? Um, I mean, I would go for it, but I, I don't think he's gonna go for it. Mm -hmm. I think he's gonna try to clip the two and come off safe around where the eight is. Let me or he's see looking what he's to maybe he's at. looking to maybe come back to where the cue ball is. What is he aiming at? Because he's got a pretty big wall with the six and the nine. If he brings the cue ball back to where it is, Let come off see. the four. I think that's probably what I would try to do as well. But I I don't know how how much of this two he could see. Uh, Earl, just to answer your question, John is coming from the hot seat, so Jeff is coming from the B side, and it's a true double elimination. I don't know what he's looking at. I, I I don't know how much of the two ball he can see, if at all. I don't think he can see any of it, but it's on the kick. He might, it, it might be hard for him to even kick, so he's okay, going to push into a better position to kick. Yeah. Just because he couldn't he couldn't get enough to see the two. Yeah. For a kick, even. He wants him to bat at this. When he was on the rail too, so he's pushing yeah. him to a better position for the kick. John's going to think about it, but yeah. he hasn't given it back yet. He's wanting him to bat at this. So in both the Doc Hill and the Andy Mercer this year, the two blinds are playing in the finals. Here we go. Is he giving it back? You know, John Moore has given back a couple pushes that we were kind of surprised about. He hasn't given this one back yet. Oh. But yeah, he did give that one push back to Cena, who made a killer um, Massé shot. Here we go. Big, big pocket if he goes for the kick combo there on the nine. He could see it. He could see it. Well, it's surprising to me that he could see that and that Jeffrey pushed into that shot if he could see it. I don't it. think he meant to push yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. He wanted just a piece of it. Wow, he could see it. All right, what's happening here? I see a draw here. Um, he looks like he's shooting forward. Let me see. He might be coming over two rails. Yeah. Good control, slow down ball. There you go. Rest should be history. It's all open. For this rack. Yeah. Beautiful speed, perfect angle. He's got options. He can keep it straighter, go on top of the eight ball. He can take the angle and go underneath the eight ball. I think he's just going to float it underneath the eight ball. I think center, right around center yeah. of the table to the right, yeah. Yep. Oh, no, he came up. Yeah. Well done. Jeff gave him that little millimeter he needed. Seems like 
John might be the crowd favorite in here right now. Yeah. Seems <laughs> like it. Nar nar, I don't agree. Not everybody loves Canadians. The owners of South Park or the creators of South Park do not <laughs> love Canadians. Or maybe they do love them. So, John, check in the rack. Had a nice run out last rack. John breaks when it's odd. Jeffrey breaks when it's even. <laughs> we're keeping an eye on that, aren't we? <laughs> well, I mean, even if we spot something and we can't say anything, they're not refereed matches. Uh, Ramil, the under 520, uh, 515 MOB tournament, I believe, is going to be a split venue where it'll be at Rum Runner and Putters, but I, I don't know. But it's a big enough tournament. I'm pretty sure they're utilizing both venues. He broke drive. And eight is looks wired from here. Tim Cole is threatening to make some more South Park references. Just be careful. You might be banned from the chat by YouTube, not by me. You know, I was watching South Park when I was in Guam. In Guam. That's right. I forgot you used to live in Guam. Yeah. You told me that. Because you were military, right? No. Oh. I was born and raised there. Okay. Yeah. It's like a push is coming. No. no Sorry. It's wired. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. For some reason wired. I thought that was a nine. He just didn't pull it back. Yeah. Um Josh Satello. Fish of the day. Fish of the day. Closely followed by the anchor steam pork chop. Is he gonna bank this, Sue? Is he gonna play safe? I think she's gonna hit the one oh. down to the top rail and leave the cue ball behind the three five. I honestly, I'm not even sure if there's a bank here. I mean, unless he's trying. To... There's, I don't see no, one. Is he gonna cut he it? Looks like he looks like he's cutting it. Nice shot. Now is he now gonna, be is he gonna to get behind the, the five? Ball. Is the only question, and he is behind the five. I think he might have enough to make it though. Well, we've already seen that he can he can drill jump shots. Yeah. With no issues. Some cue out. Oh, you're so welcome, George. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Francis, are you asking me what it's like? What was it like living in Guam? Here we go. Beautiful. Oh. Crowd said, do it again. <laughs> Although I doubt he's going to be jumping here. He can cut that three in, I think. Where's the four? Okay, so a few problems. Um... He's going to draw and keep the cue ball down below. It's going to swing out. Oh, he went for Look at this. Wow. Look at this bump. Goodness gracious, Jeff. Uh, as um, a friendly nudge, if I've ever seen one, I'll be, oh, he might have been playing for that. Yeah, that was pretty sporty. I think he was playing for it. It's, it I think very so. very intentional, yeah. That was the one that would sing at hard times. I've been to hard times one time, and it was for the Swanee. Uh, Hard times in Sacramento? Uh, no, Riverside. Okay. Yeah. And then um, this was also the same hard times where Alex Pagalayan was down on a shot to shoot the 10 ball, and I flashed him with my camera mid-stroke. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> well, it wasn't intentional. I thought my camera, the flash was off, but it had timed out. And so when I took the photo, it had reset everything, and the flash came back on. <laughs> he made the ball, though. Get that. 
Well, this... they're they're cheering for everybody, so there's yeah, no crowd favorite. Lots of clapping here. All right, so score is two two. It's gonna be a lot of back and forth. It's gonna be good to watch. Yeah, I, I sometimes go to a good times to karaoke around here. They have Leanne does a great job at good times for karaoke. Mm -hmm. I go there on Saturdays, but I haven't been there in a while. Like, I, I want to go. I mean, good times is one of really only three, like, pool halls in town, you know? Like, this it's is a true. bar that has six tables, and it's great. It's a great venue, but there's not a lot of places that have a lot of pool halls. It's yeah. really just good times, griffs, and banging balls. Yeah, Bellflower, that's the one. Yeah, Lauren, you're right. Yeah, Bellflower. That's the one I went to. Yeah, that was, wow. That tournament, though, was the who's who of pool. Uh, Bustamante was there. Strickland was there. Efren was there. Parika, King Kong. I mean, basically, everybody you can right. imagine was there. It was great. <laughs> Jeffrey up to break. Yeah, these side, guys are not one ball on the side as it should. Jeff's got a shot on the two, but not really. I don't think it goes in that side pocket. Mm -mm. So he's probably going to have to play safe here. Maybe just nudge the two down table and keep the cue ball behind the, the nine. Or he could play it behind the seven ball, which is a less likely shot, I think. I think he's going to stick him behind the nine. Yeah, maybe hit the two in a way that it comes back and clips the six so it doesn't come too far. But. Wednesday night, 10 p.m. I got to put that on my calendar. And there Good we shot. Go. That was the shot. Let me see here. No natural kick. Uh, actually, the natural kick is blocked by the five. It's weird. I always look I for the he's kick. Got a one, he's got a one rail and a long rail. Um, oof. No, this is a tough never one. Never mind. That's tough hit. No matter what you do, you can squiggle between the five and the nine. I'm sorry, five and the three. Let me look at this. You think one. he's gonna try to one rail and pass that seven? I think he's gonna go long, go towards the corner pocket, and bump that. Yeah, that's what he's going for. No, he's going two rails. Yeah, two rails, and he's yeah. gonna come long. Might even put a little bit of reverse. I was gonna say it's gonna come off kind of straight. Came off too straight. Yeah, he missed that by about a ball mm -hmm. length. A good opportunity for Jeff to referee to take a lead here. No real problem balls. I think maybe, I mean, getting to the three is not going to be an issue because he's got ball in hand on the two. Natural, two to the three. Everything's wide open. Oh, never mind. He has ball in hand. That makes it way more natural. <laughs> so three, four. Yeah, wide open. Seven, eight, hanging by the pocket. George knows all the good karaoke spots. Sure does. George's the man about town. He should create an app or something. I know. All right, so... Barring some sort of intervention by Kanye West, I think this is going to be a run out for Jeffrey DeLuna. Jesus. Imagine. <laughs> Remind me to tell you off camera about the last time I met Kanye West. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Very nice out by Jeff. Score is 3-2, Jeff.
So you're an East Sider, right? I am. Okay. So Rocky's not on your team. He's on. Is, is he a West is, Sider? Is Rocky on a team? Rocky, are you a West Sider or an East Sider? An East Sider. That's your teammate right there behind you. He didn't mention Rocky. Well, he just told me he's an East Sider. He would have no reason to lie to me about it. Oh, yeah. Wait, Rocky. Do you know Rocky? No, I do know Rocky. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know he was on the Okay. <laughs> Nice break by John. He's going to have a straight in shot on the one. He's not. No. Oh, he couldn't That's get time off work. Effort. Exactly, yeah. I was misinformed. Yeah. I was afraid I forgot about him. I was like, oh my gosh. Well, Kondo's an East Sider, right? Uh, Kondo's an East Sider, yes. Oh, I love the way John hits the ball. Yeah, he was a good break straight on the one. Oh. It was good rack for him. Yeah, I don't Ryan see Woodle, these guys almost never play on bar tables. It's just that this is a bar table tournament. Yeah. John and Jeffrey are big table players. Yeah. That's what most of the pros play on. Yeah. But they both live here. Might as well play in the Andy Mercer. Yeah, I can't remember a time I've walked into Griff's and not seen John shooting on that big table. He up practices front. a lot, yeah. yeah. Hi, Jose. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, Richard would know. Richard's always scoping them out. He's always there gambling against them. Is that Richard Burns? Yes, it's Richard Burns. Richard Burns had the best quote. He was talking to somebody. He's like, I got nowhere to go, and then nobody will talk to me when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine him in his voice. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Thank you for joining us. John making sure he gets a good angle on the yeah, six. Doesn't want to get too weird. Mm -hmm. Yep. John's shooting very comfortably. I mean, they both are. You nice know, they've both been stroke. in. There's no. Pr both been in pressure situations. Oh, nope. thought I it's thought it. It's all right. Yeah. He banked they're, they're it in. They're both it's shooting right. very, very comfortably right now. There you go. Scores 3-3. Three, three. Wow. Back and forth. Back and forth. As expected, right? As expected. Yeah, we weren't expecting a runaway. At any no. Point, were we? All right. Thank you, Debbie. I know, and today I got Constantine here. We got extra camera angles. We got dual mics. We are, we are grooving. I hope we do enough. Good, we do a good enough job that I'll be invited back next year. Maybe next year, um, I won't be tied to the restaurant. I could do the whole thing. You know, we'll see. I'll be playing and commentating. Nice. I. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I'll never try to run a stream and play at the same time. I no. did it last year. It was. It you should have known better. I know. It's my own fault. <laughs> my own fault. Never again. Never again. Yeah.
But next year, I'd like to do the dock. I don't. I'm not sure I'll be able to plan the dock next year. But I said that the year before as well, and so you never know. Nice break from Jeffrey. That Is he going to get a shot on the snappy, one? He does yeah. not have a shot from the one. I, I, uh, right from his body language, as soon as he hit the rack, I don't feel like he hit it as sweet as he wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think this year I'm going to find a team to play on out of the Rum Runners, so I don't have to qualify. I right. It's, it's, it's stressful. Yeah, because I, I want a qualifier to get in the dock this year, but... I'll just join a team. So anybody who wants me on their team. Nice. Yeah, it's stressful um, because you have to try to win it. And it's, I, yeah. I just don't know if I'll be able to qualify just based on my Fargo. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm hoping. I'm, one of those I'm teetering on that line, too, because uh, I want a big match at the Alpha. and so. Right. I'm one of those rare people that wants my Fargo to go higher, which means I'm getting better. Uh, Debbie Aarons, yes, you're a wild sager, huh? Uh, yeah, we bought the restaurant from Lori Kendrick and Wes Kendrick back in June. And we have uh, changed quite a bit, but m almost the entire staff is still there. Um, they've been very supportive, and it's been great. And we've got a lot of good press, so it's good. I don't know if Paul Silva is, uh, is, is trolling you or me, but it says, after that story, your nickname should be The Flash. Oh, <laughs> this, yeah, because of the Alex Paggy Lyon story. Oh, I know. <laughs> it took me a second to figure it out. And you know what happened, too? And, and this is what makes Alex such a stand-up guy. He could have called me out and embarrassed me because, you know, the moment I did that, everybody's faces turned towards me. But what he did is he joked about it. And he said, next time you do that, make sure the other guy is shooting. Yeah. Me. And he diffused the situation immediately. And he Was it like a real me. flash or like a it was cell a phone flash? No, it was a camera oh, flash. Wow. This was before everybody had like, you know, good cell phone and cameras. And you're just poor little girl. Like, hi. Uh -huh, the one girl fangirling, wanting a photo of Alex. And I flashed him right before he shot the 10. Oh, gosh. I was mortified. Tim Cole, I'll tell you the story uh, off stream. I don't want to make this about the restaurant other than telling people to go there. <laughs> All right, Jen. So we'll focus on pool for now. Mm -hmm. John gave it back. Interesting choice there. I think that there's a pretty good kick to hit this and leave the cue ball behind the seven and tangle that one up around the one, uh, the nine and the two. So I'm, I'm kind of surprised that John gave that kick back, to tell you the yeah. truth. All right. He's going for a jump. Here Maybe because the kick wasn't there. Man. He wanted the separation. He was too close earlier. He went for it. He mm. went for it. And it laid up all right. It laid Not up a bad right. little roll. Not a bad yeah. little roll. Yeah, here I, I'm seeing the safe behind the 2-9 two, two here. Oh, well, actually, this angle is telling me something different. Um, And Tim, to answer your question, yes, he made the 10. Thank God. <laughs> I was mortified. So lots of thanks to go out today, but real big thanks to Jack Murray for running this tournament. He's done an amazing job. He's had to deal with a lot of different personalities and people, um, different challenges, even some, uh, even even breaking up some potential, yeah. <laughs> you know, altercations. And and Jack's done a great job with everything. And you know, pool players can be tough, and he's done a great job. I'm really happy to have him around. Obviously, thanks to Gino for hosting the event. They do a great job. 32nd annual Andy Mercer Memorial Nine Ball Classic. Nice and, safety um, by John. Yeah, he played that good. Beautiful speed. Beautiful mm, might have hit it a little harder than he wanted. I think Jeffrey can get this two, uh, this yeah, one ball from a long rail kick. Um, the other thing, too, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but if you look at digital pool, um, the scores were updated dynamically, meaning that Jack was sitting here watching all four tables, updating the scores as the matches went. Right. It's a lot and of work so to do that. It, it's a lot of work. And so just wanted to break that down for those of you guys who, the one real kick came and coming here yeah, from Jeffrey. Spin. There we go. Is he going to Oh, over... there's a pocket. There's a pocket. Oh, he's all right. He's all right. He is all right. Yes. The two to the three is awkward, but the line is there. He just has to make it. Shoot, we might get out of here in time to play the eight ball tournament at Putters. I'll check it out later, Francis. <laughs> it's 
speak of the devil and he shall arrive. Jack Murray arrives with a big mug of shot. Diet Coke and what I'm assuming is a 1792 <laughs> shot of whiskey. Oh, oh tough miss oh, by Jeffrey. Oh, oh, oh. It was, like I said, it, was, it's, it wasn't a duck. The line was natural for the three, but... Yeah, she does. Yeah. I think I'm more scared of Rebecca than I am of Jack. Rebecca is a pretty scary individual. I know. I would not <laughs> want to be on her bad side. I don't even want to be on her neutral side. <laughs> Stay on the good side. Well done. I think he's going to come up purdy, perfect for this. Purdy with an angle. Look at that. Honestly, there's no other place you want to be. It's perfect. Where's the four? Yeah, four center of the table. Oh, yeah. But I'm bump Dirty Hippo with the hippo joke. <laughs> Hey, Dirty Hippo, do you know what you call a grizzly with no teeth? A gummy bear. Oh, that's cute. What's he thinking about here? Just trying to, is he going to draw back for the four on the side or is he going to go? I think so. I can't, let me see how he's hitting the ball. I'm he's pretty sure. He's thinking about it. He's just trying so, to. So here's the thing. It's a little straight. So the line for the draw, yeah. so he actually has to overcut it a hair to make sure that he comes out enough for the four ball. He's got to kind of turn the ball just like that. There you go. Good speed, too. Oh, Mr. Smooth. Very nice. Oh, I knew. Uh, Joy isn't here. Um, I was looking around for Joy to, yeah, to, I know. <laughs> to get the uh, drop on her, but uh, she's not here. So Hers was the only voice Ramil could hear. Right. <laughs> she was right behind me. She's uh, probably off somewhere winning a chip tournament. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sounds about right. See, the thing, like, when we were talking earlier about the people who were giving us a hard time, Vegas people, well, this is a Vegas tournament now, but it's gotten some national attention and stuff. So a lot of times people don't understand all these references, but like, who's Joy? I'm like, Joy is Joy. <laughs> <laughs> she, if you live in Vegas, you know Joy. Joy is all of 4'10 and the most dangerous person you'll ever encounter on a pool table. <laughs> I remember when she got in the finals of the big um, lipstick and lashes tournament and she was just firing away at things and she almost won. <laughs> she had a couple of nine ball combos. Nice run by John Mora. On a costly mistake by Jeffrey DeLuna, missing a tough shot. Yeah. Now it's John's break. And the margin of error for Jeffrey DeLuna is slowly closing. Yep. He got fortunate, too, because it almost scratched. He laid up right. and had the weird cut on the two. Thanks for the shout-out, Scott DeMore. It's our pleasure. We have a lot of fun doing this. Thanks, Marshall guys. Demos, you're going to have to convince yeah. Sue about the song in between racks. Oh, I'm not goodness. sure it's going to work. <laughs> you guys keep putting me on the spot. I've seen trees of green, <laughs> red roses too. Virginia Doherty on the stream. What up, Virginia? This, this whole vibe here is what I love. All these yeah. people around. This is a great place for spectator sports. They cut off the two tables and have everybody sitting there. Yeah. It's just a great environment. All I see is just eyeballs around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just an amazing environment. If you've never been here during one of these tournaments, you just see the, the electricity in the room and everybody watching. It's really just a great event. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's a privilege to be commentating for these matches. Yes. Truly. All right. John up to break. He's been breaking well. He has been. I think he's got the edge on DeLuna. Um, as far as the break, DeLuna's lost control of his cue. Although we almost commentators cursed him. That one does not go by the six ball. You think he's going to go for a combo here? It's not an easy combo. I don't see a better shot, really. The problem is, um, even after making it, 
you have to they have to figure out how to get back on it because True. it's gonna cut into the six but what's the other shot here yeah there's not really a safe that i see yeah. that this is yeah he, he he can't graze it and go behind the six. Let's Be just say it this way. If I shot as good as John, I would go for this combo. Right. Let's put it that way. But I Maybe. notice even these pros try to shy away from some of these combos. But when it's the only option, it's the only option. you got to shoot it. He's looking at it for sure. I feel like he's going for the combo here. Yeah, he's going. He's, he's aiming for it. Beautiful. Look how it laid up. Too. Yeah, I guess he oh, hit that all right. Pretty good shot, John. Very nice. Still not out of the woods. He's going to have to do a stroke shot on this to get on the two. Let me see here. So going forward, there's a lot of traffic. I think he might even try to use that little bit of space behind the seven uh, because it does go more naturally. You don't that think he way. comes around one, two, three rails with bottom uh, or with a, with the center left? You're talking about follow. Yeah, then no. comes to the third diamond you on mean the short rail. Right. You're talking about center. No, right. left from the from the shooter's oh, perspective. Oh, you're talking about coming yeah. that way. Uh, that's an option, but you are coming up more on the short side. There's options here. Let's see how he hits this. He drew back. Yeah, he came short. It's a yeah. safer shot to at least get on yeah. the two, though. And the two is makeable. For sure makeable. The key thing is he needs to get on this three nicely if he has any chance of running out the rack. Tim Cole, don't be making matches with other people before you play me. You've been saying you're going to play <laughs> me for two years. <laughs> I want to see how he moves this. He's got to hold it for the three. I think he's going to soft stroke it. Mm, Maybe come around and hit the nine. the nine. Yeah. Boom. Oh, dangerous. Got it yeah. out. <laughs> oh, he played that. That was a good. risk. There was, that, was that was a, a risk. risky shot. Yes, but, you know, he's feeling good. He is feeling good. I've heard nothing but good things about Tim Cole, but I've never actually met him. No, I've never met him either. Yeah. Tim, I have not met. Is he in Vegas? No, he lives in Colorado. He used to live here. Oh, okay. Well, Tim, next time you're in Vegas, say hi. There's a natural line to get down to the five. I really coming don't around see. the eight and the yeah. seven. Yeah, because yeah, it's gonna come naturally that way. Yeah, and it looks like that's where he's aiming. To. I'm not sure if he's gonna try to. It come looks like straight. he's playing inside on it to, yeah, to, to come on the left straight. side of the nine, uh, seven, and eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he came down straight. It's all right. We're seven. Oh yeah, he's doing all right. He's good. John Mora on a break and run here. I don't think Kanye is gonna make an appearance to mess with someone up. So Jeffrey DeLuna will be breaking down 5-3. Tim and I will be in the August MLB tournament. Awesome. Oh, you guys are coming when it's like so, so hot. Yeah, there's a 5-15 and under that they're running. It's the Gillian. All right, he's on the hill, ladies and gentlemen. On the hill. Maybe we'll dust off the booth for the last day of that Gilligan, too. You never know. It's weird. Every time we bring up a live stream, you sound like you don't want to do it, but you know you do. <laughs> I do want to do it. I just can't justify taking a day off from the restaurant. Yeah. I mean, I love doing it, but uh, it's a passion thing, you know? It's, yeah. That's why I chuckle when people give me a hard time. It's like, you know how much money I've spent on all this equipment? Like, yeah. you know, it's like, 
that's uh, purely just the equipment, yeah. not even your time and energy. Right. And, so yeah. And just, then also the knowledge to even set something like this up. Yeah, it's not it, general knowledge. Things can go wrong yeah. for sure. I think by next year I'll have enough um, support at the restaurant. We'll have multiple restaurants and I won't be so tied to the operation itself. That's what you're hoping. That's what I'm hoping. Yes. Yeah. That's what we all hope when we open a business. Take your right? hands off of it. Let right. them do it. Yes. Well, I mean, monitor, but don't be tied to the business. Oh wow, Tim! That was Tim Cole. You know what? I'm gonna look you up. I bet you. I, I bet you. I remember you. 2011 was when I first moved to Vegas. That's a long, long time. So Deluna ago. needs a solid break here. He needs to be able to see the one. He hasn't seen the one on his breaks yet this match. Little I right. would say that qualifies as a solid break where he could see the one. Nice, 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 nice. Highly favored to be out here. No real problem balls. Yeah. Um, and just getting on the two really is the hardest one shot. One to the two, yeah. Uh, let me see here. Probably going to play it, I would say, look, his angle. He's got the line to come around. And actually, the windows are all there for yeah. him to come around for the two. Gotta play it longer. There we go. All right, that was a hell of a break. Okay. Pretty standard run here for Mr. Deluna. Yeah, natural for the seven. Oh, you did. Thank you, Tim. Oh my gosh, that was so long ago. I'm gonna I'm gonna look you up once I get off the, the live stream later. Good old fudge and grudge argument in the chat today. That's great, and I love seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are they arguing? I can't about? tell if they're really arguing or not. They're yelling at each other. Tim Watson, thanks for letting me know, but I just checked it and everything's clear on my side, so it's gotta be something on your end. Well done, Jeffrey DeLuna. So now John Moore will be breaking with an opportunity to close out the 32nd annual Andy Mercer Memorial Classic. Yeah. John's been breaking well. Jeffrey is not making it easy. Been a great match so far. Lots of back and forth, yeah, lots of great pool playing. Both players are taking a break. Hmm? Hold on a second. Hold on. Everybody, while we get this break, we got Jack Murray here to say a couple things. First off, I just want to thank everybody. You guys have been a great audience the entire weekend, and I uh, really appreciate everybody supporting the event by watching and following us up on uh, on YouTube, Facebook, and all the medias. Uh, also, tipping my hat to Constantine for coming in today, volunteering his time, and, and setting everything up. These guys are great. Sue's amazing. But also, uh, I really want to uh, give thanks to the Rum Runner, Gino Hill, uh, the whole Rum Runner staff have been fantastic. If you guys are not local to Vegas, when you do come, make sure you stop by. See the bar. It's a fantastic place. Yes, uh, babe, you're listening. I know it's. Uh, I said fantastic again. But uh, it's. it really is an amazing bar, great atmosphere. Um, also, I want to give a shout-out to Constantine's Restaurant that he has. I'm sure they've talked about it a bit. Uh, Table 34, fantastic restaurant, amazing menu. Yes, the bourbon selection is great. I can verify that myself. Um, but uh, you should definitely take a look at that because he puts a lot into pool, but he also puts a lot into work and uh, deserve to get some respect on both sides. So thanks again for everybody uh, tuning in. And I'm going to give up my chair to, I'm assuming Sue is coming back. 
Sue is coming back. Excellent. Thanks again. Thank you, Jack. We had a great bourbon selection until Jack drank everything. <laughs> no. Thanks for the kind words, Jack. Did he say something heartwarming? He said he was just said nice things about everybody. Aww. Including me. <laughs> Fantastic. See? Yes. You, it's the band word in this book. The band word. All right. So Jeffrey DeLuna has a chance to break. Bring it even. Both players have been playing very, yeah. very well. <laughs> so we've heard, Ramil. Kentucky Deluxe, Jamaron. Not sure that I've had Kentucky Deluxe. I'll look it up. There are many good bourbons in the world. Are we having a shot after this? I think we should. Okay. I think we shall. I'm in. I'm in. I think we've earned it. Yes. Yeah. You especially. Been here three days. <laughs> I just sauntered on in the last day. <laughs> John. Oh, sorry. Jeffrey was racking. I got myself my own thing. So John Mora for a chance to win. The Andy Mercer. Mm -hmm. He's racking on the hill. This is a good place to be. Jerry Burke, first place is six thousand. Second place is three thousand. Then there's a an, an auction, which I'm I'm not sure what the payouts are about. John this. makes three balls on the break. And he's got an open rack. He he's is got just an open the one, one to the two. That's it. That's it. One to the natural. two, and this is all she wrote. Yeah, it's natural. The one isn't super easy, but it's not super hard either. But the layup is natural for the two. I mean, him coming off the rail is the only thing, and there's a slight chance he might get stuck behind the six, but he's too good to do that. Mm -mm. Yeah, he's putting right on it. He wants to come above that six. <coughs> Looks he like he nailed short. it. Oh. Wow. You can hear the whole room. The whole room oh, grunted. Man. All of Canada grunted. Oh. oh. Coming off that rail, that was a tough shot. Yeah. Uh, Dee Dee Mora did have the break. And he broke, and he had an. He made three on the break. He had a tough shot on the one that he just missed. I can't tell if that four eight nine is wired, but it looks like it's 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 not wired, but it's makeable. Oh my gosh. Oh Second my scratch. Gosh. Oy. Oh my gosh, my heart can't handle this. Well, he obviously set up for the combo and he looked at it. He's got yeah. it he hit the four a little offsetting, but There we go. Hold your breath. He's a pro <gasps> pool player. Should make this. If he does, we're going to the hill, ladies and gentlemen. There's the nine. All right. We oh, that oh, almost oh. <laughs> that almost clipped the four to go in, then it almost clipped the seven to go in. My heart can't take this, Constantine. What is so, going on? You can hear the room. You can hear the room. My gosh. I know. OMG, right, Ramil? OMG. Reminder for anybody just tuning in that John is in the hot seat. If Jeffrey DeLuna wins this match, they're going to play again. If John wins this game, it's over. Yeah, and Jeff is breaking. Hill, hill match. It, it comes down to the break. It, it always oh, does. Oh, gosh. Here we go.
Joe Cannella just told me I got a team to play on. Yeah, yeah, I heard. That's awesome. And Joe's an amazing guy, so that's good. My problem is I can only play Monday nights, so there's not a lot of options for me. Hi, Joy. Yes, we were talking about you. We were wondering where you were. Oh, that's actually Joy. Yeah, he's, he's using Mike Hutchison's uh, um, login. You've become famous. Oh, that's that's not a foul. Oh, are you serious? No. Classic no. sharking. <laughs> They're both <laughs> laughing about it. <laughs> I was like, no way. So Jeffrey Deluna just spent like a minute checking the rack, and then he promptly uh, dropped his break cue into it. <laughs> so they're both laughing about it. A little congratulations from Cher. Oh, thanks, Cher. Appreciate it, man. It was a fun experience. Obviously, I would have liked to take about two shots back, but other than that... Everything is uh, it's great. You're Steve's very an welcome, amazing guy. Jose. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you everybody for tuning in. There's so much energy in this yeah, room. Yeah, that's great. Like, oh my god. Just... Uh, Jeffrey Deluna's got a photo. He doesn't have his cue on him, <laughs> so he can't break the rack. <laughs> oh man, we are jumping out of our skin over here. <laughs> It's only a foul if they don't laugh about it. <laughs> Richard. <laughs> All right. All right, Jeffrey DeLuna getting Here ready to break for his tournament life. If he wins, they go to a second set. If he loses, Ooh. that's it. John right. Mora is the 32nd annual Andy Mercer Memorial Classic champion. DeLuna's been breaking well. Last break, he actually broke perfect. Nine ball has not gone in this set yet. It hasn't gone in a couple times. They're both there doing cup breaks. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Here we go. Where's the cue ball? Ten ball going? in. Where's, the Where's ball that one going? gonna go? Does he have a shot? Does he have a shot? No, he does shot. not have a shot. No shots. And he is. <laughs> he's pointing at another spot on the table, and he's like two feet away from it. Right. <laughs> he's a pointer. Five thousand viewers? Is that accurate? No, no. There's say. like four hundred people watching. I, was I think say. he's asked for the rack to be moved. Jack taking out his trusty master chalk. Rebecca Hendricks, please get Jack a proper cue ball holder thingy. What are they I called? Have one. I I'll, know. I'll, I'll bring one Everybody for you guys. has one except I have for Jack. One. Should get him one. I have a couple actually. It should say fantastic on it. <laughs> I would get him one, but I just don't care enough. I have a sp I have several spares in my house. I'll find one. I might get him one now. Yeah, Kingfish Red brings up a good point. He will lose it. That's probably true. I'll make a necklace out of it. Virginia, so I think SVB has won this five or six times. No, really? It's four, it was I four in it was... a row for sure. For sure. Hmm. Just tells you how long I've been away. Sue, what do you do here? Let you got to push here, right? There's two, these kicks are too tough. It's a push, especially when it's hill Where do you push to? He's, he's going to push. Push to a I better kick? He wants to push for the better jump. He wants to jump. I think he may have given him too much of the ball again. He, This is makeable. But, uh, can I see the back angle? Um, This one, yeah. Mm, I think it's makeable. Makeable how? Side pocket. Really? Okay. Um, I think he can see it. But he's not looking at it. Hold on. Let me see. Yeah, he... he I think I'm you're right. It is makeable. I'm sure he can see it. And the thing is, the shot, too, comes long. It'll avoid the five. Ooh, that's a tight fit between it's, it's that tight, five ball and the it's corner. It's very... No, for sure. It's going to come probably about right there. The question is, is he going to go for it? People are saying jump, but yeah, no, they can see no, the, he I can don't see think the ball. Necessary. See, he, he can, can just cut ball. it in. 
He just got to get around that uh, five. Yep. Watch if, if my lines are correct. I think you might draw it back to avoid the five. Mm. It's too tight to go in between. No, You're right. You see? Did wow. I call that or did I call How'd that? How'd he hit it? Wow. How'd he hit Ooh. it, Sue? That's crazy. I know my lines. <laughs> that is what we call a championship shot. I'll credit that to three cushion. All right, here we go. He's got to run. Um, four. He just needs a. Okay, so whatever angle he lands on, he's going to end up landing most likely as a cut to the four. Yeah, see, at that Narnar speed, brings up a good point. Two corner. terrible pushes by Jeffrey. He pushed into yeah. makeable shots. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a second error, huh, on the push. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. I try, I try. <laughs> All right. This, he left the, him, this is the yeah, shot. He left himself long on the five, but the line is natural for the six. He doesn't really have to do a whole lot to get on the six. He just has to make it. Um... He's got to try to get straight on the six, um, but because if he gets too much of an angle, it could, I mean, not for John Mora, but could present some problems. Yeah. But yeah, all he's got to really do is make the five. Which he has done, 30. and he got straight. This match mm -hmm. is over. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. <laughs> Well, barring some kind of event, this match is over. Let's just watch it unfold. Yeah. Sue, it was great spending time with you. Thanks for coming. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for setting all this up, and thank you for being here. And thank you, everybody, for being here. Let's hold our breath. Oh, he hits the ball so pretty. So pretty. And that's it. DeLuna concedes the match. All well right. done, John Mora. He is the uh, 32nd annual Andy Mercer champion. Woo. Thank you, everybody. Congratulations, John Mora. He played practically perfect, did a great job. I'll be your coach for meal. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Thanks again. Great job by John Moore. Deserved to win. Played great. Yes, Jeffrey he did. Bruno played great. Oh, this was great fantastic. tournament. Sue Orr, thanks for commentating all three days, doing it. It was amazing. It was fun. Yeah. Are we oh, taking our shot? Oh, we're going to do a shot. Don't All worry. Right. I'm going to wrap this thing up. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We really appreciate it. Congratulations to John Moore. Thank you, Jack Murray, Gino Hill, everybody involved in the Rum Runner. And uh, it's been a great tournament. We yeah, appreciate you tuning in, and we'll see you next year. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. That was awesome. was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's